Hundred and one, one hundred and two, one hundred and three. One more. One more. One more. You can do it. Push, squeeze. Ah. <laughs> Whoa. Ah. Iggy. Well, if like me, you're absolutely pumped for day four of the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens, you're on the right stream and you're in the right spot because we're here with Mark from Perform Better, who is one of the exhibitors. He's been making sure that the athletes are primed, pumped and ready to do the business out there on RE1 and RE2, which we are going to be bringing you live all day and all day tomorrow. Mark, how impressed have you been with the athletes? And if you could take your time with this answer while I catch my breath, I would be grateful. Do you want me to compare you to the other athletes? 
athletes. So. I would rather you didn't. <laughs> it's, it's been brilliant. All the way through this week, it's been fantastic. We're here as a service for everybody. We do recovery, warm up on the bikes, on the foam rollers, and activation in the gym. Just getting these guys really ready. In, in, the thing about sevens is it's so difficult to play. So if we can warm them up and recover them, then they can go on to the next game. And that's what we love doing. So we're here just to enjoy ourselves and see the kids and watch some bloody good rugby. I mean, it's a competition of real attrition. We saw the under-18 Vars winners the other day. They had to play 10 games to win that trophy. So looking after your body is absolutely paramount if you're going to go the distance. Uh, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's just looking after the body, but also making sure that once you finish your game, you stop, you recover, come back in, do some foam rolling, do some massage on the legs. And then before you start again, warm up on the bikes, a bit of activation in the gym, get the muscles pumping again, and then back out onto the pitch to start again. Then you're fresh. You're never going to be back to where you were on the first day, but you are fresh and ready to go again. And it's the guys who are the fittest and the strongest, but the best team that win in the end. Lovely stuff, Mark. Would you be a dear boy and pop another couple of cookies on there? I'll be back to I'll be back to finish my workout in a moment. I've just spot yeah, 25s minimum. I've just spotted a couple more, or three more, a trio of fitness fanatics here who are crunching through the calories. Jack Zorab, commentator of Pitch RE2. What, what, what are you on there? That is, I'm, I'm glad that the camera's pointing this way and not this way when we're looking at wattage. <laughs> yeah, well, but It's low key for the interview. But... Low wattage here, but high voltage on the pitches, wouldn't you say, Jack? Well, so far it has been, and today it might go up uh, several more thousand volts, I'd say, uh, with the under 80s Cup starting on pitch two, RE2, Harrow against Abingdon. Harrow in action for the first time since winning uh, the under 18 Schools Cup on Thursday, and they are packing heat. Heat, Joe. Hacking heat yeah. with the with the team sheet. Uh, Reggie Hammock, the man who won the match, uh, the number eight from the week from last week. He's uh, he's he's starting. We've got. Uh I think also they've got um, Winters back as well, someone who's coming back from a wrist injury. Um, the uh, the lactic acid is starting to build up here for me, okay. so you see so. All right, okay, look, I, I'm going to ask you one, one last question. Now, Harry, they're the reigning champions, the under-16s won it last year, they're the school's champions, they're going for a bit of history, but I, I put it to you, maybe they're not um, as sharp on the seven edges as they could be because they've been so deep in this glorious 15s campaign. Do you think that could play a role? Because there's been other schools who've been playing a lot more sevens than them and as I understand they've only actually had one training session since winning that trophy last week yeah I mean um, hardly much, much time at all is it to prepare yeah I think that's uh, definitely a fair call and in sevens the drilling is so important um, to know where everyone's going so they're gonna be a bit light on that but maybe day one let's say they get through day one that's likely day one might be their training camp I guess so we'll see all right give me ten ten seconds max effort max effort Jack let's go let's go Jack Oh, God, I hope it's going to be more high octane on RE2 than our commentator. But we've got another one who always delivers in spades. It's Wilf. Wilf, your thoughts on the day ahead. I mean, it is unbelievably exciting. Uh, I, I mean, the vibe has kind of stepped up a notch today already, just with the prospect of the boys' under-18s cup final. Well, sorry, cup competition. We're not at the final yet. No, too right. I mean, the sun came out this morning as well, which is just so promising because, as we all know, Sevens is made to be played in the sunshine. I think it's going to be great. There's so much to offer today from the girls' ace competition as well. That's going to be some serious volume. And the girls' kick-off as well as the under-16s keep going. They've whittled it down massively. There's going to be some serious quality from the under-16s as well across the afternoon. I can't wait. Who did you like in that under-16 competition? I'll let you go first, and I'll let, oh, then I'll tell you who I like. Well, I was tapping up Epsom because they managed to field seven Harlequins players in their starting team, which is pretty impressive at a competition like this, so I think I'm going to put my money on them for now. That's annoying because I was going to say Epsom. <laughs> I was going to say Epsom. I, I, also, I'm also, I also went to university with uh, the coach, the D-Train, but they did look very, very well drilled. Good specimens and they play a nice little brand. Well, great minds, Joe. Yeah, that's class. So I think they're going to be quite an impressive lineup as well. Uh, but Landovery College from Wales came through a really tough elimination game against Abingdon. We were chatting to an Abingdon lad earlier on this morning. You said that's their golden generation, so they're gone. And the Welsh side, always impressive in these competitions. Whew, I'm really getting through it at this point. All right, well, we're, we're going to go for one more question because I like to see you sweat, Will. Um, you mentioned the ace competition. Heartbreak, 
perennial champions. Can anyone beat the women in red? Well, the introduction of the egg chaser sevens. Introduction and the introduction and the introduction of a new word as well. <laughs> yeah, the egg chaser team looks really exciting. That's a great program ahead up by Aaron Watkins, who hopefully we'll hear from later if he's knocking around. But yeah, I'll, I'm excited to see them in action for the first time. Whew. I will I will give you a little bit of respite. Thank you very much. We're gonna we're gonna shift onto the time, but we're also gonna catch a, gl a glimpse of one of our referees as well. Getting the kilometers in here, warming up those fast twitch fibers to chase down some rapido athletes all day today. We love our refs, they come here, they give their time for free, they take time off work and they put an unbelievable performance, not just on the day that you're watching your team, but all throughout the week great camaraderie and awesome to see them here using the perform better studio to be in tip top shape angus savage the main man the knowledge on the schoolboy girl game i'm just going to give you the mic you're going to spit well you've, you've caught me just as i passed 2k so i'm pretty happy with my warm-up for the day every time i speak to you i seem to be on a bike i was i was uh, making juice the other day here i am warming up yeah i, th I think you've i think you've got an, an o in the wrong place i think it's 200 meters actually there angus oh, i thought it was uh, about about 20 23 24k something like that okay good 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 at the old rugby not so good at the arithmetic <laughs> now listen it, it's i'm so excited about today mate it, it's going to be an absolutely spectacular day the sun is shining i've been chatting to loads of people on the touchlines already the excitement is just at fever pitch this is where it really gets big we get that conclusion of the 16s we get these under 18s coming in and as you referred to last night the prep school boys coming in to to come and witness some of their heroes and to be able to sort of replicate what they see i'm really excited about the day yeah i'd love to give a shout out to the prep school competition because i was a, te a prep school teacher myself shout out to rokeby who are going to be taking to the field it's all the way over on the Asta pitches usually isn't it it will be but we're actually going to be doing a segment today that we're going to put out on the live show at the end of the day where we're going to go and visit Asda and we're going to go and try and give a flavor of that prep school tournament so hopefully we'll be able to give the uh, the ropey lads a bit of a shout out yeah there you go watch out for the black and red but for the prep school tournament there are no winners there are no losers there are just boys and girls out there loving their rugby sevens they're grouped in groups of six aren't they and you play five games and you know the aim is to win everyone if you go five from five then that is a good bit of business here at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. So, you know, we're kind of jumping around a little bit. I think that we've boxed off the prep school. We touched on the under 16s with Wilf. How impressed are you with that level of competition? And I'm going to caveat that with the quality that we saw in the under 14 final. If under 14s are playing like that, the under 16s, we're right to be excited about it. Oh, we really are. I mean, the, the quality of that under 14s was incredible. The quality of the 16s has been immense. I, I've actually been chatting to some of the coaches um, from Wellington College before, before the day started. They were excited about the 18s. But talking about the 16s, they were saying the level that they were facing was incredible you know they've been forced into sort of errors they wouldn't normally make because the level of competition was that high and they were just incredibly impressed and I think we all were by by what we saw in that 16s competition you know last year was a high water mark you know that Harrow performance in 16 final was incredible but actually I think this year we might be on another level again any schools any schools catch the eye outside of some of the names you've mentioned like Harrow like Epsom yeah I mean I was having a look around last night at, at some of the some of the schools that had sort have stood out I mean I'm gonna give a shout out to the Uppingham lads again because you know they are at some point if I keep predicting them for long enough they're gonna they're gonna win a tournament somewhere uh, but no the, you know the, the usual suspects have been have been pretty good obviously obviously Millfield and uh, Millfield and all those guys I want to look at a northern school yeah I fancy a, someone like a St Peter's York or someone like that or maybe a Barnard Castle to come and have a good run I'd, I'd like to see that I think that'd be good fun yeah Barnard Castle they play some nice rugby they've had some fantastic players through the years as well Guy Pepper recently capped for England. I think he's the son of the deputy head there, actually, at Barnard Castle as well. So watch out for the teams from the north. So under 16s, boxed off. Let's look at the girls' competition. And we've got more female participation than ever before at the Howden Rotten Park National School Sevens, up like 20 percentage. You'd have to find someone who's got a bit more attention to detail than me to know the specific number, but it's rocketing and the quality as well has followed suit. In the under 14s, we had history makers with Jamera English Speaking School being the first ever international winners of the competition across any category. That's boys, girls, that's any age group. And here we are uh, under 
under 18s where we're already seeing so many players transition from these pitches to age group international honours. Daisy Aspinall, player of the tournament last year in the final. She's captain of England under 18s now. Oh, what an incredible talent Daisy is. Um, and the talent across the board, we touched on it last night in the in the girls' competition. You know, the, the ace players are literally a stone's throw from becoming professionals. Uh, we're going to see some household names today. Um, we just don't know it yet, which is the exciting part. That's the beauty of school rugby. Um, in that girls' cup competition, Newman College won it last year. I think they're going to be up there among the favourites this year. But what I'm really looking forward to in that girls' competition is the way the depth of quality of teams has increased year on year so we started off where there was a there was a level of teams at the top and then everyone else was kind of introducing rugby programs and developing now we've got a real depth of quality it's going to be fantastic and respectfully to every other competition that is taking place this week i cannot refer to the under 18 cup as the big one you know that's with due deference to every other competition i just think that especially with 10 being promoted from the VARS competition into the cup competition casting my eye along the groups there is not one group that I would like to be in there's not one group that I think oh yeah if, I, if I'm in there I'm getting through to the next day it is to use your surname savage out there <laughs> it certainly is I've been referring to it all week as the flagship competition um, you know it's the one with the names that everyone everyone is familiar with it's the one where we're gonna see certainly on the male side those stars of the future emerge from and you know there are some guys out there that are already sort of household names they are going to definitely become that and I cannot wait to get cracking I can just see some guys coming out now and already I'm excited at the prospect of what they might put on show today well you you're just about to grind to a halt here on the bike anger so I, I guess I, I guess we should we should wrap this up soon and I, I love making you feel awkward more awkward than interviewing you on a bike head on the chopping block who's gonna win the under 18 cup competition Kirkham Grammar School. Kirkham Grammar School, there you have it, from Angus Savage. It's time to see the action in full flow and time to throw you up to RE1 commentary with Dave Rogers and RE2 commentary with Jack Zorab and Wilf Kemsley. I cannot believe that he has put his neck on the chopping block there and gone with Kirkham Grammar, but it would be a brave man to bet either for or against them. Welcome, everyone. Seaford College are getting things kicked off here against uh, Bishop Wand on Thursday. Glorious day. Stay in the tackle, lost four in the tackle. A glorious day. It genuinely doesn't get much better than this. This is in Group A, one of the most hotly contested tournaments. Okay, advantage over for the knockoff. Men's, women's, boys, girls, amateur, senior professional of the year. The boys under 18 cap here at the Howden. Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. And just a shout out for coaches. Well, train your teams like this, get tries like this. What a start, what a score. And Bishop Wand are in. Albert Mildenhall. With the game's opening try. Bishop Wand take the lead conversions are going to be super important today that one misses away to the left oh scouts scouts are out and about today Bristol beers are the first I've seen they're going to be picking up some talent as we take a replay of that try lovely pass around the outside yes this is a shout out anybody who's tuned in if you're going to be here for the day if you're looking forward to seeing your school later text the coach text the players make sure that we've got the team sheet so we can give these young players the shout outs they deserve oh what a kick and what a take Seaford back on the ball scrambling out the back the penalty over the top please thank you well, Amy Wilson Hardy's arrived. Get your headset on, Ames. Don't think, uh, don't think this is a part-time encounter today. Oh, what a beautiful step and the acceleration. Sean Sharp is gliding through. Well, he has created that all on his own. Absolutely sensational from the young nine, part of the Harlequins under 18s. And he looked like he had another gear to go. Wow. 
Well, when he took this ball, he had an entire defence in front of him, but a step off the left, then another step. Sent the last defender to the shops. There was no sweeper at home. Energy well conserved. Amy Wilson-Hardy, good morning. Good morning, how are we? Oh, so good. So, so good. I've had a good night's sleep on Joe Burns' floor. Yeah, how was the sleepover? It was really good, actually. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, we had a very, very early night. And we watched an episode of Married at First Sight Australia. What more can you want? Did it, you get your run done? I did, I did. Oh, I did an goodness. incredibly slow 5K. I think every, oh, every one of these young players would have left me in the dirt. It was a little bit embarrassing, but it felt good to move. Right then, Bishop Wand, 7-5 down, having been 5-0 up and sending the big man through. That second touch, an important one. Now the foot race is on. Favourite to win it, Jody Bunce. Jody Bunce does win it. Dots down under the poles. Three tries in under four minutes. Those big, powerful players, as we saw yesterday, showing what they can do on a sevens field, drawing in those defenders, getting the hands free. It often means a nice little cheeky score like that. And as for the try scorer, we talk about second touches a lot, keeping yourself available, so important. Definitely, whether it's for the offload or whether it's to clear that ruck, it's that next job mentality to get on the ball again and again and again. Yeah, my next job last night was very much going to sleep, staying asleep. Hey, you worked hard over the last few days. Working hard or hardly working. These guys out here are the ones who are putting the graft in. Long day ahead, and of course, the ambition for all of them is day two, and then getting the opportunity to win that trophy. That's a nice pass out of the tackle, and Seaford setting up shot around halfway. Shown that they can attack from deep, score from deep, and Sean Sharp again getting that left hand to work. Cutsage. Ball's gone forward. Morning, and it'll be a put in Roll. at the scrum. It's an air of expectation around the place today, isn't there? Definitely, I feel we've picked it up as well. Yeah. Getting to the, the older age groups today, welcoming the girls back as well, which I'm really excited about. I mean, it's starting strong already, so very high expectations. The Hartbury College boys are watching on in their red and black jersey. Hartbury College girls in the girls' ace, they are always there or thereabouts. Leading into Gloucester Hartbury and Premiership Women's Rugby, of course, the defending champions as Bishop Warren looked to get away again. Important ankle tap, stops the progress of Innes McDonough. And he gets the offload away. Albert Mildenhall swallowed up with the tackle, looking to try and offload it as well. Seaford over the ball, great jackal work. And the danger is extinguished. Such good tackle, and then so quickly back on his feet to do the next job. Like we said again, next job mentality that created the turnover there for his team. What have we got here? Oh, Wilfred Kemsley has made his way over from RE2 to RE1 to gift us some team sheets. You're a good man, Wilf. What have we got here? We've got Oakham coming up. Oakland every College near my old neck of the woods. This time it's Bishop Wand on the turnover. Milden Hall. Finds Finn Keylock, and now they work it out to the left-hand side, see if there's some space to be made and some points to be scored as we tick down to half-time. Both teams staying really patient here. You can see defensively they're just trying to hold their shape, not give a read for the attack. Attack just keeping the ball. In the tackle, plus forward. Final play, fellas. Well, that one just before half time. Otherwise, the knock on would have taken us through to the interval. It's attritional, isn't it? It is. It is. That's it, boys. Crouch. Bind. Set. Last chance to dance then. A bishop wand here in this under 18s cup match. Be a short breather at half time. This better defence from Seaford. Oh, it's been ripped. Excellent cover tackle, but Rory Minton 
doing the job for the men in hoops and maybe they will have the chance to score before half time to level and maybe even take a slender lead there are numbers here for Seaford needs to get to the width has it gone forward oh it has both teams with some excellent bits of last stitch defense three tries two of them to Bishop Wand and at half time Seaford trail seven points to twelve Second half of this one, Seaford and Bishop Wand. Excellent start to the under-18 cup. Dave Rogers and Amy Wilson-Hardy talking you through this one. We'll be keeping you company throughout most of the day as well. Oh, and Bishop Wand on the move again. A dummy ago, the chase still coming here. This is a massive moment. And a great chase back. Logan couldn't quite make it. Sean Sharp is over it, and he wins a good penalty. That tackle's so vital, isn't it? We were speaking just now about the kind of need to, for Seaford to score. It's a shame they didn't, just to change the like, psychological mindset. But to then chase back when what looked like a not, nearly certain try and then get the turnover, just shifts that momentum again and puts the bounce back in Seaford's heels. Well, we've had a few what looked like sure tries saved by some brilliant defence. and Those are the kind of margins that we're working with in this great competition. High tackle, penalty, Seaford moving along quite quickly. Looking for options. Sean Sharp there. We're in number nine, he looks like the danger man, but now Seaford sweeping forward, a two on one, lovely pass. Bishop one players back in numbers. And some more good footwork. Oh, that is close, that is great strength, great perseverance and a brilliant offload, what a score. What a score. This time it's Rory Minton, captain of the Quinns under 18s. 12. So good seeing, fighting for every inch there, just staying on his feet, just to enable that support to come. Seaford sneak back ahead, we did say that conversions we're going to be important and the fact that they've gone two for two is that they have leveled the scores yeah that step there the cup persevering defense uh, if there's anyone from those teams on site, please can they confirm with the RA. All right, five minutes of this one to go. Still lots of time, and Bishop Wand making a, a little meal of this exit. <laughs> Maybe the fumble was deliberate to make some space. Oh, offload not quite to hand, so it's back with Seaford. In a good position. 
Yeah, one of their boys has stayed down, but that is a beautiful ball over the top, stretching these Bishop 1 defenders. And then the offload a little bit too aggressive. Back with Bishop 1, it is backwards and forwards. Next try is going to be absolutely crucial, because if it goes Seaford's way... Then they could be two scores ahead. And in the second half of the game, that is a mountain to climb. Oh, that's not a great pass. What a defensive shot there. He took a risk. But you can see, when you've got turf behind you, you can take those risks more because you've got time to recover a little bit. But he went out of the line. He took man on ball, which is so important. The ball wasn't able to get away. And what a crunching tackle that was. On the line, please, gents. No, no, that was, that was fine. I just got distracted by somebody and I didn't even see that. It was such a good hit. It was so annoying. No, they Go, please. No, Reese Roberts. Keep the gap. Bloody Cardiff men. No. Well, this time Bishop wand panic a little bit with the clearance, and that's invited some pressure here for Seaford. So, Reese Roberts from Cardiff Met, the coach of Wales University's sevens team, has just distracted me, and I missed one of the biggest hits we've seen all week. And Amy, I am absolutely fuming. What a shot! <laughs> seen the replay. So, oh no, no, the team sheet's blown away. <laughs> Which school are you, lads? There's about three to play, lads. Two, sorry, two to play. Two. From Starport, I've just, uh, I've just brought it back up. Top boys. We need some, uh, some old school paperweights, don't we? All right, we'll just use wallets and phones instead. A couple of minutes to go then. Bishop Wand need a score. They're two points behind here in this excellent contest with Seaford College. Oh, backing himself around the outside, doing well to stay in, but penalty advantage, high tackle. Good offload, great take on oh, the inside ball. Goes to floor. So an escape for Seaford, but the danger not done. Some of the handling, very exciting. And the tackling. Oh, ferocious stuff. Nice step and a nice ball. Seaford looking pretty organized in defense though. How did Bishop one find a way to stress them? Out to the edge it goes. And the opportunity is taken. 14, 17, Finn Keelock goes over for Bishop Wand. Still time on the clock. But this conversion, absolutely massive. The restart, possibly even bigger. So a three-point game. Conversion goes over for a five-point game. Always nice to hear the referee reinforce the score that we've got, so we know we've got it right. It's actually a crucial part of the game that's probably overlooked a little bit in terms of like knowing the score. And we saw yesterday a, yes. a finish where, which we weren't expecting, and it's other teams keeping an eye on that scoreboard, especially in these close games. And knowing those little tricks as well. If you score and you have time to restart, you don't have to take that kick. So before he kicks it now, are you going contestable here or are you going deep and making Seaford play? Quick. Um, deep. Okay. Oh, it's straight out. Oh, it's not. The wind's caught it. Wow. Wow, that would have been huge. Oh, Bishop won, though. They've turned it over. And this could and should be the ball game. Seaford under pressure. Great offload and a great try. Causing chaos. Finding a way to get their hands on the ball. And Seaford fall to defeat. Bishop won. Have taken it late. That'll be the last play. That is time, Judge. What a take that was to so keep the ball in his hands while spinning and pirouetting. Great win in the end for Bishop Wand, and they get their under 18 cup campaign in Group A off to the perfect start. They've defeated Seaford College 24 14.
Two giants of school rugby coming up next here in the under 18s cup on uh, day four. I had to remind myself what day it was then. It's Thursday, isn't it? Of the Howden Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. Cranley versus Oakham. Cranley, cup winners 2016 2017, finalists in 2018, bowl winners 2015, plate winners 2023. Oakham. The place where the rugby careers of Alex Good, Lewis Moody, Tom Croft, Matt Smith began more recently. Players like Charlie Titkin, who is now plying his trade at the Scarlets in Flanathley. But it is Cranley with the intensity of the start and winning the penalty. What a way to kick things off. Joe Taylor wearing number two. Where you are. Yeah. It's going to tap, it's going to go. And let the games begin. It's Will Friedlander. And now Taylor again. Nice to get that little goosey on the go. Oh, you can just tell already with this Cranley team the intensity that they're going to bring today. And hopefully for them tomorrow. But there's an interception. And Oakham are on the way. Well, Charlie Botsworth couldn't quite get there. But the danger of putting it through that many pairs of hands. How many times today have we seen already oh. two players fighting as hard as they can to get back and defend to create that turnover? Well, the chase is massive and a huge part of the game as well, knowing when to chase and when to conserve the energy. Something that these young teams do well. Look at the depth on this attack by Cranley. Happy to go 15, 20 metres back to try and create the space and they do get up over the gain line, the gain line being the halfway line, then the 10 metre line. Lovely second bite at the cherry here for these Cranley boys. That one left behind by Harry Overend. He works hard. And they're on the march again now. Let's kick Derek gliding forward. Oh, gets through. Beautiful drift. Leaves the last defender for dead. It's taken them two minutes. Cranley take the lead and Kit Derrick gets the first try of the day. Some happy parents. You can see these boys have played sevens before. Very well drilled, great accuracy on the pass. Quite wide, deep passes, but gives them the space then to have a go, do what they're good at and stress the defence. Well, it takes faith and confidence doesn't it, to, to stand that deep? Because if you're not accurate, then, you know, you've gifted your opposition 10, 15, sometimes 20 metres. But there is oodles of confidence about this Cranley team. They lead by seven points to nil. Derek restarts. Oh, and they've won that back. Now this is going to turn into a tough game to Oakham if they can't get their hands on the ball. Leave it, put it down, put it down. Not your penalty, young man. Max Pryor. Tell you what, it would take a, a very charming young player to get the referee to change his mind on which way the penalty's gone. Cheek there, I like it, just play on and yeah, slows yeah. it down. Oh, what? That's ref. That's a tackle off the ball. Tackle. 10 metres, push, push. They've been very hot in the 10 this, this week, which I like. Yes. I got yeah. told off yesterday for for questioning a referee's decision, so I'm very sorry. Oh, very were, were sorry, you? sir. <laughs> well, quite right, too. Here come Oakham, then. Chance to free the wheels and get away oh. and keep his balance. Brilliantly done, Alfie Clarkson. He's forced wide. But that's a great try and a great response by Oakham School. In line. 
Well, they needed that. Oh, they needed that too, but not a great drop goal. You said about conserving energy and chase backs, but that just proves that you've always got to do it. You've always got to do it, even if it's just to keep a couple of meters wider. But that kick to be a little bit harder, that could make all the difference in a game like this. Well, you're absolutely correct. That's kept Cranley in the lead. Albeit a narrow one. Just a way to um, our right here. What do you think of this old boy's hoodie? He's got tigers and unicorns and, and all kinds on it. He's borrowed it off his grandson. I think he's fully embracing the seven spirit, if you ask me. Fair play. As are Cranley and the big man, Benji Biggs. Returning back into the Oakham School half. Oh, there's a little knock on there. A little hand on it by Max Pryor. So I had uh, my car broken into last week or Over the week here, before. Please. I say broken into, I left it unlocked. It was entirely my Patience. own fault. But a pair of, pair of Oakley sunglasses were stolen out of the glove compartment. And Crouch. one of the mums of one of the players Bones. keeps walking past in exactly the same pair Set. of Oakleys. And I'm like, did you burgle my car? I think you need a little conversation. Yeah, I think you're right. Oakham then into the 22. Yes! More boy, great breakdown work though by Cranley. A minute to go. Until half time, and it'll be a breather well earned by both of these teams. Oh, one boot has been set to the to the touchline. Or forward pass. Couple of errors costing Cranley here, costing them field position, not costing them points yet. But from thinking about launching the last attack of the half, they're now going to be defending here, the last attack of the half. And this is a big shift in psychology, Amy. Definitely, we saw it in the last game. If it's either a defensive win here for keeping keeping a team out, and then you go in feeling good that you've succeeded in that, or you're going in just scoring and having the momentum on your side. And that really does make a difference in terms of the halftime chat, how you feel going into that second half. And crucially, that could be the result of the game. Well, it was a very inviting short side. Instead, they've gone to the open side, Oakham, getting it out to the edge as quickly as possible. Brilliant recovery defence after the footing was lost. Oh, and in at the side. What a penalty to give away. Now, choice for Cranley. They can kick this off the paddock and go in with a small half-time lead. Instead, they're going to play, and if they can conjure up something from this deep, then it really will be a huge shot in the arm just before the half. Oh, they've created some numbers here. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now it's time to empty the tank and try and get the five-pointer. Superb work, sensational from Will Simpson. And that will take some topping. 100 metres, start to finish. And Cranley get their second try. Conversion to come to make it a two-score lead. Half-time beckoning. And what a momentum swinger. What a piece of individual brilliance. What calmness and composure as well. They're playing in their own 10-metre line but to keep the skill set as high as it was, reading that over chase from the defence and shooting down that blind side. Fantastic play and momentum firmly in Cranley's hands. Well, he beat the defender and looked for a second like he was going to run out of ground as well. Sometimes uh, lose your footing, eat some turf. He was strong enough to ride the contact and get his team seven sweet points. Half time here, Cranley 14. Oakham five.
Oakham. It's on the wrong side of the arm wrestle at the moment here in Pool C. Oh, and that one's gone out on the full. So there with Brooksby Melton College, Uskol Glantap and Gosforth Academy in Pool C. Radley College versus Rugby School up next and then Beach and Cliff versus Norwich School. Cranley on the ball for the first time. In this second half, be like another score, and it would probably put it beyond Oakham, and it could be coming here. So powerful, exploding out of the tackle and away. Don't go in, no. And they're in, Cranley. They are a tough nut to crack, and. They're laying down a marker here against a very good Oakham school. 21 points to five now. It's not taking them long. Less than a minute to the second half. You've seen over the tournament some of these well-drilled, experienced seven sides. First half stays tight, but then they do kind of put the foot on the gas. And I wonder now if Cranley are really going to turn the screws and make it really tough for Oakham. Oakham are showing that they're a fantastic side, though. They keep the ball, they get the ball, and they will score. We spoke yesterday about the quality of all of the draws and the fact that it's so competitive, it's unlikely that teams are going to go through undefeated. So if you are going to lose a game, points difference is going to come into it. So if you do get the chance to score, you need to rack up those tries. Put yourself in the best possible position. That one's been knocked on. But also, like we spoke about yesterday, that that mindset to then bounce back for the next game. Just if you do lose a game, it's not it's not the end. It's tough, but it's not yeah. the end. And it's that ability to bounce back and knowing that your style of play may suit playing against another half, team. So it's not stable. just a case of, oh, they beat them. So they'll beat us too. Or yeah. just having that really positive attitude to keep fighting for every game, every inch. Well, as they say in boxing, stars make fights. And sometimes the clash of styles can lead to all kinds of great contests. And there's a clash of shoulders there the big physical players in the middle of the park Cranley on the ball look at the quality of that pass and that one beautifully delivered to feed the speed Cranley over once more starting to cut loose and starting to show why they're one of the most talked about teams on this part of the draw it's a really tough game to play if you don't have the yes, ball yes, and Cranley just keeping too. possession but like you said, the, uh, the accuracy of the pass and the decisiveness in the players just makes them look really sharp. Let's take another look at this, the speed at which they get the ball there. Good finish too. Any a gas out wide. Just uh, walking past with bacon and egg brioches. They look good, don't they? Have you indulged in one? Has the athlete diet allowed you to? No, I've been trying to be good this morning. <laughs> oh, have you? Okay. Knocks on. Oh, another knock on. And particularly in the under 18 cap, this is something we're going to see more and more regularly. Teams who've really cultivated that restart and their opponents can't get their hands on the ball. And then the clinical teams will just keep on scoring. And Cranley are one of those clinical teams. This is tough on Oakham. They just can't get a touch. I must say, I saw some of the Oakham girl, under 14 girls yesterday after their fabulous day on Tuesday, wandering around supporting. 
Which is so great to see. I wonder if I'm sure they will be here supporting their boys. So when you find yourself in a situation like this on a sevens pitch where you are really struggling to, to regather the kickoff, what are the kind of things that you, you work on? What can you really commit to just to try and get your hands on this ball and, and get a foothold in a game? It's actually a position we were in, in in Vancouver. We just couldn't nail it and we were tossing and turning with different ideas. And a little bit is it's sometimes it is hard to fix in a game. You do need to try and problem solve. Can you overpopulate that area? Especially if you can see here, that Cranley have stacked that side. So you know that kick's going to go there. So can you condense the players? And you've seen there, they've got it, and they've absolutely flown down that short side. Yeah, little nip, little chink of something in the Cranley armory, and it's fully taken advantage of. Fabian Powell gets the score, takes the drop goal. He wants to get back on with it. That's a big moment for Oakham. A little sign of light for them. And they have taken their opportunities well. They've just been starved of them. Like we said, every point matters. Mm. So I love that energy to kick and get Boys. straight back. And Boys see he's way. sucking in the songs. oxygen right now, but no doubt he can go again. Yes. This is Hugh Wyndham. Now Oaken's turn to try and get their hands on the ball. That's been knocked on. And our first pod receipt, I think, we've seen. 18-year-olds doing one-man lifts is bonkers. <laughs> Have you seen the size of these yeah, boys? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. They're not scared of protein, are they? Again, a really difficult skill, and actually, you can see there how it can go a little bit wrong. Get it! Squeeze it, Amido! Squeeze it, Barnes! Squeeze it well! Set! Oh, penalty at scrum time. Knee to the floor for Cranley. Into the last minute. Oh, knocked on. Now Cranley with turnover. Transition ball. That's a great tackle. Yep. Really good defence. Just seeing the core skills there, the, the quick transfer ball from one hand to the other to free the hand to fend. Very instinctual play. His line out, black ball. Their line out. That's you on the mark. Imagine that's the skill they practice that ball transfer to get it on the right side. Black. How often do you see someone unable to fend just because they've got the ball tapped up? Mark. But also that ability to go from two hands Beautiful. to one hand, obviously. So two hands on the ball gives you all your options, keeps the defence guessing. You're a big two hands fan, aren't you? That's uh, right up your straza. It's because I don't make enough breaks to then take <laughs> it under. <laughs> so Cranley, this game is won. How much will it be won by? 33-12 here, our clock is now in the red. Oof, great strength. Getting rid of one, two. Three oh, defenders and oh, then he's had another bite at it when there's no need. And Oakham gonna have a little dabble here to try and get some points to add to the points difference, but instead it's kicked away. And it'll be Cranley running at a broken defensive line, but the first tackle was made and made well. Can't end on a penalty, so we keep going. What did we have the other day? It was like four penalties after the clock was in the red, wasn't it? And it had literally gone from side to side, yes. <laughs> pitch lengths each time. And Cranley. First, you'd think, first game of the day, 33-12. But he? no, no, they want more. I, don't, I wonder if that... Oh, no, it does look intentional. They're looking ready to get set. Yeah. Fair right, play, I like it. Channel. Keep playing. That's it. Jouet, jouet. The channel, someone there, please. Starting in. to think about the girls' ace competition. Yep, thank you. Loughborough College in the Loughborough Lightning kits. They've just made their way past us. I always like looking at the current favourite hairstyles as well for oh, the yeah. girls. Being a hair platter of the team myself. Oh, are Get, you... Take inspiration, you see, from the youngsters. Are you the braider? I am one of one of a few. Oh, that's been knocked on. That will end the game. Well, the ball's not dead yet, though. Oh. Now it is. Full time, and Cranley 
off to winning ways. Five tries to two. The full-time score, Cranley 33, Oakham 12. Let's go rugby. Make sure they're on site, please. Rugby versus Radley. Rugby school. Well, they've got a they've got a big tent on pitch oh. RE1, so they've got a great view of their young charges. It's Radley. in the red and white. Rugby in the black. Amy Wilson Hardy with us at the start of the day in the under 18s cup we've already had a couple of cracking games and some great tries and Rugby looking to add to that, cutting through at the start of the game. Can't get the offload away, though. Oh, could that have gone sooner is the question. But we'll never know the answer. You can see why he took the carrot, can't you? But there was a lot of space on the edge for the winger. I'd like to see him maybe give it and just go for that corner, get that early score. Yeah, that was Jock Drew out there waiting for it. Came to rugby via Dubai. Crouch! Rugby. Oh. The place Bye. rather than the sport, of course. Radley with the put in. Oh, it squeezed out the side and straight through the side. I was, a, I was a little bit nervy. Oh, so this is interesting. Oakland's College, of course, they're associated with Saracens, but they've actually got the Saracens jerseys on here. I felt Amy's spidey senses as an Ealing trail finder go. I have seen some trail finder shirts. And obviously, we've got Henley College playing today. Yes. Who are Closely linked. Closely linked. With our trail finders team. Bradley then on the move up the left hand side. It is physical out there. Good clear out. 
Now attacking in midfield could be a little bit of space here for Radley and Charlie Weston. Oh. Maybe a few first game nerves, just mm. forcing the pass a little bit or looking at, at that big space in front before catching the ball. That open expanse. Thinking about how you're going to celebrate the try That's before scoring it. On the line, please. Thank you. We've all been there, right? Oh, maybe you have. <laughs> Oscar Tabbert at scrum half. For rugby school. It's a nice ball. Putting the man round the outside. Then the offload. Brilliant rugby on the march. Rufus Pierce into the corner. And that's the first try. And it's a good one. That was almost Fijian esque. That was fantastic. And uh, so hard to defend. You see his great shots going into defence, but God, if you commit two to tackle, you you just can't get that let that offload get away because it leaves you so short. But fantastic skill set from the attack. Yeah, the last offload through the tackle. Absolutely exceptional. <laughs> Conversion. Goes up, conversion, doesn't drop. Well, the director, Amy, has just told you that you look good on commentary cam. Definitely wasn't talking to me. Uh, right then, let's have another look at this try. That offload through the two-man tackle, beautifully done. Bradley there, needing a response. 5 nil down, four minutes gone. This is some fancy footwork. Dancing through. Woody Wacker. Right, this is this, this name's definitely Walker, but that definitely looks like a C, and I've called Woody Walker. <laughs> Woody Wacker. If you'd like to change your name, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, it does, yeah. Woody Wacker sounds like something you buy off the shopping channel. To Radley. Looking for an immediate response. Oh, one of the Millfield girls is walking past with a boot and crutches, but one of the Radley players is marching through. Joe Ashford levels the scores out wide. Rugby are going to ring the changes. They're bringing on Jack Brown, Edward McClellan. And five minutes gone, it is 5 5. And Radley College right back at it. Interesting facts on Jack Brown. He's nicknamed the horse because of his running style. Maybe certain Will Muir? Yes. <laughs> the horse, an old friend of, uh, of Burnsy's. Oh, how about that for a kick? Is that. Oh, the flags have stayed down. I thought that looked great to me, but this try looked pretty sweet. Then they come from Radley in an. Excellent finish. The horse. I'm pretty sure he played here, didn't he? Where did he? Was he in one of those freak schools? Or was he not? Well, we'll, we'll hear more about that a little bit later when uh, when Joe Burns is, is on comms. The next game, in fact. That's a big fend. And an excellent tackle, too. Good strength from Dave Fissilau. Under-18 trialist. Now, oh, rugby school. Looking for try number two. Fluid movement, good hands. It looked a bit congested over there on the right-hand side, but they still found a way through into the last minute of the half. Oh, good fend. These boys have been doing their tricep dips, haven't they? Some strong fence coming in from these 18s, boys. Definitely, I'm kind of glad we're up here as well, because I feel like I'd be feeling very small if I was down pitch yes. side. The rest looking slightly small compared to some of these boys. <laughs> what I lo I've loved during this week is the evolution of the game of sevens. It's yeah. the youngsters, and it's not taking any, anything away from the under-14s because they've been playing fantastic Set. rugby, but you just see these boys have obviously played sevens, and it's... Oh. <laughs> that is a phenomenal scrum. 
What I like as well, and I think it's because they're, they're young and they're keen and they want to learn and they want to be better, how they just embrace all of the things that, that make the game great, like the footwork, like the handling, like the core skills, and then they, they go out there and they just express themselves, and it's brilliant. Definitely. We've seen a definitely more of a blend of breakdown to offload, but still we're seeing those out the back doors. We're mm. seeing some really imaginative and creative play, which is so good to watch, and it's what this Game of Sevens is, like you said, all about. Oh, there's a creative little nudge in behind there, but it's been knocked on. We're well into injury time here, added time at the end of the first half, and Radley are on one. How about this? Oh, brilliant tackle on the try scorer. Joe Ashford, he's got one already, but it's been turned over by rugby school. Next stoppage will be half time. Here we go then. Big one on one round the outside and an excellent fend. He's away the first time. John Schreiner. What a score, what a moment. What a try to give them the lead at half time. Second time in two games. We've been deep into stoppage time at the end of the half and we've seen some brilliance. What a try, what a fend. And that's just testament. Like, so all of. You as players, if you think, oh, it's still a one-on-one -on -one with your winger, we better not give it, we better create something. That just shows if your winger is in space and you give them the time and opportunity to use their super strengths, that try there is just a reason why you want to give your speedsters, power runners, the ball early. And the conversion's good. He's going to fill his lungs. We're going to take a breather. And it's Radley 5, Rugby 12. Second half underway then. This game turned on its head by a brilliant try when the clock was in the red before half time, but now Radley coming straight back, but coughing that ball up. The last pass going to a black hand. Oh, here we go. More pace around the outside, more fans around the outside. Well, that's gone forward. Very unlucky though. And rugby. Just playing, those knock-on advantages don't last long. Referee likes a fast game, as do we. Straight up the jumper goes Jack Brown. I guess turned over. Oh, beautiful smell of sun cream filling the nostrils here on a perfect day. There actually isn't much better smells than sun cream. No. I love it. Well, you're really in a bad mood when the sun cream's out. Oh, here we go. Oh. 
Thought it was on then. Finds out. Archie did, and Smith. Ooh, rugby off their feet. Oh, they've gone quickly. What a shot that is to stop the attack, but he's not 10. Not, 10. not nearly 10. Post. Post. And rugby school will be down to six. Can now, so 10. important for Radley to get cover. something here. Woody Walker. Oh, they're queuing up here. This has to go. It does go. Brilliant final ball. The try is out wide, but it's points on the board for Radley. 10 12. Kick to come. These are tough conversions from out there on the touchline. That's two tries, no conversions. But a tight scoreline, 10-12. And a good game. Rugby school in absolutely no hurry to give this ball back to Radley College. Our referee had stopped the clock. Tapped it in the air, that's silly mistake by Radley. Big error, really, giving this ball back to Rugby, who can try and manage this clock a bit more. With one fewer player on the pitch. Lost forward. Back in the hands of Radley College with some space to work with. Lovely footwork by Will Link. Woody Walker lost it under 18 outside half. Archie Durden Smith options to his outside. Eight offside. Oh, they're offside rugby school. Masters of their own downfall. Matt Brown. Keep working, keep working. Now Walker loses his footing. Rugby called off it. To the open side they go, looking for the score that have put them into the lead. Good attempt at the step. Oh, that's gone forward. Yellow card Just on. Not clicking for them, is it? Yellow card back on. I don't know. I know. I know Burns would be very happy that they didn't take a scrum at the pen, but yeah. I just wonder, with that yellow card, could could they have had six players plus the halfbacks condensed in that space? I'm getting shouted at here, but Set. they may have had a try. Well, we'll never know. Still, Rugby 12, Radley 10. These tiny margins, these tiny... The difference between a conversion and no conversion. Separating the teams. And when all is said and done, at the end of day one, this could be the difference between checking in and cancelling the hotel. Radley College then. Got some numbers down this left-hand side, but they've switched inside. That's a useful ball. Oh, this still out. Can't keep hold of it. All the while, the clock ticks. Just over two minutes of this one to go. It's perhaps the most attritional game we've had. Referee super hot on this breakdown. Box over there. Keep working. One more step, please. Keep going. Can't believe we're on the third game already. Time absolutely flying by on this first day of the boys under 18 cup. Oh, this is excellent work. Oh, superb work. He skipped away. Harry Tannett. Like a stunt driver through traffic. As handbrake turned and wheel spun away from the Radley Cottage defence and scored a blinder. That was like watching Joe Burns drive his Fiat 500 through West London this morning. How has he got out of that tight spot and into Richmond Park? Bradley had a lot of possession, didn't they? And they just couldn't couldn't really string it together, maybe forcing the offload a bit, creating that error, and then rugby. Time off. There's four defenders there. Four's there, we've got time He off. looks a bit surprised, doesn't yes. he? 
Time on. What well, a great score and a game-breaking score too. Seven-point lead now. And they survived that period down to six. Bradley need it, need it quickly. We are into the last minute. A converted score rescues a draw, but there's a long way to go. Oh, good strength by Fisilau. And the overcommitment from the defender opens up the space. Check back in. Nice feet there from Paddy Hall. Still going, Hall. Needs to make the right decision next. And that decision is to find Archie Durden Smith. Now Fisilau with a second touch. This a massive moment coming towards. 14 minutes. If Radley scored, they need to score close. Oh, he's not on the ball. And Fissel out, takes it on again. All or nothing for Radley. Oh, and it's going to be all. Will Matthews under the post stitches the man in the dead ball zone. Number nine, take it from this side. It's full time. And this to tie. It's full time to rescue something for Radley. The first draw on pitch RE1 is all down to the right boot of Will Matthews. Slots it. Great end to a great game and Rugby School yeah. have their victory snatched away. It finishes Radley 17, Rugby 17. Beach and Cliff versus Norwich School, game number four of the day. Here on day four of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens, and we have had some belters. If you've not been with us, where have you been? Bishop Wands got off to winning ways against Seaford College, and then Cranley looked very impressive against Oakham School. We just had Radley and Rugby battle to a draw, and now it is Beach and Cliff versus Norwich School. Beach and Cliff in the fetching. Yellow and blue. Norwich in the maroon and navy hoops. A bow in the tournament for these two. It is uh, round number one of what is perhaps the most competitive tournament in all of rugby. And what a start by Norwich. Fred Sneary picks one off. He's under the poles. And Norwich have taken one from nowhere to lead after 20 seconds. Wow, what a start. What a time to come into comms on RE1, D Raj. Beach and Cliff, every wannabe fancying them. A lot of Bath Academy representation in there. But let's not forget the number of Tigers in the Norwich ranks. Oh, and the sticky fingered Freddie Snary, snaring one early. early. Here. Oh, but the kickoff error. You've got to back it up with a good kickoff. That's it. But all the rugby cliches come out, don't they? You've got to back it up. The points don't count till you exit, all of that stuff. But that's a, that's a bit of a blow. And it'll have been a bit of a blow to Beach and Cliff as well, who were just looking to settle in. Oh, what a seed. What a seed. And now the wheels are turning for Julian Nunn. Good decision. Over on the left-hand side, Beach and Cliff to life. Sam Gain, he's the captain. We're in number nine. It's the same man, the same result. Well, it's nominative to determine him, isn't it? 
This is so good from Norwich School. Tobias Spencer there wearing number nine. Looks dangerous. He's got taped up ears, so you know he means business. And now Ashton. A big number five into the 22, but it all came from the Freddy Sneary intercept. And here he is on the ball. Doesn't know what to do, and one of his teammates passes to him. Finds a good offload, and this great start by Norwich. Discipline costing Beach and Cliff. It was a bit scrappy on the restart. Here's the skipper driving the legs, can't quite reach out. But Norwich knocking on the door and Beach and Cliff holding on. That's two phases, well defended, three phases. But the offload, the good. Oh, referee says knock on in the tackle, so no penalty. But it could be costly. Norwich, can they get a two score lead? No, Bonnie's coming. Go back for the penalty. And what about this from the Norwich boys? God, they've started full of mongrel, haven't they? They're bringing the biff to Beach and Cliff. And. Well, you've got to say, they needed cooler heads out when they got tight to the line. They went the wrong way a couple of times and also looking to travel from the base there and getting scrad. They need to ship it away from the danger. They got the yellow and blue jersey sucked in. Give it, put a bit of air on it. They got the big man, Harvey and Krummer, out there as well. Big man on the edge. I love that tactic. Johnny Akazabo has come on at prop. Scrappy ball out of the scrum, but it has come back Norwich way. Beach and Cliff over it. Beach and Cliff winning it. Brilliant jackal. Great work by the little man at the turnover. That's going to feel like a try scored for Beach and Cliff under siege, and now they're going to strike. Here we go, galloping forward. Big man on the edge. Toby Lock built like one, but he's knocked it on. It's back with Norwich and Beach and Cliff. No, well, they've got away with one there. Oh That's uh, the butterfingers of Johnny Acasabo. Well, I think there, Toby Locke, first time he'd seen a bit of green grass and really Beach and Cliff starved of any quality possession. What are we, nearly four minutes into the game? And that's natural. When you haven't seen the ball at all, you want to make it count because the opportunities are so few and far between. But it's times like that you need to take the contact, know you can recycle and trust that the rest of your boys are going to do the business as you go edge to edge. Four minutes gone, just that early intercept try, the difference between the two teams. What gas at the right-hand side. Ollie Ship sails in for Norwich's second. Four sheets to the wind, Ollie Ship in full flight, billowing across the line wow norwich making a statement here on re1 well ollie ship has fired a shot across the bow of beach and cliff yeah. and they are 14 nil down here and under the pump simple as that give it to the I'm gas sure man he's all right. let his wheels do the talking and beach and cliff yeah. right now in stormy seas on game one here on RE1. Do I? Do you have to try moving from the pitch or do you And if Norwich could do us a good deed of getting the ball to Ollie Ship, then we can get a few more. Uh, yeah, a few more nautical puns. A few more in. nautical That'd puns. In. Well, there is an injury to a Beach and Cliff player here. It's going to take more than a minute. And it's a serious one, sadly. So the teams have retreated into their huddles and. We're really wishing the stricken player well, but a good opportunity for Beach and Cliff to regather themselves because they are shell-shocked here at the moment. Norwich have brought the noise in heavy metal fashion and you know they're really smothering Beach and Cliff, but they're also being so precise as well when they get the opportunities. Well, that's what today is all about, isn't it? Because all of the tournaments deserve equal billing here and it's so great to see that the boys and the girls the age groups all the way up but there's always a little bit of a murmur about this under 18s cap and every year we say oh the format's amazing the groups are amazing but this year it feels a little bit different and and i was uh, well i i'm not the kind of person who's going to commit to winners and losers but what i did commit to is i think most of these groups the leader will go through and the teams will go through in to day two and the likelihood is they will have lost a game if you go through day one undefeated then you have done incredibly well but but with that in mind for Norwich to get that good start and 44 on my watch 
Oh, that's uh, that's about right with our clock too. Great job to the guys in charge of the time. Okay. But with that in mind, um, and Beach and Cliff being injury. such a powerhouse for this Norwich to get balance. this start, okay. I think they will be absolutely delighted. Freddie Sneary is going to get us back underway, and Beach and Cliff not under too much pressure, but the chase is good. Johnny Acasabo is there, and they'll need to get something before half time here, Beach and Cliff, just to give them. A little bit of something. That's a seatbelt tackle. Oscar Ratledge coming in a little bit high. That's a nice little penalty win there for Beach and Cliff. He spotted a glint of light, but the door slammed shut. And again, mm. that impatience looking for the offload when it wasn't really on as he tumbled on the floor. Well, these boys just want to play, don't they? <laughs> UA, UA. It's a really good demonstration that if you strangle the opposition, then it forces them into yeah. an uncomfortable okay. place where okay, they probably crouch. don't play the rugby that Bye. they go out to do because in their Set. mind, they're thinking, right, we've only got one minute left of this mm. half. Like, we need to make something happen. Speaking of making something happen, Tobias Spencer does it all himself. There wasn't much room, but what was there? He exploited. What a score from the Leicester Tigers. Under 18, the captain of this team to put Norwich in full control, 21-0, and still time for the restart. And he's got a front row feel with the head tape on. 30 seconds. But wearing the same number as Dupont and channeling a little bit of the French Petit General. Wow, love that inside, outside, and then gas to burn. Well, that restart's not going to make the highlights real, but they had to get something on that because if Beach and Cliff had pounced, they would have got on the scoreboard. Good seed, really good pass, and Toby Locke will score this time. Signs of life for Beach and Cliff. Beautiful ball, and the big man on the edge gets their first five points. Love the call coming in from the referee straight away. He, he called flat. They knew it was play on, and that was a seed. But it takes two to tango. That's telepathic there with Toby Lott because he made the run. He knew the pass was going to come, and he didn't even have to break stride. Big, big try on the half-time blast. Half-time is upon us. Beach and Cliff 7, Norwich 21. Restart, Beach and Cliff chasing the game and chasing that kickoff too. A couple of solid minutes here for Norwich School and they could be off to winning ways in the sunshine here and glorious sunshine it is too. What a day. Coming into day four as well, the pitch in about as good condition as I can remember it. 
at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. That's a nice pass. This pitch has seen about 60 to 70 games of sevens yes. in the last three days. And look at it, it's, it's pretty much pristine. I've played a couple of games of 15s on here over the years, and it was not in such good condition. In midwinter, they do a remarkable job. Oh, here we go. Beach and Cliff back in the game. George Yarwood. There is space, and he exploits it. Now, that does make it interesting. Need this conversion, though. Yeah, George Yarwood, he's not just a flyer on the field. He wears the whistle in a coaching capacity as well, helping Salisbury College with their sevens and practicing what he preaches. They're spotting the gap, pinning his ears back. It just opened up for him, didn't it? And that's what it's about. It's identification. It's backing your skills. And all those hard yards in the gym, on the training pitch, exploding into fast fashion right there and leaving the Norwich defence for dead. Good finish and the start that not just Beach and Cliff needed, but this game needed in terms of making it a spectacle here for those of you watching around the world. Oh, half a gap here and a hitch kick away. Here goes Izakabo. Great patience to not throw that offload, really like that. Now it opens up again, Norwich School through Oscar Ratledge. Ratledge needs an option, finds an option. Freddy Sneary. Oh, he puts the brakes on. Smart decision not to go around the outside. Instead, to find his captain, who's got a nose for the try line. Now Beach and Cliff's turn to defend once more. Loose ball, still loose ball. Now Beach and Cliff ball. Oh, 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 it's close. Oh, that little spin pass. Who was that? Nice of Maraki. Oh, it was so instinctive, it outfoxed the defence, but just over-rotating and leaking forward. And you've got to tip your hat to the uh, the Beach and Cliff defence, because they're at sixes and sevens, literally a hand, a fistful of fabric there, stopping the break. Ten minutes gone. Still life in this game. Beach and Cliff putting the pressure on at scrum time and turning it over. Seb Sanders. Oh, and the penalty. Now they're on the move here. Sam Gain, the captain. Oh, feeds the speed. Now it's on the toe. George Yarwood wants to go again. And George Yarwood oh, can't quite win this one back, but Norwich School in their own 22. Under stress and knocked on. Oh, this game, Joe Burns. This game. Great pressure, great desire. From Beach and Cliff there, love that option. Dribbling one into the 22, demands so much of the Norwich player chasing back, dropped on it, got a little bit lucky as it got tangled in his carcass on the floor. But then the yellow jerseys, they continue to flood forward and this is a guilt-edged opportunity. They've got to score here, Beach and Cliff. Sam Gain. Oh, they're offside, Norwich school. To Beach and Cliff, what a ball! Brilliant ball from Jack Winfield. He finds Sam Kane, and we are rocking and rolling on RE1. How about the backdoor boogie into the hands of his captain? A moment of magic to unlock this stubborn Norwich defence. And as you said, game on and grandstand finish coming into the final minutes. Jack Winfield's the man to watch here, the number 15, playing on an advantage. First with the step, knew the captain was going to be there. Oh. He's a man for the big moments, his Winfield slotted the winning drop goal to beat Cranley at the Surrey Sevens. Well, if you win the Surrey Sevens as well, you know you have earned it, because that is one of the longest one-day tournaments in all of rugby. But Beach and Cliff from 14-0 down, now in the ascendancy but still need a score, 19-21, 12 minutes gone on RE1. And discipline costing Norwich here, Beach and Cliff want to play, want to get going. Sam Gain finds Seb Saunders all the way out to Locke. Locke back inside, Patrick Wright intercepted again. It's the third one of the game for Freddie Sneary. That one doesn't lead to a try. Ooh. 
How has he kept hold of that ball? It doesn't matter. Beach and Cliff win the penalty. 90 seconds to go, and they lead for the first time. Patrick Wright from short range, and it's Beach and Cliff 14, Norwich 21. We've had international flavour on RE1 all week, but this time it is the man from Oakville Crusaders, a killer carry from the man from Canada, from point blank range. That pick up was extraordinary, but he got himself isolated. That's the hunger of the beach and cliff defence. And he wasn't missing from that shorter metre ridge. Wow, Norwich rocking. And so too are won the crowd loving it here. That's a good take, important take. Ollie Ship is away! Ollie Ship for his second score to wrestle it back for Norwich, who come from behind to take the lead with 30 seconds to go. Ollie Ship with a bit of piracy, potentially plundering the victory here at the death. From Beach and Cliff. The conversion sells over, but we're going to get another play. 24-28. Well, Ollie Ship making Beach and Cliff walk the plank after they thought they were about to dock in the Victory Harbour. <laughs> what a game. What a game. We told you the under-18s cup delivers and delivers, but it's delivering early. Now, if you're Norwich, are you going contestable or are you going deep? They're going deep. They're go. making Beach and Cliff play. Go deep, back your deep. Make Beach and Cliff oh, go for this tackle. Toby Locke to win it for Beach and Cliff. The most extraordinary game of rugby sevens is going to end with a brilliant piece of defence. Oh, my God, the spread is scary. He started it and he's finished it. The interception try to give Norwich the lead. The selfless chase back to prevent Toby Locke grounding it. And Norwich School get the most remarkable win on pitch RE1. It finishes Beach and Cliff 24, Norwich School 28. The game of the week right here. Locke was away. He'd hit the burners. He was driving to glory in the corner. But Snary, who intercepted and scored in the opening minute, intercepts Locke with the try line begging. And he gets a bit of help from a friend. And that is ridiculous.
And so it continues. The come down doesn't last long because we are coming straight back up for Abington versus Collega Kamoyd. Abington in the pink getting us underway. Collega Kamoyd joining us from the other side of the seven bridge and struggling to deal with that first kickoff. The ball goes forward. And Abington have the put in at the scrum. So, second game for Abington. In Group A, they come unstuck against a very strong Harrow. First up, over on RE2 and Collega Kamoy. It's their first game of the day. So Abington with the put in at the scrum, it goes down, but this is a great attacking platform now. On the edge of the 22, the Welshmen need to defend. And they're doing that. It's all pretty clustered over there. But other than that knock on from the kickoff, Kolega Kamoy yet to have a touch of the ball. Now can they get over it? There's a scramble for it. And a turnover. Lifted. Very well done. It was Jude Williams of Lantwit Vardra RFC. Little dart up the short side. Like that from Jude Williams. Now they want to run it from inside their own 22. First time getting their hands on the ball in the tournament. For the Welsh boys. That's a beautiful seed to release the speed. And Dylan Scott! Oh, and then knocked on just on the outside by Sam Talbot. And it remains Abington nil, Collega Kamoyv nil. Right, D. Roger, I'm, I'm back. I've just unplugged myself from the defibrillator <laughs> after that heart stopping match. It's only the groups as well. Yeah. It's only the groups. We're not even in knockout rugby, but how good was that Beach and Cliff Norwich clash? Unreal. One of my favourites of all time, actually, and we have seen a lot of rugby in this great tournament. Contest at the scrum was good, and Abington forced all the way back into their own 22. Good tackle, forces the knock on and the penalty after it was played on the floor. Great jackal picture there, dove straight in, right on the ball. When you got, when you're underneath the referee's gaze, you want to be in there, like striking like a python. Precision on the ball, really paint that picture. Basically, put the whistle in the referee's mouth. That's a good offer and a great take as well. Big man scoops with the right hand. Logan Lloyd there in the two jersey. Lovely hands from him. Now the space, now the chance for the Flyers to attack. Oh, what an offload! Brilliantly done, brilliantly scored in the end. Collega Kamoy take the lead after three minutes, and that last ball was a delightful seed. Well, in the corner as well, in one of the busiest sections of the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. And delivering for the watchful eyes. Nice strike on the conversion. Sails to the right of the upright. He scored the try, but it's all about the offload here. Let's look at this. Big man on the edge. Always like that tactic. Good carry, good patience from Logan Lloyd. And then it was hands. Chris holding the men in position. They go one over, then it was the sell. And look at the backdoor boogie from Jude Williams. That's what it's all about. Sam Tolbert, Tonarevile, RFC, getting the first try of the day. We're in number 10. He's going to chase this kick as well. And he's going to get there. He's going to make that tackle on Johnny Nocter. And Addington. They just need a score. They had a tough opener against Harrow. That's going to be tough for pretty much everybody in this competition. Just need something to feed off, something to build off. And they're going to have a penalty. Back for the tap and 
Back into Abingdon hands. Love that, just directing traffic around him. Good tackle coming in from Joey Williams, the captain. Uh, knock on the touch, you got in the scrum line out. Forcing the knock on. So, right, scrum, scrum line out on. in sevens here, middle of the pitch. What are you opting for? What, as in the play off the yeah. line out? Oh, so would you prefer a line out as opposed to a scrum? Um, oh, I think, well, a scrum yeah, holds yeah, players in longer than the line out because if you don't contest, then you can really sort of fly off. Depends as well. Half back is a little bit more Catch. pressure on you from the scrum, whereas Bunch. the line out, you're really fizzing it out. Dead. The flavour at the moment seems to be scrums, and that's nice, crisp ball. Oh, it was. <laughs> Until it wasn't. And Huxtable coming a bit unstuck there. He's got the makings of quite the mullet there, isn't it? He's got some. He's got some commitment to do at the back, but it's back shaping up nicely. Back. It is always mullet season at the Rosson Park National School Sevens, isn't it? Oh, I'm just... I, you know when you see the wisps in October with people looking to get an early <laughs> nudge on November? Yes, yeah. I like to think that the turn of the year, New Year's Ooh. Eve, signifies the growth of the mop in yeah. preparation Ford, yeah. for your Ross Ford, yeah. Park National School 7's mullet. So you've committed to it. I'm still, Ford, yeah. I'm still a bit old school. I'm still committed to the fade. I'm sort of a 20-year veteran of the mullet. You know, any anything that can detract from the mediocrity of my looks, I'm in for. <laughs> You're very harsh on yourself. But notice I didn't run to your defence. Good scrum here from Colliger Kamoy, then they've managed to turn it over against the head. And here is the mullet maestro putting some air on it. Colliger Kamoy looking for the next one. That is a lovely pickup. And oh, Sam Tolbert yeah. is in again. It's Dylan Scott to Sam Tolbert. Two scores for him, two scores for Colliger Kamoy. <laughs> And they have doubled the lead. Oh, I think even his teammates can't believe that offload. It was such soft hands. Flipped it out. It asked for a bit of a hamstring stretcher from his teammate. It didn't look like it was on. Looked like he'd run himself down an alley. But there it is. <laughs> Just flips it out. Yeah, baby. Sam Talbot, Ton of Revile's finest. Can't imagine that's a particular corner of Wales that you've frequented, Burnsy, but plenty of rugby's come through there over the years. There are a lot of club names on this team sheet that I'm intentionally leaving up to you to pronounce. What have we got? Ponticlean, Llanharan, Unissable. All great clubs in the Welsh club rugby landscape as Abington. Having a tough time here. You know, a lot of these look like nightmare boards on countdown with consonants. <laughs> <laughs> Penalty. Collinger, come on. Last chance of the half to maybe put this one to bed, although we have seen some great comebacks here on RE1, but Abington just struggling with the pace that the Welshmen are putting on the ball. That'll be dotted down by Logan Jones. A Triorki Zebra, as well as Cardiff under-18s. Three tries, two of them converted, and at half-time, Colin could come with 19, Abingdon nil. two passes every time, okay? Every single time you've got to get that and it gives us time. Look at me, better. We can go better on this. Win the kickoff, support the ball carrier, move it two passes. Let's go. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Go, boys.
All right then, Kolika, come on. What a start to their under 18s cup here at the Howden Roston Park National Schools Sevens. Abingdon, a game and a half in, trying to help that ball on and managing. Not held. Dropping and rolling and not held. We've not really seen them able to go through the phases. Come off, come off. And a colleague come off player in a spot of bother here, so yeah, time yeah, will yeah, be yeah, off. Down stricken at the moment. And as ever, safety first here. We've got to give a big shout Thank out so to all the medical teams as yeah. well. Who, they come with the schools. See they that, see that, see that. are also that, provided that, by the tournament. A lot of them giving up their spare time, just like our referees have yeah. been outstanding all week. You know, these referees, are, this is day four for the refs oh, sorry, as well. So mate. when you're sparing a thought for the exhausted lungs and legs of the players, also just save a slice of that empathetic pie for the referees as well, because they are putting it in. Oh, it's a real team effort. A real team effort. Of, yeah, team effort. We've got a fabulous social media team as well. You can spot a camera lens a mile away. You know, not not like Angus Savage though. Oh my not goodness like me! Not like Angus Savage, like His, uh... being friends with Jamie Redknapp yesterday. Oh, you met Jamie Redknapp yesterday, did you, Angus? Do you know what? I hadn't seen or heard or spotted that on social media at all, no, he Angus. Hadn't, he hadn't mentioned it at all. You and Jr. Yeah, I'll tell you what though. He is the third hard, hardest working man in show business behind yourself and myself. Uh, he's writing. Um, reviews yeah, and previews like every day yeah, somehow, as well as doing right. all of his uh, his commentary duties and hosting the review and preview shows too. So he, uh, do you know what? No, no, he's not doing as much as us actually. I can't believe I was about to pump up his tires. Oh, hello. And, and just, and just, well, a, just a big thank you to everyone who are, who are delivering us these as well. To all the schools that are on RE1, we value these so much. Mm -hmm. These are these are well, well written out team sheets that are quite, da, 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 quite legible not, not always not always well written out as woody whacker's parents would have found out earlier when his uh... this is elite though this is elite see there's information on the t on the players as well it gives us the clubs that they play for as well so if you can take it to the next level Come then it down. means we okay. can lush up the comms that little bit more when your school's playing so get into the ear of your parents or your teachers make yeah. sure that they deliver those to us because we love to celebrate your big moments certainly do certainly do right so Catch. the injury has been taken care of and play about to resume Set. seven minutes and a bit of change having passed. Oh it's a big scrum from Kolika Kamwoz and they've turned another one over. Let's go reset. In fact, we're going to reset that. <coughs> Completely chaotic part of the game, isn't it? It's chaotic enough in 15s, yeah, but in 7s when it's three on three. Tough old gig at scrum half, isn't it? I, I like the look at the, of that blind side. So does, so he. does he, yeah. <laughs> Abingdon, oh, they are away this time. Clean pair of heels. Big hit coming in from Joey Williams. What sometimes happens though, Joe, is we get a team sheet like we've got for Abington here, and then number seven goes flying up the blind side and there's no number seven on the team sheet. So, troublesome. Yes, problematic with a QUE at the end. Advantage. Advantage over. Fourth try and skating into the 15 metre channel. Bit of a bullet on the pass, but how about that for a pouch from Dylan Scott? Yeah, it was Dylan Scott. It was beautiful soft hand set. Sam Talbot in for the second try. Eight minutes gone here. And Abingdon defending a little bit better. Colliga Kamoy coming to play another lovely pass off the left hand and Dylan Scott's gonna go again good feet by Scott then good strength from Scott and Dylan Scott is gonna go in from the edge to the poles and it's 24 nil snake hips from Dylan Scott there love the way that he moves there didn't just go foot to the floor 
allowed his defender to make a bit of a decision, then bounced off hard off that right foot. Great strength in the hips to go through the challenge. That is as pure a conversion as you see all week. But let's have a look at Dylan Scott. We've seen him dish one up with an assist. And this was a fine solo finish with an awful lot to do. So he's with Cardiff Rugby Academy. He's also with a club that play in the Welsh Championship uh, alongside Cardiff Met, Danny Milton and guards his men. Good, uh, good friends of ours, good rugby men. But I'm going to ask you to attempt to uh, pronounce that one, please. Bedwar. Joe. No. Well, it depends what part of Wales you're from. It's either oh, Bear Thy or Bather. They're, they're double hard, though. I know that. D double hard, yeah. Double deed. Yeah, double hard. Bedwar. Bevai. Bevai. So d uh, two Ds next to each other is a V. Angenbreig. Always learning. Oh, here we go. Abingdon trying to get something from this game. It's been a tough 10 minutes. Oh, but. Colica, come on, boys. Not prepared to cough one up. That is a, a snazzy head guard, isn't it? The red, white, and black one. Oh, that's a lovely stop and go as well. They're offloading beautifully. And now chipping over the top. Can he gather this? Oh, he can. Beautiful play, but a foot in touch stifles the attack. Logan Jones, though, the Triorki boy. Tiptoeing up that touchline. Yeah, Mark is here. Fine, please. Yeah, every year at the school centers, I get an education in what two consonants yeah, sat wait, next wait. to each other sound like in Welsh. I can actually, I've got a better grasp of the sounds of phonetics of Fijian yes. than I do of, of Welsh, actually. So it's always good to spend time with you here on the sevens, Dave, so that I can feel confident when I cross the Prince of Wales Bridge. This time it's Abington who drop it on the toe because they've got some speed merchants, but so of Colliger Kamoy. Then the first man back is Tom Fry of Ponticlean. Good turnover, though. Uh, yeah, I think you've done Morgan Stevens a disservice there as the big number six. But Abington, they got the ball, They're looking to pierce into that 22. Nice carry, weaving inside, sucking in three jerseys. If they can get a quick recycle, there's a bit of room here on the right. They like the short side. There's a two-on-one out there, but Conor can come on, defenders come across. Oh, yes, we love that back door. Now it needs to go. Space on the left-hand side. And it will be a score. Abington, get it down. It's been a long time coming, but it was well worth the wait. Well worked score, really, really dedicated. You've got to tip your hat to the Welsh scramble defence because they're actually a man down as one of their players picked up a knock and was sort of lumbering back. They spotted that, they tried to get it down the right side. What a conversion, sneaking in that right upright. But it does bring us to full time and it's two defeats for Abington. Can't even come on, get their group campaign off to a winning start. 26 points to seven. Here we go, fixtures coming thick and fast and into group E we are, Berkhamsted School on the left in the dark navy with fine red trim against Newport High School in the yellow. Newport High School 
having gone down to Bedford 24-5 in their opener, whilst Berkhamstead victorious against fellow Welsh opposition, 38-10 against Cardiff and Vale College, known as Kavak. Berkhamstead, well, they went pretty deep last year in the competition, and they got a big emphasis on their rugby sevens. They have the likes of James Rodwell, the England sevens great, in amongst the coaching ranks. But as they look to play out of their 22, pressure from the Newport boys forces the error. That's first scrum. Wait for the ball before we push. Wait for it to go before we slide out, all right? And just touching on there, their coaching ticket, Tom Hockady was a very fine sevens player when I was at Exeter University with him. He's there, track suited up, leading the first team. And they get their hand back on the ball, but off a couple of ricochets from various limbs. Well, you were just talking about Kavak there, Cardiff and Vale College, massive part of the Welsh rugby pathway. And if reports are, be, are to be believed, then former Wasps and Cardiff director of rugby, Di Young, has just taken the top job there. So that is quite the coaching pedigree to bring in. Well, it's all about Newport here, though, as they just about work their way into the 22. What about that for a clean set of heels? Oi. Jack Heald, Noah Morgan. It says quite quick on this team sheet, this kid's electric. The Betus Bandit goes over in the corner, Newport High School. Well, they're famed for quick wingers, aren't they? Lloyd Lewis, of course, formerly of the Welsh Sevens team, now playing for Newport. Ashton Hewitt for the Dragons. They love fast boys out there on the edge. Nye Evans, nice strike. <laughs> Not the direction. Not sure if I'm going to read all of his biography that has been put down. <laughs> Who's written it? <laughs> that is absolutely brutal. Newport High, they're, um, they're also looking for a bit of funding for a 4G as well. They want to get an all-weather pitch so that they can oh, play code is... all year round. So if beautiful. you like what you see, the Newport boys. Well, Berkhamstead, after that beautiful bit of volleyball, what a tackle from T.H. Chatham, but it is still Berkhamstead. There's the dummy, and it takes him away. Sends them to Sainsbury's. That is so good. Berkhamstead five, Newport High School five. And that the work of young Nye Lewis, wearing the seven jersey. Conversion missed. We're back to square one. Berkhamstead five. Newport High School five. I'm not sure we're going to see one bad game of rugby from no. now on. No. The quality, the calibre, it's just through the roof. And every team here with oh, rich ambition to go deep. That's an error from the kickoff that's worked out rather nicely for Newport. You get their offloading game off the deck going well bit of a grapple as Zach Taylor gets dragged to the floor the Kiwi board lad number 10 off feet drawing the penalty from the Berkhamstead number 10 here go Newport just looking to manipulate that defense slingshot nearly decapitates his teammate but instead it works its way into the hands of Dylan Roberts you pulled him over Done really well there, Roberts. That was not an easy ball to take. Now Chatham crunches it forward. Oh, he's a strong boy. Takes them up to the 22. And now Newport looking for try number two. The edge player out there, a little bit too far over on the edge. Can't really get involved until now. Oh, the ball doesn't quite find his way there. Dribbles into touch. Do you know what? I like it. I like it. Kept his discipline, chalk on the boots. He ended up having to try and slip catch to take that offload. But if he keeps the whip, it's a big, big problem for that last defender. So I say more for it. In short, you don't know what you're talking about, D. Rog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neither the first nor the last time I'll be accused of that. Yeah, you're taking the scrum option. Well, they're opting for the scrum, Berkhamstead. Well, there's been an injury here to Zach Taylor who's getting a bit of attention on. off the field. So the yellow jersey's been cycled on. No 
blind side really to have to defend as far as Newport are concerned. Bind. Offering a flat line. A good tussle in the scrum. Off go Berkhamstead. Oh, oh. Lovely step and then the injection of pace. Then the support. Good tackle. Brings down Ollie Smith. Well, the cover defence is good. The clouds have just come over here, but the juggling act just about works off. Oh, Toby Davy. how has he kept hold of that ball? A little bit of breeze coming as well. The breeze blowing behind Newport High School. Who get some wind in their sails and win the penalty. They clamp down on that ball and they're not hanging around. Dancing back inside, they're really challenging this Berkhamstead defensive line. Limbs all tangled, brilliant offload. Wow, uh, offload. <laughs> Jackal. And they're on the march already. Alex Nagelli, the man with the sticky paws. And from his intervention, off go Berkhamstead, the try scorer. Again, oh, finds a yellow jersey. No offside, so that's absolutely fine. Attempt, second attempt. Well, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of legal activity going on at the breakdowns at the moment. Runs straight into the shoulder of Ollie Bloor. Now Newport, perhaps one more attack before half time. Good defence though. That was Ollie Smith with the tackle for Berkhamstead. It's physical this, perhaps no, no. the most physical, compact game we've seen. Gritty, isn't it? Yeah. Noah Morgan goes wandering. And now we're wondering, will the bounce be kind? The bounce oh! will be sublime for Noah Morgan. The electrifying man with four on his back. Two tries. He's been the difference maker for Newport High School. And I feel as though the note we've been given that says quite quick might be a bit of an understatement. Oh. A head on hands as the crossbar cannons. But it's a half well done for the Newport boys who lead Berkhamstead 10-5 at the break. Berkhamstead 5, Newport High School 10. Dave Rogers and Joe Burns on the breakfast show today, and I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. It is one of the best days in British rugby, and Berkhamstead kicking off to Newport High School, needing a score and causing a bit of chaos. Almost a wonderful take there from Chatham, who is back on the ball, working hard. Oh, drawing in blue jerseys and squeezing that offload away. Quite nice because the Jackal attempt was about to come in. Great strength in the tackle and great strength with the tackle as well. And more of a cutesy little hug than anything else. Both players just grinding to a halt. Newport playing for territory. 
Well, Berkhamstead are trying to lie to the referee here and say that that went out on the full. It, it didn't. Who's number six for Berkhamstead? Our, our roving cameraman has just looked up at us and he's shaking his head. Yeah. He said, no, no, no. I, I, no, I'm gonna, no, no. I'm going to call him out big, now. Big, <laughs> sh big shout out as well to our camera crew as well. Poor old Eve got wiped out with the roaming camera and she's got a swollen knee today, so she's not on the roving camera. So they're putting themselves into a spot of danger to get the very, very best shots for you all at home. Ollie Smith was the porky pyre, County Darts champion, allegedly. Well, here go Berkhamstead now. You feel that they need to strike first in this half. They're patient, though. Alex Nigeli. Nigeli. Strong boy. Still, Nigeli. Oh, surely not. Wow, Nigeli. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely astonishing. Two Newport defenders got there in time. Neither could deal with the speed or the strength of Alex in 10. Just so composed, so confident. Dealt with everything that had come to him. Doesn't quite deal with the conversion, but the number 10 makes it 10-10. We might need to get a ruling on the pronunciation, but take a look at this. It was one of those where you were just waiting for someone to challenge him, waiting for the tackle to come, but it never did. He was waiting for it, and then he realised he was on the home straight. We just heard from the man himself. D. Rogers confirmed it is Nageli. Boy can play. No, Boy can play. He's leveled things up here in a tight affair. Good morning. He's going to get to fill the lungs now, but it is a nervous watch when you're in a bench coat watching your team in an absolute brawl like this one is in Newport High School. Working hard. Berkhamstead over the ball. Oh, he picked it up and then knocked it on. But he's going to be rewarded. And his teammate's going to be sent to the bin. Oh, that is a brutal turn of events for Berkhamstead. Really curious scenario that. Berkhamstead reduced to six at a critical moment in the match. They'll play the next with oh, two minutes. He has just been emptied. Ollie Smith, the bin man, taking out the trash from the blind spot. Oh, and then a, a loitering Newport player comes up with the ball and they're away. One missed tackle and you are punished. Dylan Roberts. Berkhamstead down to six. Newport taking advantage. And it was a player who perhaps should have been getting back into position. Got the rub of the green. And Newport lead again. 15-10. No extras to add, no conversion so far, I just wonder. Yeah. The way that scripts are written on RE1, will a last gasp conversion attempt prove decisive in this one? Hey, come on to the next one, because Blundells are off. Come up, yes, Rich, come up come now, up, come up now. Berkhamstead don't deal with that kickoff very efficiently got caught in two minds whether to tap or to take and that flood of yellow jerseys who were pouring onto him intimidating stuff when they come up in the front windshield Final couple of minutes. Berkhamstead needs something, but it's Newport High School on the ball. Another try here would surely be enough to take the W on RE1. Beautiful feet from Finn Jones. Oh, we go! Their pockets picked. A thief in the night. And no finish because the desperate defence has stopped them, but on the shoulder, up pops. One more man in blue, Ollie Smith, the man who's been taking souls with his shoulders out there, crops up with a try. 
that provides a conversion that may just hand Berkhamstead the lead. With six on the pitch as well. Oh, he's missed it. Hands on heads up here on the Berkhamstead bench among the supporters. This one's going down to the wire. Burglary in the midfield. But what about the chase back here? Yeah. Harry Harkins giving it everything. But that composure to thread that needle, two Newport High School defenders on the way back. Nigeli back onto the field. We know what he can produce. But Newport, who've led all the way, start carving a path through the deep blue jerseys and in to the Berkhamstead half. Oh, spilt forward oh. by the tri-saver. Harry Harkins. That's a tough beat for him, because he had the opportunity to be a hero. Cross. Five. Set. Surely the last play. At the short side. Go Berkham said, can they snatch the victory on the gal? He can't get onto it. And he's just got a little fingertip. Referee checks the watch. Is there one more go? There's five seconds. He's going to give us another crumb. What a feast. What a feast. We're into the red. Oh, my goodness. Huge call. Ollie Bloor takes the quick tap. He feeds Nigeli. Nigeli goes to himself and it could open up here for Berkhamstead. Into the 22. Where's the option? To the scrum half. He gets side down by the ankle. Squeezes the up lane. Surely for Berkhamstead. One pass. One dart. A try at the death. Victory stolen by Lorcan Farrell. Newport Heart shattered and Berkham said breathe a sigh of relief with Lorcan Farrell the hero. <laughs> Unbelievable drama on RE1 as per usual but this one goes to Berkhamstead. They triumph in the last play of the game, 2015 against Newport High School. A thriller at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. As per usual, Berkhamstead the winners, but a heavyweight clash awaits us now. The Brown of Sedba tight in their huddle, hands together, one goal, one soul, up against the Red and White Hoot Blundell School. And I'm delighted to say that head coach of Exeter University Rugby Club, the mighty EURFC, back-to-back -back Buck Super Rugby Cup champions and recent title league title winners Rich Hodges is a long meet for the ride say hi to the fans there Rich sporting the crest as well we've got all the best universities in the land here and Exeter no different Rich this is, this is a big match yeah no a massive match obviously uh, Tony Yaps just taken over at Blundell so it's his first time really leading them as the director of rugby uh, Blundell, so really excited to see what they, they're going to do here. Well, his son has kicked off and it's bounced kindly into the arms of the Brown, who put the burners on, but it's a brilliant sweeper tackle from that yap. 
Such a rich rugby heritage at Sedbur. They'll be hosting their remarkable tens tournament at the weekends. All the best schools in the land up there. But they've got all the moves right here on RE1. As Newton sells the dummy, sells Blundells and sells himself into the opening score of the game. Newton with the opening score and he'll look to add an extra two here. Well, here we go. Quick thinking, wasn't it, from Newton? Just opened up for him, and you know, sometimes that's all it needs a fast brain rather than fast feet. Back Good Fred. contest, and the bounce of the ball going the way of the Brown, who are in the Blundell's half again. Going to the edge, really putting some width on and some zip from the heels of Holmes. Recycled, fizz to Williamson. Williamson testing the shoulders of Yap again, but the offload spilt forward. And just feathered forward as well from Blundell, so they can't take the advantage. Rich, you're here in, uh, what, what capacity are you here for for Exeter University? Uh, we've just come up here today to just have a look at, you know, the game, uh, this under 18s age group, obviously, you know, this is the pinnacle sevens tournament of the season and, you know, really interesting to see how the players come and have a look at some of the players who are looking to join the university next year. A good scrum there from Blundells. And off they go. Down the right, but just a little loose on the pass, too much Don't ask of James Clarkson. Not quite clicking for Blundells in this okay. opening pair of minutes. That's your mark. Lads, hooker in the channel, please. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Fight, fight, fight. Are you receiver? Come up. Said that. Attacking again in the hands of Holmes. Holmes looking like a real slippery customer. And then the try scorer, Newton, who this time is looking to create, finding Billy Burkett. Newton to Holmes. They enjoy each other's company, don't they? Linking up the two half-backs. Bounce pass, too tricky to stick. And Billy Burkett knocks it on. Another big scrum here now for Blundell's try and get itself some field possession. You know, they've been in deep in their half for the you know, opening three minutes of this game. So really looking to see what they can do and, and see if they can get Rocky Prowse on the ball and get into the half and build some field position. Rich, when you're here looking at potential players to come and join the programme at Exeter University, who uh, are the best, best uni in the country at the moment, you know, seeing these skills on show, is it plain to see is sevens a really good window into what these players are capable of? Yeah, no, it is, uh, definitely is, but, you know, is it, Obviously, sevens is not a game for the, the front row. I know there is a couple of front rows here today playing for different sides, but you know, it really gives them uh, the backs some attack to space, uh, space to attack into. And then obviously, some of the back row forwards out there today, you know, can really show themselves from a physical level in some one v one tackles. So, you know, it's really a good game to watch. It's just exciting, it's fast paced, and you know, all these schools here today are putting their best foot forward. And you know, it'd be really interesting to see what it comes to be the winner at the end of this tournament. Some decent back rowers as well here. This is this is one to find a dynamic back rower to. And Holmes fizzes is out. The service is impeccable from Holmes right now. Burkett offers up the switch, brings in his winger, who gets wrestled to the floor. That's Bullanuk. That. Leave the ball. Sorry. So Bullanuk that gives away. The penalty. And Blundell's being driven back. They're yet to really prize an opening in the Sedbert defence. And that's outstanding breakdown work from Newton. Newton pulling the strings again. And again, that last pass not sticking for Sedbert. 
Will they come to root this dominance Jones. in this first half? Oh, oh. oh, scampering through. Rocky Prouse. Goes Rocky Prouse, the vice captain. <laughs> Presentation a little messy, no but that's because there's no release. From Burton. Oh. Yeah. Seed out to oh, the centre of the field. Bulanutha scrabbling on the floor. I mean, it's so messy it's from both sides, round. isn't it? Oh, yeah, no, it hasn't really been the game what I expected it to be. I thought this was going to be a thriller, but, you know, there's still a long time to go in this game. Uh, two minutes before half-time and then a whole second half where, you know, I imagine the coaches will speak to the teams about being really clinical in the second half because it's just one try uh, that splits the two sides at the moment. Bynes! Set! Yeah. Gets it away. Reverse spin pass on that. Jack Clover switches with Prowse. Sells the dummy and almost, almost glides through. Prowse, head up, looking for options. And he finds it wider. Archie, joiner. Yeah. Yeah. Getting swung around, but keeping his feet. But the Blundell's right. coaching staff will be tearing their hair out. The pass is not going to hand. And, well, the line-out taken quickly by Bulanutha and no. Newton. Always, always looking to create space. But he gets Scrum press ganged in the middle. Scrum advantage offload from Scrum Blundells. And over. Said but at the moment, the architects of their own downfall. A little bit of a late tackle, but Blundells will still play. Joyner looking to join with Yap. Who again goes to the bounce pass, the communication off on the switch. Bulanutha clatters into him. It is an absolute scrap out there. Well, Turnbull wanted to go Quick quickly, but it wasn't for the mark. Didn't leave the hands. <laughs> lacking, a bit of, lacking a bit of crisp quality out there, Never Rich. Left your hands. Let's call it what it is. Uh, I'm sure this game will open up in the second half. Um, I'm sure the coaching teams, in, in, you know, in that short turnover time, will, will be speaking to the teams about being really clinical in the second half. You know, both teams have, have done well. Um, the score only to be this. Both teams have had opportunities. Seppa with them, the more of the opportunities and playing the better field position. But you know, with, with a seven-point game in this game, okay, this could easily come back for Blundells. So they got, you know, a shot here. Probably the last player of the half. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, gets the ball to Clover, to Rocky Prouse, who, who's played well in the 15th season this year, but just tackled there, back to Yap. Dancing feet from Yap, he looks for Prouse again. Really powerful athletes for diminutive frames. <laughs> the confidence to flip a pass like that. Shuddering shot, but still there for Blundells, who've retreated. A good 40 metres. Now to the edge they go. Finally, more than five passes sticking for the boys in red and white, but right off the feet. Far too much exuberance. Drilling into that breakdown. And with an extra minute and a half play, Newton passes to Billy Burkett. And I think I speak... Oh, well, there's, there's, there's another, another penalty. penalty. I was going to say, I think I speak for all of us that we'll be glad to see the half-time whistle. But another penalty, another chance, another time with Yap on the ball. Here we Whips go. it out to Joyner, back to Prowse. No way through for Blunders. You need to take it to the line here. And I Finally, at long last, there. a long last, a few knock-ons. <laughs> bring a pretty painful nine minutes to a close for both sides and certainly for both sets of coaches. Lots of information to impart on these young lads at halftime. It's Blundell's nil, said for seven. And, uh, and Rich, let's, um, let's talk a bit of sevens, let's talk a bit of uni sevens because you, EURC, you're going to be coming to the Rossin Park uni sevens. It's going to be taking place on the 7th of June with the best in the country throwing down at Roslyn Park's ground, The Rock. 
No, yeah, that's, it's going to be an interesting one, obviously, with Buck Sevens uh, moving away from Leeds and going um, and going to Bournemouth this year, actually having a University Sevens uh, bespoke event, which is obviously going to be run by um, you guys, is, is, is exciting. Um, it, you know, it'll be late in the late in the day. There's an opportunity for players who play put the shirt on for all the institutions to come down and see, you know, how the, the young guys who are taking over their shirts are really getting involved in the game. And, you know, it should be a, a fantastic night of, of University Sevens rugby, um, which will be like the end showpiece of some of these players' uh, careers um, before they go into the, the wider world. Yeah, exciting times. It's going to be held the day and night before the Premiership final as well that will be taking place on the Saturday. So good opportunity for all the alumni of the universities like Durham, Loughborough, Exeter, Hartbury, Bath, Newcastle, Nottingham, probably miss a few Swansea to come on down and see the jerseys that they used to play in. And uh, yeah, well, the finals, they kick off at 10 p.m. under the floodlights, so the place is going to be jumping. And also, we are looking, hasn't been confirmed with the schools yet, we are looking for a unification bout exhibition match in the under-18s. We would love to pit the Vars champions against the Cup champions from the school sevens in an exhibition match that night before the finals. If, if we can get the Eddie Hearns and Frank Warrens of the school rugby worlds together to see if they can get their lads in action. It'll be a fantastic event and one that Blundells and Sedbert would be pretty keen to be at as a steeple kick in kickoff is pinned Back tight on the touchline. You don't get better than that and Sedbert win the two. possession. Two from each side, line out formed. Uh, Rich, if you could talk for a moment while I just have a bit of banana cake, <laughs> that would be fantastic. I've eaten too much here. So Newton kicked off long, long there and uh, it was spilt forward, um, but actually went into touch, so they neglected for the line out and then obviously that hasn't gone straight. So it's very much the same as the first half, really. It's, it started off really scrappy, but, you know, it, it's, it's still 7-0 to Seba, but we're really waiting for some, someone to to lighten this game up again and provide an action that everybody watching online and, and around RE1 uh, is, is waiting for. You know, the attendance is getting bigger here today. Uh, everybody's around the outside. Everybody's waiting for this game. Um, and we're just waiting for that one moment. But, you know, Jack Clover's got the ball now. He looks for Rocky Prowse. Rocky Prowse gets into the hole and the tackle tackle's completed. So, Lucas Sharp's got the ball. Long uh, pass out. Yeah, Blundells just just looking for a way through this brown wall at the moment. It's been such a tight press from Sedbert, and it's forced the errors. Yap sees a bit of daylight, but it promptly gets darkened by the shoulders of Sedbert. Across the 22. Nice feet, but still no way through. Randall doing the wrapping up for the brown. Roll clear. Penalty oh to Blundells and coughed forward. And I'm afraid that sums up this match at the moment. Yeah, no, so there's been a couple of changes at half time. Um, so it looks like Randall's come on. Um, so we'll, we'll see what he, he can bring. Uh, you know, the dynamic center in the 15s game looks like he's playing on the wing today, but he might, he might be able to inject some energy into this game, but you know, there has been a massive de defensive set there here from Sebra throughout the game. They look very, very calm defensively. They took good shape, only one guy into a tackle, um, and it looks like we've got a try. Housel was lurking on the right, but it was all Holmes. Holmes dropping the hammer through the Blundell's defence. And Sebra have a second yeah, as you. both sides have laboured to create any chance of merit. One and man kick, takes it upon Thank himself you. to do the damage. Newton. Strikes it pure, strikes it true, strikes it through the upright. So another pair of points to add to the tally. And Rich, sometimes you just got to back yourself. It opens up 
Yeah, no, go for it. He did really well there. He got on the outside and then put his head, got his head through that hole, and you know got himself the, over the line. So we're really now looking for a response from Blundells. Uh, they're going to receive the kick off. Uh, hopefully they can have a clean take, um, but they haven't. It's been slapped back um, by Brown. So Seppo have got the ball again, and they're in, back into that attacking third. Well. Good, good steal attempt, but then blasted off at the last. Really, really important intervention coming in there. Sedba lurching down that right hand side, left hand side, ball inside. But a penalty again at the breakdown. They can't get any consistency, but the scoreboard's their friend right now, and Blundells are getting frustrated. Kicking the ball away. Off you go. Oh, and ill discipline from Hines. Oh, May have just opened up a can of problems yeah, for no. Sedbert as Blundells now are attacking against six. Yeah, looks really silky when on the move, but he's been well watched by Sedbert. Prowse the same. Another nibble at the breakdown and it forces the knock on. You know, Serpa's defence has been excellent in this game and it's probably been the difference between the sides. Though there's been, you know, an, a number of handle errors from both sides, actually, the, 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 their containment wall where they've just stood in front, OK, made one-on-one -on -one tackles, got the player back onto the feet, has, has probably been the difference between the two sides here. Massive week for Serpa okay, with now, their tens competition starting on Sunday. Okay, time off. Uh, at their absolutely time is off. wonderful school. On. It's, uh, it's a mythical feel when you go up to Sedba, and certainly okay, you ready. have Time on, let's get formed up, please. some outstanding young rugby players Crouch. wearing their school jerseys for the very last time. They'll be looking to wrest the crown from their arch rivals, Kirkham, this year. But first things first, how deep can they go at this Rosslyn Park National School Sevens? And there's a bit of biff boiling over, largely, I mean, if Relax, you're frustrated, so lads, imagine us watching and commentating Relax. on this game. <laughs> Otherwise, the penalty will go against you. <laughs> Scrum red. Here we go. 30 seconds. 30, 30. Here we go. So I think we've got 30 seconds or so left. Um, let's really see what can, Blundells can do now. They've got a scrum just outside their own 22. Let, let's see if they can put something together. Obviously, uh, short backfield here with the, with the yellow card still in play. So, you know, let's really Crouch. see if they can take this opportunity. Blind. Set. Ball goes in from Harrison Blake Reed. Prowse stutters, restarts, but he's dragging a caravan. The fling off the floor falls into said for hands. Bulanutha. Bulanutha. Oh, saves a little bit of the spectacular for the very last play. A game that has been bereft of quality. Finally, has a sprinkle of stardust from the backdoor boogie from Bulanutha and Sedba make absolutely sure of the W here on our E1. Finally, a bit of class to celebrate, Rich. No, yeah, that's a great. It's a great try from Newman. Um, he, he's got he's got the ball out of the back there, lovely, and you know they're they're in they're in there in the corner and just with the conversion to come, and it, you know he's. Oh, he's just, he's just put that one wide of the left-hand post, so um, we, looks like we've still got a little bit of time there. Uh, so, separate to kick off 20 again. Seconds. 20 seconds left, so separate to kick off left uh, again, and we'll, and we'll go from there. How about this? Just wait, please. Got the call. Newman with the finish. Will be yes. Okay. Changes rung for Blundells. Final play. They'll be looking for some positivity to take into their next match. But right now they're looking for a bit of wit on the pull out. No switch in the midfield coming. It's better. Fresh legs, Will Maunder. Got the offload away. Skipping through the tackles. That's 
Jack Clover. High tackle. High tackle being forced. Blundells finally into the set for half. They've really had to toil. Good hand, short line, just trying to fix some of those defenders. Bulanutha well, gets blown out of the way. One more ball shipped on to Banton. He goes back to Southgate. The call coming in from Blake Reed. Orchestrating his big players around him. Blake Reed on the wrap around. This is nicely worked, but then they're back to the middle with Clarkson. Again, that's that's a push. Defence just holding its shape here. Um, you know, it's looked really comfortable, but a little offload there, and it's gone forward. And that's the game. Love the idea of trying to free the hands up to sling it round the back of the defender. But for Blundells, the deed was already done, and it was that of Sedbers. So, final score here on RE1. Blundells nil, said but 19. And we are going to go down pitch side to Amy Wilson Hardy, who is with another great of the university game. It is Durham's finest, Alex Key. Thanks, Jonesy. I'm here with Alex Key, who is 13 years at Durham. Yes, correct. Yeah. How are you finding your Roslyn experience on the sideline here? Ah, it's always a great day. It's a fantastic day. Great, so many uh, good players around, amazing talent, and it's such a well-run, you know, uh, day out. Definitely. And now you're not with Durham. You're looking. At, I'm looking at your hoodie here, sporting gap years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell? It came a little bit out of the Durham experience in the sense that we found guys coming from school, going straight to uni, particularly books. It would be a big challenge. It was a massive step. So having a meaningful year out, growing your game in either. Australia, New Zealand or uh, South Africa was something that we felt benefited from people and, and they did, they really hugely benefited. You said it wasn't all Bondi Sands and cocktails, can you tell me a little bit more about what they get up to over there? Yeah, so in uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, sorry, New Zealand, South Africa, they're tied with academies. In Australia, they're involved with Shoot Shield, Prem teams in Sydney. So they're all pretty high profile sport, you know, in terms of rugby and cricket. Um, but they'll go and play, you know, top end stuff. Uh, so there's a room for everyone because obviously the age groups that, that uh, cater for that as well. But it's, you know, yes, what we don't want is guys just going and doing full moon parties and Bondi. But yeah, that's kind of part of the gig. If you want to do that on top as well, great. But go and make something meaningful to, to grow your sport. Amazing. It sounds like something I want to get involved with. So yeah. take me to a sporting gap here, please. But we're held back for the rest of the game with Bernsey. Thank you. But if you are interested in the full moon party scene, then drop me a DM on uh, Instagram or Twitter. <laughs> no, good stuff going on there from Alex Key, who really was one of the titans of the university game, led Durham University to a number of league and cup championships. And he was stern opposition for the man who's alongside me, head of Exeter University Rugby, Rich Hodges, head coach. And uh, it's uh, timely that he's here because Exeter College are in action here on the ball. Up against Brighton College, finalists last year in the mud bath, denied by Harrow in an epic, looking to go all the way. And boy, is it tough to go all the way. Even getting to a final is extraordinary, but to win it is a moment in time. Then by White. Well, Rich, Stand you and White. I both uh, just had the misfortune of chewing through <laughs> Sedba versus Blundells. It can only get better from that match. No, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Exeter College do here. Um, they're against, you know, a really good outfit in Brighton. Uh, watched Brighton uh, on an earlier pitch earlier in the day, and, and they, they look good. So, you know, yeah, and Nick defeated St Benedict's 31-0. Yeah, and Nick's a good coach, and I know, you know, they, they've got a big four days now. They've got obviously two days here, followed by them going up to Sedba 10. So, you know, it's a really enjoyable uh, period for the players who probably, some of them will wear that Brighton jersey for the last time. Say five, guys. Oh, that is a wonderful steal. Predatory instincts at the base. And Brighton going coast to coast, having picked the pockets of Exeter College. Racing away to the line. And Brighton in for the opening score of the match.
Well, I've just, just found, found a Brighton T-shirt. Henry Williams, Quinn's under-18 centre. An abrasive runner, it says here, but a silky right, one Captain. right there. Captain, please. It was all about this steal at the back of the scrum. I saw a tackle here. I didn't, I didn't see who did it, so I can't penalise it. But if I see anything like that, you know what will happen. Yeah, no, that's a really, really good try. Um, you know, the turnover of the scrum and it, on his own five metre line, and then he, you know, he's managed to go 90 metres there and score a try and, and put Brighton 5 0 up. Conversion there was slight, a missed, but uh, they're back into the game. Brighton kick off now. It's a good kick. There's contact in the air there. I think we're going to be looking at a yellow card here the, for the Brighton the player. Uh, and yeah, no, that no. number. Player, that's fine. Sam Ringo Jones. Well, yeah, there's uh, there's little leniency when you take players in the air. So Brighton College having taken the lead against this Exeter College side, who went down to Hartbury, their arch rivals in the opening match. Are defending with six as the boys in blue from Devon go to task in an attacking sense. Turnover's good there. Another exceptional steal from Alex Stubbs, player of the tournament at the South Coast Sevens earlier this year and doing a fine job at the moment, feeding the speed. Oh, wow. Feeding the speed, guzzling the gas. Billy Hornsborough. Again, exploiting the left edge of Exeter College and going the distance. Yeah, he's got he's got himself right on the post there as well, so this should be an easy seven points um, for them. So, yeah, no, really good try. Again, you know, come from that turnover. So we've, the first try, obviously, come from that scrum that turnover and then a good jackal over in the far corner there, give the ball. And then the six men of Brighton have, have gone the length of the field again to get their second try of the, of the game. The conversion is good from Lamb. And I'm going to have to call out the handwriting of Nick Boy <laughs> of Brighton College here because I really am straining to make out some of the hieroglyphics that he's got down here. Francis Lamb? Frank Lamb. Frank Lamb. Frank Lamb? Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to tweet in at Burnsy Drama, get a clarification on that. But as it stands, Brighton doing the business here. Five minutes and a bit of change having elapsed. And Exeter College not finding a way through as of yet. But we all know that a game of sevens can change on the flip of a coin. A rich rugby history at Brighton College. Having produced some of the Do great modern that? players. And we're getting a little bit of play here from Exeter. So it's probably their first opportunity where they've had continued possession so you know they've got it out to the edge all oh, we've got a kick in behind uh, a bit time, of a foot race time, time. but it looks like Billy's gonna pick that one up what well, can he do we don't oh. want to give it to Hornsborough in space I think we learned that from the last try but actually Exeter coordinate themselves in timely fashion to present a united front in the 22 there is a sweeper back there for Exeter College, Jane um, Clark. Looks like Harry Streak is, is going to get the ball away tackle. again. He, he's, he's kicked that, he's gone into I'm midfield. Inside. That's an interesting so, kick because it's gone oh. deep into the midfield and almost, I thought, Brighton oh, were upon oh. it. Goodness me, one, two, three nibbles and a juggle. Uh, oh, there, there's a good another turnover here. The counter attack's on. Exeter College are uh, disorganised at the moment and <laughs> fractured field. Hornsborough, Hornsborough again. Well, it's where it all started, back on his own five-metre line, and then he crops up in the 22, and too much room for a man with that much pace. And Billy Hornsborough bags himself a brace. On the clock. But if he, when he takes the kick, it'll be a half time. It looks like that's the, uh, this is this kick's going to be the last play of the half, and and Brighton will go back to their full complement of seven after when they come back into the second half. Half time here on RE1 and Brighton in control, leading Exeter College 19 points to nil.
Let's go, boys. 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 Let's go, Right, Brighton College looking razor sharp against their rival college in Exeter. Rich, where, where do Exeter College sit in the Exeter pathway, in the Exeter Chiefs Cosmos? We're going to come to that in a second because Brighton are making a bow. Oh, my goodness, it is dismissive. It's disdainful from the left palm of Archie Kane. Wow, they can play, can't they? Brighton College moving oh. through the gears and hitting hyperdrive through Ben, ben Saunders. Saunders. <laughs> no, really well worked there. You know, they, they got on the outside of them. They made that exit of defence narrow and then they got in behind again with a one-on-one -on -one tackle miss there. And, and Ben Saunders <laughs> goes through under the post and the conversion is successful again. Well, Ben Saunders are across for the try. We're taking another look at this. You talk us through it, Rich, because I'm trying to grab some team sheets that are flying off our desk here in the win. Let's have it. Let's talk about this finish. No, no, it's a really, really good finish. Um, it was, a, it was a tackle there, offload on back on the inside, and then Ben Saunders so far, on, the, on a shoulder there has come in and, and you know dotted that one down under the post. Brighton College playing the kind of brand that says we're a team that want to go one step further than we did last year. Hornsbury okay. looks dangerous every time he gets the ball. No, uh, yeah, and then here's Archie Davis just come on. Captain Harlequins in the, uh, the 18s, or what, what co-captain of Harlequins in the 18s? <laughs> Bit of tick attack of rugby tight on the right, right touchline, right but the one two up. not snappy enough. Exeter College. We're having a torrid time against a really slick Brighton College here at the moment. Let's go White! Fergus Lamb, I reckon. Fergus? Yeah, no, we'll go, we'll go with Fergus. That. Exeter Good College, line, rise highest to the tail. What so they can get, they do here? They get some nice, fresh ball. Good, Good feet. Yeah, Good yeah no, great feet. Stand. Just being smothered here by the Brighton defence. No hands! No hands! But well, they maintain possession and they look to come back to where the line-out started. Uh, we got a bit of a gap opening here. Oh, well, the Offloads. delay on the ball. It almost escaped the grass, but he flipped it off the fingers. And Exeter College are up to the 10-metre line, nicely off the floor. Exeter College pump the brakes, flip out it the out the back. back. And now they're beginning to play. Now they're beginning to look no like hands, no they're loving their time on the no ball. Hands, no almost hands, to the halfway line. No red, the no counter red. ruck gets ushered away by the call of the referee. Here we go, to, the to the line. Gap opens up. Oh, brilliant, brilliant tackle down low from Hornsborough. But the offload's there. Exeter right, College again. still in possession. Oh, oh one last flip. And then the tackle's made. They, they've, they've brought the possession right up now. They've started this deep inside their own 22 and now just getting into the Brighton 22. Is there, is there an overlap here? Oh, no, they've gone back inside. The tackle's still coming in. It is disciplined, dedicated no, defence from Brighton. No, 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 they've been no. marched all the way back. The next the college back. just metre by metre making their way Here to the go. pain. Here's the chance into the in hands. the corner. Step back inside. Of Clark, and Clark <laughs> delivers on the left edge. A fabulous try from Exeter College, demonstrating great patience.
And Red. finally, they breach the Red. Brighton Red. College line. First time in the match. And a tricky conversion. <laughs> Which is hatted in unglamorous fashion. <laughs> but the main thing is, it's over and across, and Exeter have seven points to their name. Here we go then, we're just waiting for Brighton to come back with the ball here and then Exeter College will kick off. There's only a few minutes left in this game, so let's see what Exeter College can do in the final part of this encounter. So, Exeter College. Oh, put a bit of hang time on that ball, but speaking of hang time, Sam Andre Jones levitates and then it's lift off all the way to the try line. An immediate response from Brighton College. These boys are looking like contenders. Oh uh, yeah, they, they really do look good today. They defended really well in this game and you know I don't think they conceded a point in their first, in their opening game um, on one of the back pitches here at Roslyn Park. But you know, again here today just conceded one try. They you know they look, really look like they're gonna try and compete for the the trophy which they missed last year. Okay, good to go. So, Rich, you're going to dive off because you've got work yeah, to do. Take a look important. there. Take a look there. There's the comms cam. If you want to learn more about EURC, if you want to learn about Exeter University, this is the guy you need to look for, the head coach, the man who's guided them to a league championship and now is going into the knockouts. He'll be wandering around. And all the other universities as well, the best ones in the country are here. That's the prestige of this Sevens event. Brighton. Final throws of a match where they have really impressed and not just the starting seven, but all the extras who've risen from the pine. Big wind up, but then not released. By Miller Cole. Brighton are really in the mood. Dylan Moss. Please don't kick the ball after the score. Thank you. Finishes another fine passage of play. Exeter College have come up against the supercharged Brighton College here. 20 seconds on the clock. If the kicker takes his time, that'll be that. But Brighton, the mood that they're in, the manner in which they're swaggering around this RE1, they may look like they want another. Final kick of the match. Brighton College have put on an exhibition against Exeter. They cruise through this one, 38 points to seven. Was that the ball? Or? And let's take another look at this bit of action because I think I might have missed a bit of magic. There was the big wind up and there was the offload out the back. And there was the fine finish from Dylan Moss. Another try to the boys from Brighton. I'm joined by Guy Stanton from Fibac, who've been developing this amazing app, actually. It gives you a load of detail on basically reviewing your own performance. Well, it's reviewing both uh, players' performance and being assessed by a coach as well. So what we've created is a digital tool. Uh, it's app-based, but with a really good web backend that allows coaches to assess players really, really quickly uh, and for players to do self-assessment as well. So players can do their own self-assessment, coaches can assess, creates a score uh, and there you go so it creates a bit of top, someone mentioned a bit of a top trumps for rugby players so it's quite exciting top trumps for rugby players I'd quite fancy a bit of that I, I, not that I'd have scored particularly highly myself um, 
listen, you played at the uh, Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens, and we were just chatting about that on the way here. Tell me a bit about that. Okay, so we're going back in the dark ages. 1983 it was. I played for the under-13s Warwick School. I think it was on this pitch here. Got to the final, and my fly half, whose name won't be mentioned, of course, in front of the posts to tie the game hooks it and we lost whatever i can't remember the score in those days it would have been four for a try wouldn't it so we lost six four or something shocker but good experience somewhere him and gavin hastings uh have, having a little tears party somewhere uh listen the boys are out on the field so just to remind people where can they find out about feedback Okay, so go online, feedback.com. Um, you can download the app on the App Store. It's iOS only at the moment, but encourage kids and assessors, schools, download it, have a look, and then contact us on the, on the website. Absolutely fantastic. It is well worth checking out. I've been having a play around. It's great fun and very useful as well. But we're going to hand you back up to what looks like Dave Rogers on commentary for this one. Certainly is. Cheers, Angus. We're back underway. It's Tunbridge School in the black and white against Llandovery College in the white with the red trim. Tunbridge School sticking with the incredibly complicated system where they're not defined by the numbers on their back. They're all total footballers and therefore don't have any numbers on the back, which is going to make calling out the names pretty difficult. But they are a strong team and have been for years. The school of the brilliant Ben Earl, of course, among Many others, Llandovery College so often, they're the ones flying the flag for Welsh rugby at schoolboy level. And here they are coming forward through Griff Watkins. You want to talk about great internationals, Ben Earl being one from Tunbridge School. Alan Wynne-Jones being one from Llandovery College. Plenty of other Wales and British and Irish Lions as well. Andy Powell, another. And a Welshman actually in charge of sport at Tunbridge School. Chris Morgan, of Swansea, I think he used to play for Lachar RFC. Great rugby club in South Wales. Time back on. Here's my cards here. Thank you. Well, what a day, day one of this under 18 boys Bind. cup. We're absolutely flying Set. through the games too. This is Group B, this game on RE1 with Llandovery College coming forward. Good defensive pressure from Tunbridge, but breaking through is Griff Watkins. Great feet by Griff Watkins. Welsh exile, lives in Sussex. Lovely hands, lovely feet, and a handful of jersey prevents the try, but only until Tom Williams. The Scarlets under 17 bursts through, breaks through. And every college take the lead against Tunbridge School. <laughs> first real attack, first real opportunity. Yields the try. It's a quick ball, wasn't it? You can generate that kind of speed and opportunities will come. That was Owen Griffiths, Owen Griffiths. It's great strength to keep hold of him, but the offload was good and Tom Williams Brother plays for AFC Wimbledon. Today is all about the other brother. Back underway, Tunbridge with the opportunity. Oh, good low tackle and turned over. Griff on the ball again. Now, Owen Rickard. Rickard tackled. There's a, a boot on it. And penalty to Tunbridge. So, Slendevery College, they lost their first game against Dulwich. And now Tunbridge up the right hand side. Two defenders coming across. Good tackle made. Good offload, too. And Slendevery defending their 22 for the first time. Tunbridge. Oh, this is great strength. Now ball movement, players over there. They will dot down, they'll dot down close to the poles as well. <laughs> Tunbridge, this is their third game already. And they're two out of two. I do apologise, they're one out of two. They 
hammered Henley College, then lost to Woodhouse Grove. So both teams really need a victory here. One defeat, not fatal. Two, probably so. <laughs> seven, seven, game on. Broken to Flandevery, not even the referee can stop this attack from going forward. Short ball's a good one, offload, not so much, and Tunbridge have turned that over. The sweeper saving the try for sure. Now Tunbridge working it out to the left, plenty of Flandevery defenders there. Not held, not held. And now Tunbridge away. They're a player down. Tunbridge currently playing with six, but Back attacking ball. well with brutal no, not strength. On the ball. Not on the ball. Play on. He's good. And now Flandevery with numbers. They need to be smart here. It's a three on one. The sweeper slipping off the tackle. Tough ask for him. Yori Badham. Part of the Wales under 20 squad, a couple of years up. Talented young man gets a score. <laughs> and Flandovery back ahead. Time off, not half time. Time off, injury. Not half time, not half time, injury. A couple of stricken players. Yeah, yeah. Dak Johnston down for Tunbridge, of course. This uh, is their third game since the 10 o'clock kickoff. You okay? 87 seconds. Happy? Water off, please. Not half time. Water off. Wait for water to go off. Okay, time back on. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Hey, play. Has that gone forward? Yes, it has. It's scrum white ball. Scrum white ball. Here's the mark. Mark it, lad. Hook us here, please. Crouch. One minute to go Set. until half time. Flandevery 14, Tunbridge 7. Flandevery, fancy the short side, and Yori Badham backs himself. Yori Badham outside, inside, outside again. Out. Oh, and just puts back in touch. Must be marked. Thank you. Line out. Either side, please. Five meters, five meters. Back to the gap, please. Young man. Come cap gap, thank you. Big line out now. Oh, they've gone to the front. Smart play from Tunbridge. Very well done. Still work to do, and that work has been executed well. Now they're outside the 22. Oh, just knocked on. And that takes us through till half time. What a game! And every college 14, Tunbridge 7, great contest.
the units for uh, yeah the whole of this academic year so far. So since September, I've yeah got eight eight units. I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for analysing what the players are doing, how hard they're working. I think in, in training, but in matches as well, it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes, if you like, the people that, that work, but you don't necessarily see them doing the work. So the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves. So all I have to do, look on the cloud, uh, sort of platform, and then I can do my analysis from there. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far I was running as well as my max speed. It's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. So you just run the most, he's the fastest. This is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app. We've created a rugby school community uh, so they can compare themselves against each other and get leaderboards for each metric. And yeah, it certainly breeds that, uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard and never giving up until... Seven, Tunbridge in the Barbarian hoops and every college trying to usher them into touch at the start of this second half and winning the ball back to Griff Watkins. Griff Watkins, one man to beat. Griff Watkins tackled. Oh, off the floor, on the floor, leave it. But what a start here on, on the, the floor, second advantage. man having a go. Worn by the referee, not on once, not twice. Leave the ball, leave the ball. Tom Mitchell, what do you make of that? Right, they look like they had a chance to sniff at the breakdown but hands all over the park. Morgan Edwards waiting on the edge. Oh, now we've got a foot race. Here we go, Tunbridge, the first there. This is serious gas, and then Watkins chasing back, but it's with Tunbridge. It's squirted backwards. Oh, this is where the lungs start to burn, isn't it? Start of the second half, already end-to-end -end stuff. That's a really good step, and the Fen needs support, and it eventually arrives. Nice quick ball, unnecessary goose step. We love to see it because it opens up for Yori Badham. Second try. And the Lucy Goosey ends up juicy. 19 7. Naughty feet to finish. What a delightful bit of play. That is sevens at its best. Up one end, penalty, quick tap, down the other. Nifty bit of footwork, but then Clandovery going all the way back to answer. And the universal sign for replacement. This was really good work, though, from Dylan Rowe. It's there, keeping the ball alive, so key. So this turnover time, if he doesn't, I don't think it was unnecessary. <laughs> it's a thing of beauty, and it gets him under the sticks. Well, it's vindicated, but it results in a try, right? Good restart. But it's gone forward Speed, off a red hand. Touch. What do you want? Not going to touch. I was interested to get your insight here. So you've got the choice over there, line out scrum. What are you going for? Scrum always less um, uncertain when it comes to getting retaining possession. Line out, especially if I was thrown in. It was always a bit 50-50. Good opportunity now for Tunbridge, and they need this next score. All three have been converted for Sundevery. Which puts the pressure on Tunbridge, because one missed conversion, and it's a three-score game. Not a two-score game. It's a nice balanced run. Speculator lands. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It had just gone forward. Went forward out of hand, lads. To scrum. But I like forward. the ambition. Okay, forward to scrum white. Well, I think he'd almost overassessed his ability to get round the edge, and then heading very quickly towards the touchline. Panic stations launched it back in. I tell you, if that sticks, that is being shown time and time again on the highlights reel. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Grouch. Bebo, MySpace, they're Five. all getting fired up. Set. Couple of references might be missed by most of the, the audience out there. Ah, just a smidge, but you can remember them. Here comes Flandevery again, this nice play to get it out to the edge. And Tom Williams, decent gas into Not the 22. The rock now, leave it, rock. It's slower than they might have liked, though. Owen Griffiths, we're in number nine. Dylan Rowe. Good feet, row, and good vision for the offload. That's gone forward, lads, gone forward. They scrum, black ball. Unfortunate there, that one, just going forward. But they're doing a good job, Flandover, of keeping the ball alive. And it looks like they've been scragged, but they're keeping their hands free and just keeping it moving. They're also setting with a decent bit of depth in their attack, and so common across this week, week we've seen so far. Attacks just get a bit flat. 
Where have you been today then? I saw you were lining up for an interview just then. They're looking to get their pound of flesh from you. But what have you seen so far today as Tunbridge look to mount something from their own 22? I've been everywhere, mate. As yeah, of course you have. Getting the steps in. I just, yeah, it's been great this week already, just getting around watching all the age groups. Um, and as is customary here, unbelievable talent across mm. the board. No more so than what we're seeing today. Oh, out of the cat flap. And now Flandovery's turn to defend. Still a bit of time left in this one, two and a half minutes. Tunbridge running out of time to get the two converted. Scores they need, but this will be one of them. The dummy and the lightning strike. Right in the nick of time. Right, he needs to get this from under the sticks. They're not a foregone conclusion. If you panic, and that is exactly what we've seen, it remains a two-score game. Crossbar and down. Ugh, oh, tough. Wow, they curated it nicely, just probing, stepping, just finding a bit of a weak shoulder. And it was off this offload, and they made the break, but that is a killer on the conversion. He was aware of the circumstances and he was going quickly Hold your line, lads. still need two scores then Tunbridge but now it's to take a lead advantage. and not a tie advantage over. penalty advantage over touch the ball touch the man in the air oh lovely dummy weaving mazy run referee happy enough to play on ball went forward but not off a hand Still got it, Dylan Rowe, Joe Denman, the captain, Denman backs himself and that is why Dundavry College's captain seals it for the Welshman. And that looks like that is going to seal the deal for Clandavry. Too far to come back now for Tunbridge, especially with the extras added. And that's how you convert from under the poles. It's tough, isn't it, from behind oh, the sticks? Not much space, especially when you're rushing. Played off the floor there after quite some time, but referee lets it go. Tough one-on-one -on -one tackle, that, isn't it, when you've got to cover the man and the one outside him. Yeah, they had numbers. It was just a little over chase, well spotted by the skipper. Here we go, missed tackle. Is there something for Tunbridge here? Final few seconds then, Clondovery College heading for victory, four tries, oh, good tackle. Stopping the big man who fancied the collision, but then a little slip into the outside channel. Puts a glaze on the victory donut for Clondovery College. Oh, look at that, we've got Amy. Wilson Hardy on reporting duty coming up. As soon as we hear the full-time whistle, stand by for some live telly. <laughs> full-time score, 33-12. Flandovery College off to victory. We will not keep the suspension bridge going any longer because Amy Wilson Hardy is with the boys from Clifton College. What a seamless link. Thanks, Dave. I am here, yes, with two of the under-18s Clifton College boys who are... Austin Wright, Jacob Ryder. And you have played two games so far today. How have they gone? How is this Roslyn experience so far for you? Yeah, not too bad. We lost against Gordons, but um, just finished playing against Stowe and got a win over them. And then we've got um, John Fisher next and then Macclesfield after that on here. Are you feeling confident? Yeah, we're improving as we're going on, so we're going to see what happens in the next game. Yeah. Have either of you scored any tries yet? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I've got, I've got two uh, in the game against Stowe, and then, yeah, that's all so far for me. But, yeah, none from me. None. Not everyone can score tries. The reason I ask is because I haven't seen many try celebrations yet. You are playing back on the RE1 pitch later on. Can I expect some try celebrations? I'm sure we could try and get something going, yeah. And are you going to be scoring a try and celebrating? Oh, well, if, if I score, I'll have a good celebration coming up. So, Thank you so much. All the best for the rest of the tournament. Actually, lastly, who, obviously, apart from yourselves, what is the biggest competition? Um, in our pool, it was definitely Gordon's, and that's probably why we lost them. But, yeah, good side, definitely. Yeah, overall, we got good sides there. So, Millfield, probably big competition, Harrow. But in our pool, yeah, definitely Gordon's. Yeah. 
Nice. Well, we're wishing all the best to the Clifton boys and we'll head back up to the comms box for the second half. Away we go, Woodhouse Grove in the green. Also, Henley College in the green. Everyone's in green. But Woodhouse Grove are going to get off to the sharper start. How about that? Tom Rowe, Yorkshire Academy under 18s. Shows that he is the man with the gas. Woodhouse Grove School here on pitch RE1. They defeated Tunbridge, who we just saw go down again, 33-17. This in Group B, we've just seen the other teams. Henley College, well, they fell to Tunbridge and they fell to Dulwich. So they're looking for their first victory. Relatively local to here. West Londoners in the Ealing Trail Finders colours. The restart by Callum Highland Dugbo. That's knocked on, and it's in the hands of Ellis Knoll. Henley College then, first attack after going down, tackle made the hands off, they, by Alfie second, Longstaff. Thank you. Joss O'Keefe wearing 22. And here go Henley, up to halfway. Bim Bannister in at nine, in at ten. George Harris, the vice captain, Ealing Academy, top man, top mullet. Nearly bursting through there, Jack O'Kelly. Wins Academy. Ireland qualified. Got the IQ guys here all week, actually. So now Henley. Good bit of time on the ball. Joss O'Keefe out there to Seb James, the skipper. Part of the Ealing Academy. Finn Bannister. Bannister flirting with the touchline, needs to be careful, needs to stay in. And instead absorbs a high tackle and wins a penalty. That's a nice ball. Outside, two in, out of the back door. Overlap here for Ealing, but they're not going to need it because going through the gap is the captain, Seb James. Chance to equalise from the conversion. Henley, five, Woodhouse Grove, seven. Good conversion. Seven each. Well, firstly, did well to keep that ball in on the left edge, but then there was a high tackle anyway. Just moving it quickly, keeping the tempo high. And Henley College contesting for the restart, winning the ball from the restart. And Finn Bannister back into the Woodhouse Grove 22. Up the short side they go, we're in 13, there is Ben Stokes. Another penalty advantage coming, Woodhouse Grove, discipline inside their 22, costing them right now. Seb James, try scorer. Ellis Knoll, keeping that right hand free, wants to offload, finds a way to do it. Now George Harris slows things down, Seb James. Seb James, oh, good tackle, what a shot by Tom Rowe, forces the knock on. Correct referee, what a good shot, what a tackle. Important defence there from Woodhouse Grove. 
your heart still feels good. Four minutes gone. One try apiece. Woodhouse Grove getting in early. And Lee College responding. Oh, we've had such a good day here, and I can't believe we're already into the afternoon. Coach! Five! Oh, that is not the cleanest of ball, but they'll be happy just to have it here. Woodhouse Grove do not want to get trapped in their own dead ball area, and they're not going to because they are going to get run out of trouble brilliantly. But then put Early back into Hunter trouble. Hunter. Callum Hunter. Highland, Doug Bow doing Hunter. the good work initially, then Freddie Brown. And Woodhouse Grove with a chance to look dangerous again. Five minutes gone. Just needed the man on the edge to keep his width there. Unlucky by George Harris on the turnover. Got hands on it, but couldn't quite get the turnover required. Now Tom Rowe, nice ball by Rowe. Wants to get a second touch, can't get a second touch. And it's back with Henley College. The men in trail finders colours, and now Woodhouse Grove having to defend. There are gaps appearing, Jack O'Kelly trying to exploit them. Jack O'Kelly reaches and scores. It happened in slow motion at the end. But strength and power and composure gives Henley College the lead. For the first time today, they've come from 7-0 down to lead 12-7. Fabulous score, six minutes gone. <laughs> Henley College 14, Woodhouse Grove 7. Well, that early morning sunshine has been replaced by overcast cloud but still pretty high a little bit of breeze not too much ideal sevens conditions really especially for the time of year that one knocked backwards into the hands of woodhouse grove Now they can unload at the right-hand side. Just going to back yourself speed-wise. That's what Freddie Brown does. Freddie Brown goes 60, 70, maybe 80 metres. Fourteen, fourteen. <laughs> Half time comes round, and we are all square. Henley College fourteen, Woodhouse Grove fourteen. Back underway, who's going to get the decisive start to this second half? Could well be Henley College, Jack O'Kelly. 
Oh, this is dream stuff for the boys in white and green straight from the kickoff. Sometimes the doors just open for you and the least you can do is step through the Henley College into the lead. Oh, slide over chase on the kick commitment to try and get the ball back. Great kick. Really good kick. Important kick too. Get that from the take and then all of a sudden you turn. There's nobody else there. One check. And then only eyes for the try line. Oh, and they've managed to get this ball back to this superb from Henley College. This superb from Henley College. Two tries in a minute. Liam Burke, the Ealing Academy youngster, dots down in the corner. And that has turned this game on its head. Two tries since half time. And they have battled back into this game. Good ask Grove, can we either get a move on or stop? Okay. Toughest conversion yet. Strike not quite there. At 26 14. This is now a mountain to climb for Woodhouse Grove. Right, Woodhouse Grove need a score, need a score sharpish as well. And they might just get one. Great Jets here from Freddie Brown. And Freddie Brown gets the meat pie. Well, well, maybe this one not done just yet. Need this conversion really. Just make them a little bit more relaxed. Oh, he's missed it. Not only has he missed it, he's kicked it over the perform better tent, so our ball boy is called into action. Callum Highland, Doug Bow. That is a great restart. Oh, no one wanted to take it, so it's ended up with Woodhouse Grove. Now just a converted try behind. Lovely pass off the left hand. And Highland Dugbo, good feet to get himself out of trouble. Then the offload over the top, thought that might have come back off a white hand. Ref says no, but the rip is good. The rip is very good by Liam Burke. And Henley College have been excellent at keeping hold of the ball. And taking advantage of their opportunities. Top on the floor by Green. Go to White, scrum down. Green ball. Scrum. At the short side go Woodhouse Grove. Offload, quite a lot of cluttered and clustered bodies. Now they opt for the green stuff. Nice carry and nice ball to free the speed and great cover tackle. Ball goes backwards though. And that is a fabulous pass. And now they've kicked it into space. Where's this gonna sit up? Great identification. And great execution, what a score for Woodhouse Grove School. Henley College doing all the right things, defending high, making Woodhouse Grove make decisions. But that is a beautiful kick, a beautiful score. And now this conversion to level the game. A lot of pressure on this. 
Seen a couple missed, but that one will not be added to them. Woodhouse Grove, 26. Henley College, 26. Woodhouse Grove have slowly earned the right to be level. Sometimes you just get a bit of luck. That ball could have gone forwards. That kick could have gone anywhere. This kick, sensational. No sweeper at home. Top class. What happens from this restart could shape what happens in the rest of the game. Henley College, oh, good fend, once then twice, the same right hand. And still carrying, great leg drive. Mega strength from Jack O'Kelly. No one rolling away. Oh, penalty advantage, quick thinking. Woodhouse Grove, a player down as well. There's the seed, out wide, and the offload is brilliant! Henley College! Back ahead, Ellis No. Is that enough to win it? Seven point lead. Henley College 33, Woodhouse Grove 26. Right then, time for the restart. Woodhouse Grove need to get their hands on the ball, otherwise this one is done and dusted. Uh. Full time. Great win, deserved win, a game that toed and froed. But eventually, it's Henley College who come out on top. 33-26, absolute thriller here on RE1. Barnard Castle versus Whitgift. Whitgift in the blue, Barnard Castle in the brown, blue and white diamonds. And Whitgift, oh my goodness, straight on the afterburners. This is an astonishing start. That is the smell of burning rubber as the wheels go screaming into the trilon. Oh my goodness, Whitgift off to the perfect start. Get the ball, score the try. Can you make it look any easier? Remarkable. <laughs> and the conversion, good. The two teams 
always in and around it. Whitgift beat Warwick first up, 27-24. Barnard Castle, well, they're two games in. They squeezed past Camford, 21-19, and then Epsom College got a comprehensive win against them, so need to get the victory to keep the dream alive. And then Whitgift. Oh, they're on the go again. It's the same man. Oh, the offload. Sticks and then unsticks. Approach! Point! Set! Pressure coming on at scrum time, but Barnard Castle can come away with it. Lovely switch inside, back against the grain defensively. On a loose pass. Hacked towards the touchline. Oh, it's stuck! What a score! Fortune favours the brave. And a little stroke of luck there. A toe poke, a deflection, a gather. And five brilliant points. Barnard Castle, perhaps their own worst enemies there. Whitgift taking full advantage. Taking seven points full advantage. Excellent conversion. What a strike and what a try. So the Whitgift number 10 was... Staying out of the way here because he knew he was sorry, the Bonner Castle number 10, he knew he was offside. But then yes. Put a little toe on it. Get the deflection. Over the speed bump and over the try line. Now Barnard Castle get the luck of the bounce. They need some points on the board. Three and a half minutes gone. Well, three minutes gone on our clock. Opting. For the boot, looks a good decision. Oh, it doesn't stick. A sticky palm away from seven points. But instead, it's Whitgift, Barnard Castle. Oh, quite a generous knock on advantage from our man on the whistle. Good contest at the scrum. Comes back Whitkift's way. Leading 14 0. Looking to charge straight through the middle. Up to halfway. A little hot step and a dart through on the soft shoulder. Barnard Castle sniffing around the turnover. Not getting any luck though, and Whitgift. Back on the ball, just looking for that little pass in behind. Instead, looking for the pass around the outside. Great offload, great support line, and a great try. Too strong, too fast. And a big hill for Barnard Castle to climb. Well, in the end of the first half, let alone the second. First unsuccessful conversion. But we'll forgive him that because the previous one was an absolute doozy. So Whitgift, after scoring that excellent try, get us back underway. Referee says backwards. Barnard Castle on the ball. That tackle. A good one, but can't really stifle this attack. Straight over the ball. Oh, big clear out. But not before the jackal. 
great strength at the breakdown. And Whitgift on the move, on the go. And looking pretty lively here, making life hard for Barnard Castle. Finding the defence stretched again. Just fantastic quality of delivery, especially on those long passes. Look at those revolutions. And now attacking the edge defender, beating the man on the edge and the man inside him. And just strolling in and it's getting a bit ugly out there. But not if you're a weak Giftian. 24-0. So we're coming up to half past one, which means we're coming up to lunchtime. We're also coming up to half time here. Big decisions to be made. Another fabulous strike on the conversion. So what are we saying today? Is it burrito? Is it hog roast Yorkshire pudding? A couple have just been brought past here and they look absolutely unbelievable. Still not too late for you guys to come down, enjoy some rugby with us, enjoy some lunch with us and maybe a couple of scoops afterwards as well if you're lucky. Oh, what gift that needs to go and oh. Just about to go 10, ten referee ten. giving Barnard Castle the option of the free kick on halfway though and that's a nice pass to create some space on the outside but two blue jerseys come up and make the tackle. I think they've got the turnover, referee that disagrees. Nice offload, nice opportunity for Barnard Castle to get something just before half-time. That pass a little bit behind the man. Now they're back outside the 22, but it is still Barnard Please Castle ball. Me. Whitgift need to defend. We're eight minutes into this seven-minute half. Next stoppage will end the half. Knock-on advantage. Knock-on advantage. Won't last long. And that is half time. Whitgift 26, Barnard Castle nil. Gift winning the ball back immediately in the second half. They have been very, very good here on RE1, haven't they? Oh, and that pass was delayed when perhaps that wasn't the best option. However, they still continue to strike forward. 
Better defensive pressure, though, from Barnard Castle. Good offload. Backwards. It's a bit butterfingered, but sometimes that can create opportunities. Barnard Castle rushing up out of the line. Not cost them yet. All it's done is cost Whitgift a few metres, but they can more than make up for it with fabulous offloads and searing pace. That is very impressive. Take the contact, free the hands, make the tries. And Whitgift disappearing out of sight. Giving themselves the best chance, aren't they? Thirty-three nil now. Over as a contest. That is a good kick to turn Whit gives a really good kick, in fact, playing for territory. Now they can challenge at the line out and try and make something happen. Well, one thing we've not had from Whitgift yet is a try from inside their own 22 here on pitch are when they have managed to score five from elsewhere they're in a spot of bother here though well presented and then turned over oh, but referee says Illegally so. So Whitgift on the charge again. Good turnover. Barnard Castle ball. Delayed pass. Oh, ho, ho, ho. brilliant tackle. Not just in terms of the collision, but in terms of slowing the ball down. But Barnard Castle playing with the advantage, looking for the first try. Not going to ground that. Little dot, little dot, and a try for Barnard Castle. It's gone backwards and so is that, says the referee, but then does spot a little late knock on. Gift then. That is such a good ball. Such a good ball. Free the speed. Let him take the handbrake off and watch him reward you with five points. Oh, well timed pass and a well timed run. Is there anything more joyous than that expression of speed in rugby sevens? Barnard Castle, it's been a tough one for them. They look tired now. Still a couple of minutes to go. Slightly off balance.
Just seen Katie Trevath in there, left for lightning, loose head prop and coach, head coach of the Women's National League team, oh, a handful of jersey, escapes the clutches of Barnard Castle. It's another try. They're into the 40s. And if they can pinch one more. Such a good stop and go. And they have revved the engines here, Whitgift, haven't they? This is a real statement against the high-quality Barnard Castle School. Oh, and that take as well. They're not done yet. They want the 50. Oh, it's just been left behind. That'll be a knock-on. And that should be the end of the game. Oh, intercepted. Oh, no advantage. That is about the longest knock-on advantage we have seen in this tournament. But it does mean that Whitgift won't get to raise the bat for the half-century. However, they will have another victory. That is a happy bench, isn't it? Time to recharge and think about the next game, the next challenge. Roach! Five! Little nudge in behind. Chance to get one for the highlights reel here. Needed to sit up. Takes a second touch. This is a real good burst of pace, and he does gather it. Very nicely done indeed. And now a little snipe for Barnard Castle to try and get a second try. Go hard, go hard. Coming up to 15 minutes gone now, and it will be a penalty. Let him play, ref. Hands should do it here. In fact, they're not going to need them. They're going to drift in for their second try. Ten points for Barnard Castle. This kick will be the end of the game. And the end of the game, but has seen Whitgift get a resounding win here on RA1. They look the business. And they've beaten Barnard Castle 45-12. Oh, and another big one. It is just non-stop, isn't it? Heavyweight after heavyweight. St. Joe's in red and white against Millfield in the red, green and blue hoops. Oh, Millfield straight on the front foot. There's a Group K clash. Millfield. Lost their opening game to Uppingham, 10-19. And then lost... Ignore that entirely. I'm looking at the twos in the Vars who lost their first two games and then won the lot. Millfield won their first game today against Bishop Burton, 35-12, but then lost by six points to Hampton, 27-21. So they are one and one. St. Joe's.
this their second game, and they lost their first to SGS Stroud, 14-34. So they're already into must-win territory. A little chip over the top. Oh, and is it going to run dead? <laughs> it is well watched in the end. It's a ballsy watch as well. And a scrum all the way back. <laughs> Rikey, that was an engaged bind from the referee, wasn't it? Bind indeed. Well, we can definitely hear you. Bind! Set! She's managing to make bind a three syllable word. Well, that is collapsed by Josh Greg Petit. So now Millfield can get on the march. That's Owen Erasmus wearing number 10 over there. Good strength from the man on the edge in the scrum cap, St. Joe's. Looking for the turnover and getting it, Eddie Patterson. Low centre of gravity. They're going to kick for touch here. Jimmy Thompson. Left pegger takes them into the 22. Decent kick. A good return. And they very cleverly kicked that towards the pick and mix. That's probably where we'll find Burnsy, to be honest. Favourite haunt of his. I'm more of an ice cream van man myself. So, St. Joe's with the line out. Josh Grigg Petit, the obvious target. Long and lean and up. Oh, we're going for a mall. You love to see it in the sevens. This is sensational work. Come on, let's have a all try. But instead, they've darted for the line. They're just short here. And St. Joe's. Now the Dutchman in the scrum cap. Throws a dummy, has a dart. One couldn't quite get there, but St. Joe's, as we approach four minutes, with a brilliant opportunity to get the score. Millfield struggling to make tackles, Millfield falling off tackles. And James Lloyd Davis getting the first try for St. Joe's. Firmly in agreement with our referee that a fast game is a good game. Jimmy Thompson misses the conversion. What a journey he's on. He's a Saints under 18, but he's off on a six-month exchange to go play Shoot Shield in Australia. Good luck, young man. Make the most of that time down under. Huge fan of that. As we take another look at this try, James Lloyd Banks checks back. He's had a lot of work to do. Gets rid of one defender and another. And in the end, he is too strong for the Millfield boys. St. Joe's five, Millfield nil. Right then, St. Joe's back on the ball. Good opportunity. Liam van Hoving, another Dutch 18 international. Seen plenty of young Dutch talent in the British game. There are a couple just been called up into the first team Rugby Europe Championship who are playing at Cardiff Met. Sending some of their top talent over here to learn from teams in England, teams in Wales. Head honcho. Over there now, Lynn Jones, legendary Welsh player and coach. Rats. Five. Six. 
Millfield need a score. Starved of opportunity, still just over a minute to this first half to go though, and now they can cut loose. That is good gas. That is really good gas. That is exceptional gas, but the chase back by Lloyd Davis, just as good. God, there are some quick boys. But a great chance now for Millfield and Alex Deering. Alex Deering! Strong run, good offload, and Will Stubbings so close, as close as Millfield have been, but he's held up over the line. Gutsy defence from St. Joe's. It'll be put in by St. Joe's because it was taken over the line by Millfield. As the referee rightly mentioned there, no goal line. Clock hits seven. Remember, there's been one penalty at scrum time. It went Millfield's way. The referee has seen enough. We haven't. Great news. There's another half to come. This is a real war of attrition, and it's Millfield nil, St. Joe's five. Millfield chasing the game, that is coming down with snow feathers and bird droppings on it. I can't believe the height of that restart. And neither can any of the players. And the referee not taking any of these young men's nonsense and it is a joy to hear. A firm reminder of who is large and in charge of this one. Gonna have another reset scrum. Oh, and a chat. Here we go. Someone's in trouble. St. Joe's ball. Referee restarts the clock. Millfield go early. Free kick, St. Joe's. And the Suns back out. And a little dart by Frank Christopher. I do apologise, that's uh, Van Engel and two number sixes out there for St. Joe's. It's the Dutchman in the scrum half. Oh, no, <laughs> good tackle. But Eddie Patterson no, as well to deal with it. 
Well, Millfield in at the side. They were warned, and they're their own worst enemies here. Everyone stacked to the left for St. Joe's, but bursting the tackle and getting the offload away and into the Millfield half. Oh, here we go. That's going to be a penalty. That's going to be a yellow card as well. Oh. That is silly, to say the least. Pick him up, put him down, and get sent to the bin. Oh, that's a brilliant fend. Signs of strength, signs of life for these Millfield boys. But then St. Joe's come back. There's so much space here, though. Need to get the ball there. Zach Waitman Doda. Inside ball. Oh, he loses his balance, does Will Stubbings. But it's still with Millfield. But they're crossing in midfield. St. Joe's can't make the tackle. And it is just not happening for Millfield here. Remember this. A must-win game for St. Joe's if they're going to stand any chance. They lost to SGS in their first game. And Millfield, they are also 1-1, lost one. Comfortably beat Bishop Burton, then went down 27-21 to Hampton. Hampton currently playing Bishop Burton over on RE2. If they can go two from two, especially if Millfield lose another one, they will be feeling pretty good about life in Group K. Well, we've not seen many low-scoring games. But they add to the tension, because one moment of magic can make all the difference. Is it coming here for Millfield? It just might be. Evan Morris dots it down. Oh, gets under the post as well. The confidence of a young flyer. And with St. Joe's down to six, they could find themselves behind for the first time in the tie. Clock ticking towards 11 minutes. It is 5-5. It is 7-5, and Millfield hit the front. How do Joes respond to this? Find the way. Really yeah. good finish. Ready? Confident young man. Yeah. Dot that down so close to the sticks too. Sarvan Engelen keeps his feet well. Three Millfield tackles there, and Jack Hussey brought down. Real different edge to Millfield now. They've turned that over, offload over the top. On. Bit of knee, bit of hand, bit of leg. knock on. St. Joe's back up to seven. Well, they should be. Chill your beans. Five. Set. Don't hear that very often. The scrum's been a bit of a mess, to be honest. Now St. Joe's in the 22, need to get out of the 22, need to get on the scoreboard, that was close, and it could be terminal. <laughs> Trying for the magnificent. But any mistake, punished. And that is a punishment too, the lead extended for Millfield in the most fortuitous of circumstances. And the extras added to two score game. 
Oh, and this is so close to being brilliant. But cough it up there, straight into the hands. And Millfield come in, Zach Waitman do that. Probably has done enough to win it. And Millfield pulls one out of the fire here because they were behind for a long time and it just wasn't happening for them in the first half at all. And now St. Joe's need two scores in about 20 seconds. Up the short side they go, that's nice, and out of the back door, keeping that hand free too. Bit more energy, bit more urgency about St. Joe's, but now our clock is over 14 minutes. Not linked in with the referee's watch, but you have to think there is not enough time left to get the two scores required to beat this Millfield team. They've won the penalty. Now they have got some numbers, but instead, big man straightens up, Josh Greg Petit. Millfield on the ball, trying to wrestle that ball, trying to get that offload, but... Referee says no. Oh, what a dummy. But it's turned over, and maybe Millfield can add a certain gloss to this. The scoreline in the end will be unfair, because Millfield are going to win by three scores. That is fine. Off the kick. I think this went on behind the back. Full time. It's victory for Millfield. They've come from behind to keep their competition hopes alive. They've defeated St. Joe's 
and players that are, this is another shout out for team sheets. We do have one for Loughborough, but it doesn't have a number six on it. So I do apologize to the try scorer, the try scorer's family, friends, loved ones, or just fans. Unfortunately, we're unable to call that one in with the true verve that it deserves. But what a score. Brilliant finish. And Loughborough off to the races. Interesting contest here for Oaklands, who've gone well so far in this competition. Loughborough still questing for that maiden victory of 2024 and almost the big pick and dump from Phoenix Robinson, who herself has been training with Loughborough Lightning. Tackle! Tackle made, but still no progress against the halfway line. Ah, oh, lovely smuggle out the back door and the touchline came into play. Messy presentation means Oakland's may just resource it. And we'll have a scrum. Sort of ambitions wise for a lot of these young players. All out there for them, isn't it? Particularly going back to Premiership Women's Rugby and Loughborough striking up that deal with Northampton Saints. So their home Bye. games now played at Franklin's Gardens and Saracens have been playing Bye. at the Stonex for years. The TV deal too. And then internationally, WXVs and World Cups and Six Nations. I know that you've been involved with the, the WXV from the broadcast side, Burnsy, as the Oakland's girls looking to attack sharply for the first time. Now there could be a chance. One more pass could do it. There is a gas merchant on the outside. And Oakland's College are going to draw level. Lovely handling, great timing on all the passes. And as you said, a bit of gas at the end of the chain to get the job done for Oakland's. This sort of Sarri's lightning showdown in Loughborough and Oakham form thus far delivering. Lovely strike on the conversion as well from out there. That's 7 5. You can tell these young girls are showbiz though, can't you? None of them go and fetch their own balls. That's somebody else's job. All socks around the ankles as well. I like it. I know you're not a fan. I know you're a big. You're a big pull them up to your shins guy. Anything to make my calves look a little bit wider. <laughs> Even a half centimeter of fabric. Wow. Oh, a spiral restart. A spiral restart bomb landing bang on the money. A meter beyond the 10 and Oakland's rewarded and then rewarding themselves at some slick offloading. Another sling inside. But Loughborough first to the bounce of the ball. Jess Milner's onto it. Not demonstrating her gas, but demonstrating her right for an opportunity. And Loughborough are beginning to weave their way through the Oaklands defence. Nice pop off the floor. And off goes Ayla Corns. That spiral restart. Best thing I've seen this week. Play on. Loughborough wriggle free. Oh, then they slalom inside before. They're cut in half. What a tackle. And Oakland's justifiably win the turnover as well. That all came from a wonderful low, hard hit. Gap opens up. The delay on the pass. The legs stretched. The hamstrings firing. The last gas leap. Not enough to deny Oakland's. They're in for a second. And they're not going to be in a hurry to put this down. The referee says enough's enough. And it's try number two eventually for Oakland's. As we're joined by Loughborough University women's head coach Katie Trevathan, who will know this Loughborough College side pretty well too. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. Really exciting group of girls for us, actually. A lot of them are, are first year students. Um, few, one or two seniors in there. Phoenix Robinson just kicked the ball there. Notable um, addition. But yeah, really young, exciting squad out. Phoenix Robinson might be one of the best names in rugby. Rugby sevens, rugby fifteens. Born for stardom. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Very strong name. Very strong rugby <laughs> player. Um, she's training a little bit um, with Lightning in the Prem Cup. Actually, um, really exciting talent. Well, here are Lightning then. They're 14 points to five down now. After taking that early 5-0 lead, very quickly, uh, Katie, who's wearing number six here? Number six, I think, is Betsy Mead. Well, Betsy Mead scored a fantastic opening try for yes, it the Loughborough girls. Mead. But here come Oakland's College again, looking strong, offloading inside the Loughborough 22, getting it out to the edge again, but having a check back inside. Good defence out wide, but leaves a hole down the middle. It's three unanswered tries now for Oakland's College as they take charge at the end of this first half. And that takes us through to half-time. Oakland's College 21, Loughborough College 5. Katie, while we got you here, let, let's enjoy ourselves at half-time. Tell us a little bit more about women's rugby at Loughborough University and obviously this is a bit of a pathway you go from the college to the uni to lightning to England that's, that's quite a nice little and the Lions now yeah, as well that's yeah that's quite a nice little lily pad isn't it into professionalism yeah absolutely like we've got we got a really great link with the college um, loads of them stay on to us um, and come into the university it's a really really exciting pathway that's just growing and growing and could you tell people a little bit more about the University Women's Game? Those who may not have tuned in to the Women's National League before on the live stream that they have every Wednesday. Yeah, so the Women's National League is absolutely amazing. Um, going to become Bucks Super Rugby Women's next year as well. Um, there's seven teams in the Women's National League. Um, and, you know, that's sort of second tier of women's rugby after the Premiership. And it's where all that up and coming talent is is playing in some really quite tightly contested games on a Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, look at under 20s teams that are being or squads that I don't, have they been announced? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm like leaking uh, yeah. information prematurely here, but I'm going to say that there are going to be loads of women's national league players in both England, Wales, Scotland. It's wall to wall, really. It is genuinely where you go if you then want to play Premier 15s. Yeah, like absolutely it is. And, you know, you've got people that are even springboarding straight from Women's National League um, straight into like England and international senior teams as well. Um, Kelsey Challenge has been a massive one as well for sort of the Welsh, um, Welsh Scottish contingent, particularly um, through the Women's National League and then um, into into that platform too. And And you don't necessarily have to be a rugby player as well, because you guys are very, very good at capturing right, athletes right. from other sports, introducing them to rugby and then turning them into, well, potential world beaters. I'm thinking like Amelia Tuck, she was, she was a hurdler, wasn't she? But we're going to have to come back to that because Oakland's are breaking free. They're hurdling through tackles. They're galloping to the line. There's hot pursuit, but Oakland just about reached the final destination. Yeah, absolutely. Really impressed with Phoenix Robinson there, that that chase back. Um, she's a big leader for them, for the Loughborough girls today. And actually her her showing that hopefully really helps helps Loughborough get back into it the second half. And just coming back to those transition athletes, uh, am I right in saying that? You, you know, that, that there are girls who are introduced to rugby for the first time and their acceleration can be rapid. Yeah, like absolutely. Like Leah Green um, is an example. Actually, um, was Millfield um, School and played football for them, and just started playing rugby at the end of her time there. Um, and is now very much sort of in that England under 20s wider squad with sort of the the tighter squad to be announced in the next few days, I think. Um, and she's an absolute talent for us, um, particularly at 10. Like you'll see her play Prem Cup. She starts for us in Women's National League. She's somebody to be really excited about. And in terms of uh, the Women's National League this season, big win for you uh, yesterday. God, you're doing some miles on the motorway. Um, but you've got a semi-final to look forward to now, haven't you? 
Yeah, third of April um, against Exeter away. Um, Ooh, big tackle. Yeah, yeah, really tough place to go. Um, so you know, we'll have a big ten days of training, and then the girls will be really excited to get at it. And on a personal level, I remember reading Move last year there was a lot of fanfare around you stepping back from rugby. Your Loughborough Lightning's most capped player anchored the prop for uh, anchored the scrum from Loosehead for years. We'll come back to that because Loughborough are in again. And who is that in the number six jersey? That is Betsy Mead. Betsy um, that Mead. That's exactly what she's capable of. She's an evasive runner. She's strong. She's powerful. Um, yeah, really, really great score for her there. And the conversion to boot. Uh, yes, so you're doing a terrible job of retiring. Yeah, like really quite awful. I don't think I could have done it worse. Um, <laughs> I actually didn't even manage to miss a preseason friendly. Um, <laughs> Still enjoying it though? Yeah, like really enjoying it, absolutely. Um, like wasn't expecting to play this season, um, but actually, you know, enjoying every moment of it and um, I'm glad I am. Oh, of course, and having a pretty exciting season too. I mean, oh, here we go. Oakland's away again. They are absolutely savage in the contact zone. Loughborough coming across, but they can't stop the try scorer. 33 points to 12, 10, uh, yes, 12, 10 minutes gone. But in terms of that, though, I mean, the, the home games at Franklin's Gardens, we were talking about them earlier, they look like such good occasions and certainly turning a corner in terms of performance, a little change of coaching, a lot of exciting talent from you, from both a playing and a coaching perspective, being involved must be, must be absolutely brilliant. I'm not surprised you changed your mind. Yeah, like Franklin's Gun's an amazing place to play and Saints do such a good job um, of it for us as well. Um, you know, like the crowd they get for us, the match day experiences they do for, um, for community players as well. They make it really special for us every time we're there. The pathway is crystal clear, but unfortunately for Loughborough, it is the Saracens affiliated Oaklands who are going great guns here on pitch RE1. It's the girls under 18 competition. Deep with the kickoff. So what about um, in terms of recruitment then? Obviously you mentioned uh, players coming through from the college. I know that you've got a, a tent over there and in the interests of fairness, we have to give everyone else a shout out to Hartbury here and Cardiff Meta here. And we've seen Exeter and Durham knocking about two. Um, yeah, it must, be, it must be quite the bun fight for talent now with so many strong programs around the country. Yeah, like absolutely. And, you know, the, the talent coming through Bro. is just getting stronger and stronger as well. Like Centre of Excellence is across the board are doing a great job um, of Six. developing that up and coming talent. And actually, there's so many options for girls now. And the Women's National League is so competitive. Um, yes, just watch the space and it's going to get grow and grow and grow. Well, I think in terms of the game, though, that's got to be great news. This is lovely play then by Oakland's soft hands, three on one. But instead, she's dummied and gone, but offloaded, and it will be another score. Great performance, this, from the women in black. But just going back to that, Casey, in, in terms of the wider game, in terms of the growth of the game, you mentioned seven women's National League teams. If they're all competitive, if maybe there's the opportunity in the future to make that eight teams or, or, or ten teams, that's got to be good for the game, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think I think that's on the cards. Like I think it's things that Bucks are really working working towards. And you know, we need to make sure that the player base is there, but also there needs to be rugby for the player base to yes, grow. Yes, of course. Um, so those things I think are, are happening happening in tandem at the moment. You do a lot of miles though, don't you? So left, but you're based bang in the middle of England, but you go to Cardiff, you go to Exeter, you go to Edinburgh. <laughs> it's Back like playing to Cardiff in the U again. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like playing in the URC. Yeah, um, don't don't quite get as many um, travel miles as the as the men's Super Rugby side yet, but we're definitely definitely clocking clocking up a decent number. Speaking of clocking up a decent number, Oakland's are pulling away. They've still got a minute to go. They are up over 40, and this is a real statement victory by Oakland's College. The warmest of welcomes wherever you're watching around the world. So good to have you company for this and every game on pitch RE1. Great to have the company of Katie Trevathan as well, the retired, unretired Loughborough Lightning legend. 
with his coach in a great group at the university as well. Confident, Exeter, are they getting it? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, they're they're going to come out absolutely firing. I think we're going to do the same. I think it's going to be an amazing game of rugby. Oh, I hope um, so. And I want us to finish on the right side of it, of but course. we shall see. And we've got a shout out, Poppy Leach, who's doing a great job down there. Exeter Chiefs. I say second row, she can play anywhere. She's a brilliant player, isn't she? Oh, absolutely. And she is, and she's a nightmare to play against. She's <laughs> She's got an edge about her, definitely. Huge respect among the coaching and playing fraternity. What did I say? Is, yeah, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for, Burnsy? Sisterhood, yes, of course. Right then, Loughborough looking to finish with a flourish. This will be the last play. Yeah, that's just they've really struggled to just hold on to the hold on to the ball for long enough to to build anything this second half. Backwards. They're putting under pressure here though. Well, defensive pressure required because Oakland's are in the 22. That is a very Solid shot, but it's gone forward. Off a black hand, which takes us to the end of this one. Loughborough College 12, Oakland's College 43. All right, from the girls to the boys and to Colle Clandidero. So advised by my Welsh colleague, Dave Rogers, up against Trinity School from Croydon. I'd like to say that we've got one of the Trinity boys with us. We've got, uh, we've got Lucas Friday, freshly announced in the England under 18s squad. Lucas, awesome to have you. Shame to not see you out there on the pitch. Uh, well, happy for the boys. Yeah. Uh, we've won two games already, so. We're good, we're ready to get underway now. Ready to get underway, but up here against Welsh opposition and a nice tackle coming in there. From Colle Clandidro. Looking to manipulate that pale blue and white defensive line of Trinity. He pours some numbers in there. Keen for a counter and they get swallowed up and they get their pockets picked. Trinity in for the opening score. That's, yeah, excellent from Ollie Wilco. Been uh, been good all day, so yeah, it's been good for him. What great, great start from us, great start. So what are the talents of that man who's just got across? We've seen him big frame, swallowed up the opposition man and stole it. Hardworking individual in the pack in 15s there, I say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's, he's played a bit eight before, but yeah, preferably a winger. I mean, he's uh, he's got a great fan, so he's been uh, showing that all day. Nice. And uh, I know that, um, you know, it's been up and down 15 season for you guys. So have you been targeting the sevens campaign? Okay particularly as yeah, a result yeah definitely i think just like trying to implement ourselves in this because obviously in 15s we didn't have a good start to the season so yeah we're just trying to imp in implement ourselves here as we're doing now well, the kickoff finds the touchline Go, boys. Go. 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 
advantage over. All right, Trinity breaching the 22 once again, snaking hips and a dummy to boot. Trinity in for a duo of tries in less than two minutes. Yeah, that's a uh, great work from Max Farrell. Just come back from injury, so he's uh, he's put on a show today. So. And Lucas, why are we not seeing you out there? I know that you've been injured for a, a lot of the season, but I know you're fighting fit now. Yeah, I mean, I, I got told I can't play, so it's obviously a shame I want to be out there, but no credit to the boys, we're doing well today. So be here back for day two as well, so. Bigger red rose fish to fry for Lucas. No, I'm, a, I'm only pulling your leg. I know that you'd love to be out there because yeah. these, these are cherished times in the school jersey. You only get to play with your mates for, for a finite period of time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd love to be out there. It's been the la last game for Trinity, but yeah, we're doing well. And instead, we've got the pleasure of your company up here on comms as Colec Clan Drillo look to manoeuvre themselves out of their half and again they get swallowed up by a big trinity shoulder wow this guy's like an octopus won't let anyone out of his grasp and eventually the well side have to go laterally but two tackles come in simultaneously and force the knock on trinity resource the ruck they put it through the hands they go long they go to ollie wilcox he's got all the size he's got all the pace and he's got a nose for the paints, a tumble across the line, try number three, Trinity, right on top here. Yeah, excellent, just that pace from Wilco every time, but all comes from that pass from Jack Vass, uh, under-17s player as well, showing himself. Under-17, so the next gen stepping up. Yeah, definitely. And what about you, Lucas? Uh, you know, you're in the England under-18 squad for 15s. Like, where does your love lie, 15s or 7s? Oh, this is a tough one big for me. Tough big one, question, yeah. big question. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I love a bit of both. So, uh, no, pro probably 15s at the moment. But, yeah, I love a bit of 7s. Get to travel the world a bit if you play if you play sevens at the well, not even at the top. You can be bang average like I was and you can get on a few <laughs> planes as well. Yeah. You agree, are you agreeing, yeah, with the travel or, yeah, the highest bang average? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> not me, not me. Well, an awkward fall, and it was one that kind of got fashioned by an awkward bounce. And hopefully, Aussie Edwards will be all right. And you hear right there from the ref, Mike, it's, it's a rugby incident. You know, it's players going for the ball, no malice in there. Player has been upended. But the good news is, is that Ozzy Edwards back on his feet and retreating into position. And the restart will be, will be a penalty. There's a bit of confusion here. The ref could put his arm up in the air or there we go. We're back underway. A lot of shapes, a lot of big boys trying to inject themselves into the line, but even more pace from Max Farrell, who goes herring round the corner. Try number four in five minutes. Wow, Trinity in the mood. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're showing ourselves today. Didn't have the greatest start this morning against Ipswich. But now, yeah, now we're showing ourselves, showing what we can do. What did you make of that Ipswich side? Because they look to be going well. Yeah, I mean, we know they're, they're one of the favourites here. So we knew it was going to be a challenge. But yeah, I think we just, we just let ourselves down a bit in the second half. That, that's why we lost. But yeah, look at us now. We're, we're doing well. For you as a player, you obviously want to come and win, uh, but is it exciting to see the players that you've heard of from other schools, you know, that you, you hear through the grapevine and you get to see them in action or, you know, you hear, you know, there's an amazing school and you get to, you know, get eyes on them for the first time. Is that is that sort of one of the thrills of the tournament? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I like to think that people look at us that way as well. But I think, yeah, like uh, looking at other schools that we play, just watching them, I think it's, it's inspirational as well for all of us yeah. to watch them. That's cool to hear. Well, Trinity, not short on inspiration at the moment because they're spending the entirety of this half in the opposition half. Onto the ball is Omar Leon. Omar Leon looking to go it alone. Pops off the floor, gives it to the big man on the edge, but Samuel. Can't read that name on the same yeah, sheet. Samson Goldschmidt, Samson. 
Thompson gets brought down. Trinity still surging in, but real good defence there from Colleague. <laughs> Plan did right. If you can't take it in front of the mark, it's too much of an advantage. They get a penalty. Yeah. So, final seconds, final play of this first stanza of this group match. And the Welsh boys finding the going tough, but they're still questing for a route out of their 22. They got a chance there on, they put some width on, and on to the boot. I like the look of that. The chase begins. The Trinity first to the bounce of the ball, nice shake of the hips, and Trinity might strike themselves. Chip over the top, beautifully weighted, and even better was the collect. Then the ball inside, then the burst of pace, almost free. Pop off the floor, lung bursting passage to end this first half. Who will end with the points? Bounce pass, brilliant pick up. Samson in on the tackle again. Well, pale blue and white, dead end. And then it forces the pass. One of the big rangy runners, Jared Cummins pirouettes away. But eventually, both sets of hands let them down. There's bodies strewn everywhere. Such is the commitment. And the half-time whistle blasts. And it's Trinity leading. Colleague Lan Trillo, 22 points to nil. Second half about to commence here on RE. One colleague, Plandrillo, finding the going tough against an inspired Trinity school, Croydon at the moment, trading 22 points to nil. We've got one of the Trinity boys, Lucas Friday, alongside us, unable to join his buddies out on the field, but enjoying what he's seeing as they steal another bit of possession. And Reese McCarthy carries it into contact. The, Hits continue to rain in, and that breakdown desire, wonderful to watch from the lads from Wales. Off they go. Jag back to the left, then straighten up and run down another alleyway. That's great strength on the ball. Great work from Oscar Sweeney there to, to get that breakdown. It's uh, one of his last games today, so yeah, he's putting on a show for us. Unless, unless, unless he's playing tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, I mean, we'll see. A lot of permutations to figure out. Even if you lose a game, it doesn't mean you're done and dusted. You could well be having another day off school, which is, uh, you know, that's a bit of inspiration for everybody, irrespective of the rugby trophy hoisting dreams. Trinity, is it out? Skip one, 15 meter channel, ankle breakers. Foot to the floor, well, Drops it down a gear, then bursts into life again. Beautiful finish from Max Farrell. Yeah, I mean, you just see the pace there. Uh, yeah, he's, he's one of our quick ones, so yeah, he's been doing well. Quite a lot of quick ones, Lucas, <laughs> I'd, I'd say. Yeah, we, we've got quite a few. I mean, Will Coe, to, to name one as well, Max Farrell, Omar Leon as well, uh, all of them are, are quick. So, Colic 
Landrillo fighting in the air, losing the aerial battle, and another try to the blue and white hoops, to the boys from Croydon. Sampson delivers the TRY. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's been good all day. Had a couple opportunities this morning, but yeah, there he goes, showing what he's about. Well, the points being racked up at the moment, and you know, it's a real tough group when you get here to the National School Sevens. I like to have Ipswich in here, City of Oxford College as well. There are literally no easy games. It's not even PR spiel that there is no easy game. And at the moment, Trinity looking to register their third, third victory, looking like they're going to register their third victory and put a bit of pressure on Ipswich, who they went down to by 14 points earlier this morning. Time back on. Again, a great kickoff from uh, from Reese Gormley there. 34 nil. On the touch, touch, please. <laughs> man in the five How much please. seven yeah, training have you guys been doing out of interest? Um, when did you sort of switch to this form of the game? Yeah, I mean, so we didn't make it too far in the in the national cup, so we've had we've had a bit more time to to arrange ourselves. And yeah, sh showing here, uh, getting a good win. Silver linings <laughs> to not going deep yeah. into the school's cup. It sets us up for this, so. Well, here we go. Wow, dismissed with the handoff and then the drive, all full of desire, held up on the line. <laughs> Epic defence from the Welshman. Scrum. It's sevens. Determined it's to shut Trinity out on that occasion. No 22 dropouts in uh, in seven, so no need for any arguments on social media about the uh, the merits of that as a rule, a law. I beg your pardon. Otherwise, I have some referees saying that laws not rules. Brilliant shove from the Welshman who's stolen it against the head. No one's at home. They pin back their ears. 50 to go. He's home and hosed. A try on RE1 right here. For Colic, Landrillo, and worthy of it too. The flyer down the left, the nonchalant conversion. They've got seven on the board here, the Welshman, and a try to take home across the bridge. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it was a great work from him. Saw the space early, saw that our nine went. So, uh, yeah, it was a great decision from him to, to take that blind side. The kind of stuff you'd be doing if you were in there at Scrum Half Lucas, I'm sure. I'd like to Back think so. Release. Just peeking down that uh, that short side, looking for unguarded territory. Oh, and the fringes looking a little bit under resourced. Reese McCarthy is going to show us his turn of pace now. Not slowing down, careering to the try line. Yeah. Trinity respond Another immediately. Quick well. Another, Another quick, quick one. one. We call him Engine, so. Engine revving all the way to the try line. Pops over the conversion. Under a minute and a half to go. Just a little bit of danger around the fringes. Sometimes that disconnect from the breakdown to the man nearest. Just a little bit too far, and it was just what McCarthy needed. Great finish from the young man. Here we go. Colleg Flandrillo. Across the 10. Good, meaningful carry. Battling through the tackles of the Croydon outfit. And now on the left edge. Jump and a step and meeting the arms of Leon. Real messy down there on the floor. Testament to the desire of Trinity to want to spoil it. But the Welshmen emerge with the call. Then they carry forward. No nonsense. Uses him as a speed bump. Play on backwards. And then the last pass a little bit loose. Not now. Yeah, just, just great pressure from us to, to force that knock on. But fair play to, to them as well. They're, uh, they're, they're keeping the ball well. Time slowly elapsing here. 
ticking its way to 14 minutes, likely the last player of the match. And it's going to be a handsome victory for Trinity, who are going to be in the control tent watching the electronic boards to see whether they might just sneak through to day two. And they're going to do it in some style if they do. Another five-pointer <laughs> taking off into the dead ball area and recording try number eight. Fine. An embrace for his teammate, a conversion to come, and a job well done for Trinity, Lucas. Yeah, I mean, excellent from us. We, uh, we put on a show for us today. And uh, yeah, hopefully we do the same in day two. Nice little day out tomorrow, so. Well, a lovely conversion to finish the job. And a fine game with a lot of talent on show. Colleg, Clangedro, Drillo, seven, Trinity School, Croydon, 48. Under 18's Cup action here with Clifton College kicking off into the arms of the King's School, Macclesfield, known as King's Mac. But King's at the moment looking like their Ford is about to be stormed by the boys from Clifton. Nice hands from the pale blue and white, and driving towards the line three metres short. Look at that for a counter ruck. Advantage being played to the boys from Bristol. And getting called back just as they were looking to make a bus. So instead, they ship the ball to the right. There are numbers, there's accurate passing, and there's the finish. Lifton College, who started off today with a loss to Gordon School. 26 points to five, but they've rallied with victories against Stowe and John Fisher. This is the final action of Group H. As Kings Mac have gone down to Gordon's themselves and Stowe just by a whisker. They've still got John Fisher to come. And again. They'll be hoping from a favour from Stowe School if they are to progress to the cup 
as the winners of this group. Clifton high into more leaden skies than they were earlier this morning. It was a blaze of sunshine to start the day here. Not just on RE1, just but across the entirety of this magnificent Rugby Sevens footprint. 27 teams. 27 pitches, I beg your pardon. As Chris Tatum switch brings in his winger. James Brady is brought to the floor. Another little burst from Kings Mack, who get dispossessed in the tackle, but James Lancaster, a.k.a. the Bomber. is first to the bounce, but again, knocked on. So, Clifton. What can they do from here? Slither of a blind side to work with. Numbers stacked out here to the left. Into the hands of Matt Dixon. Matt Dixon delays the ball and he's on the shoulder. He doesn't receive the offload. But fortunately, Oscar Green is on hand to complete the move. And Clifton have a second. No extras to add, so 10 points the lead. Clifton. Using the big man in the middle, feeding it to Ollie Harry's. His slingshot out. Eventually finding its way to Oscar Green. Patience from Kings Mac, deep in their 22, really being pressurised by the defence of Clifton, but they scamper free. Kobe Wilkinson, still Kobe Wilkinson. Wilkinson with a worldie here on RE1. The captain with deadly pace and a devastating finish. Gets Kings Mac right back into the contest. Conversion to boot as well. Three-point game. Kobe Wilkinson. The one-man wrecking ball. Absolute burners on him. Dylan Tyrrell kicks off an awkward ball that well, it isn't that well dealt with and Clifton are lucky to get away with the palmed off ball. Almost gets swallowed up in a tackle. Wilkinson's left exposed on his own. Trust his inside man who works really hard to gather him in. Fred Reardon there just about making the tackle and then Lancaster breaks free. This is Matthew Dixon. Previously, it was Freddie St. John in the centre. I've just been notified that Dixon wears a head guard and Dixon is making his mark and making me remember him for beyond this match. Lovely hands, the wraparound play, the search for the extremities of the field. But Kings Matt hop upon that. James Brady reading the offload ball. Uh, Wollstone home. Release blue, let it come. A big lad with hands of a fly half, so I'm informed. Well, he's on the floor doing the unglamorous work. Wilkinson finds his man, who again wraps himself around. Wilkinson, we know what he can do. That's why three Clifton oh, blue, defenders set upon him. In the side. 
outside entry from the boys from Bristol and Kings back in a hurry. Oh, they get brought back just as they're looking to scamper free. Freddie Griffiths of the South Sharks Academy looks left, finds friends. Here's Walston home. And penalised for crossing. Walton Home needs to get back into position because Clifton will punish you. Clinical from Finn Fielder. Just taking their eye off the ball at the critical moment in the dying embers of this first half. <laughs> Couple more added from the boot. Clifton lead Kings Mac 17 points to seven at the break. Clifton, who win that kickoff? Leave it, Brett, leave it. Three tries to the boys from Bristol. The conversion on that last one, meaning they lead by 10 points. Kings Mac, though, no, has shown us that they are capable of piercing this West Country rear guard. Oh, lovely feet. Love that exaggerated goosing. The rugby guy would Advantage, be proud. Seven offside. <laughs> seven offside. Never onside from the breakdown. Never onside from the breakdown. Wilkinson, try scorer. Might just back himself. Does back himself. Ride through one, drives through another, then gets That's wrapped there, up and put into reverse by a big shoulder. Reardon, Fred Reardon. Looks like a tricky player, doesn't he? Blue. Clifton there off go. their feet, there no one go. at half-back for Kings Mac, but there is now. Bounce pass, all left behind in the hurry to ship it left. Still Kings Mac have the ball. Chris Tatum, Chris Tatum caught, travelling backwards. <laughs> Nothing coming, time off. Well, there's been an injury to a Clifton player. He's receiving a bit of attention, so fingers crossed. He's all right. Well, he's up on his feet, and that's always a positive sign. Being helped from the field, unfortunately. I think Ollie Russell, that might be. And we'll come back. With a big, big chunk of this second half remaining, the penalty will be to Kings Mac. Lancaster, the halfback. Only an injury. 
time on. Penalty here for not rolling. King's back. Putting some sophisticated shapes. Reared and tried to free the hands and he's left frustrated. And Clifton gifted a bit of ball on transition. What a pick up. Slip dive catch to retrieve it. Clifton put boot to ball. They spin this King's Mac defence. Chasing back hard is James Hartley, who's all the way back on his five metre line. Oh, looks to spin under the tackle, but he's swallowed up by pale blue and wide, and more jerseys arrive, fighting the Clifton cause. Reardon goes the wrong way, looks to kick, charge down underneath his own crossbar. Clifton, they just need to get it wide. This should be a try, but he goes back inside to the traffic. Reardon, he's got it now. Near the side, cherishing the possession. There's Ollie Jones, Jones, the powerful hooker, carries forward a little more directly. Reardon chips it out. Wilkinson bounces off the left, drops the hammer, shifts through the gears. A known lead for the rear view mirror because he's got clear daylight in front and behind. Wilkinson bags himself a brace and battles Kings Mac back into the game once again. Wilkinson finished the job, but it was all about that switch, wasn't it? That left a bit of chaos reigning between the two Clifton defenders, taking each other out, leaving safe passage for Wilkinson. He didn't knock over the extras. I wonder how telling might that be when the game comes out in the wash. Well, there's snowflakes on this one, and the call from Clifton is leave it, but it gets played, then fly hat through. Well, the Clifton players played that, so it should be a King's Mac ball, but Clifton take the pop, then they go, short ball, oh, menacing carry. And the steal almost, almost perfect from King's Mac. Instead, it's a yellow card warning. Clifton, can they get the try to put this game to bed? Still a long way to go. Three minutes for the first time. They're really making a purposeful foray into the Kings. Mac, 22 since the last try. Hands, numbers, timing at the scramble from Kings. Mac, so good. Beautiful ball floated over the top. Just a bit of direction being pointed by the support runner. Lateral movement complemented by a hard straight line. Pierces the Kings Mac. Red wall. They get themselves a third. And again, they put a bit of daylight between them and Kings Mac. Well, this is the ball over the top. Then, look, he's looking for options. He's looking for a fence. He's begging for a line to be cut off him. And eventually, that line delivered by Finn Fielder. Making another mark on this tightly contested contest. It was try number four, I beg your pardon. I think I heard the referee say a minute and 20 left on the game. Now that is ample time to turn this tail around. Kings Mac need to score quickly though as they get consumed straight from the kickoff. Clifton press them up deeper into their 22. Hard line offered by the big lad. Another onto the ball. Oh, it's a gorgeous glide. If only he had an extra gear to shift to, Ollie Jones. Yes, 
Ings Mack looking to dance their way through, but they get pole latch. James Hartley wearing a meaty shoulder from the Bristol boys. Oh, eyes on the defence, eyes off the ball. Possession coughed up, and that's probably the match right now. Clifton with a clear two score lead. And possession in a portion of the field that is devilishly difficult to defend. Fine. Do you see enough blindside Set. if the scrum half doesn't follow him around? But he does. That's off the option. And now it goes to the right. Into Fielder. Fielder ends off the attention. Scoops it on to Austin Rowe. He pops it off the floor. Clips the face of the would-be Jackaler. Advantage over. Try scored. Game done and dusted for Clifton College. Kings Mac have battled throughout. They're in contention until the last minutes of this one. But Clifton show their class. And they close out the match and their group <laughs> with victory here. All eyes on the other matches to see what competition they'll be progressing through to tomorrow. But Clifton have got the job done against Kings Mac here. Full time. Clifton 31, Kings Mac 12. Right now down to the touchline to Angus Savage, who's with Pete Richards of Return to Play. Thank you very much, Burnsy. Yeah, just been enjoying a nice green cola outside the uh, return to play tent. Pete, nice to have you along. Um, how's life been in the return to play tent? Yeah, it's been always a good week, uh, Rosalind Park. Um, now we've got uh, probably about 120 uh, clients up and down the country, but it's a great chance just to connect with our clients, um, particularly those in the sort of north and the west of the country, uh, to catch up and find out what's going on. So, it's been a great week. The weather's definitely helped. Um, sunny day, people have got smiles on their faces. So, uh, great so far. We've just been reminiscing about your your playing days, stepping uh, some of the greats. Uh, Long time. Did you uh, did you play a bit of sevens in your time? I did. Um, I played across the road actually at Rosalind Park in about 1994. Um, didn't do too well with my school or Wandsworth College, but lucky enough to play for England uh, for about two years um, and loved it. Loved playing sevens. Um, wasn't the fastest, was a scrum half, uh, but loved the space and uh, yeah, really in admiration of all the age groups here. The, obviously the 18s that are playing at the moment, but from the girls to the 14s and uh, tomorrow I'm actually coaching uh, under 13s over on the end pitches. So uh, um, it, it's a great tournament and uh, great to see so many parents who probably play here as kids coming back and enjoying watching their kids play which makes me feel a little bit older I think. I'm sure it does it makes me feel old as well um, just quickly before we get started then just tell me where people can find out more about return to play and the important work you guys um, do yeah on the on the website which is not in the back but return to play.org.uk um, for concussion care and as you can see sp sports medicine services across um, across the board from physio to sports doctors it's definitely something with a sort of elite sport being played in schools that um, is, is much needed so uh, please get in touch if anyone has any questions. All right. Please do. Cheers, Pete. Thanks very much. Back up, Burnsy, where the action is back underway. It is not Burnsy. Dave Rogers here. Sam joining us as well. It is Benny's on the pitch. And they are taking on Exeter College, who are on the, uh, the front foot here in the hoops as this boys under 18s continues in the sunshine. Uh, you've been out and about, Sam. It has been a heck of a day. But tell us about these boys um, who you are involved with coaching now, who are having some defending to do on the 22 to kick this game off. Yeah, um, we've already played um, Brighton College, which is obviously you're playing against one of the best teams in the country. Oh, that's a nice try from Exeter there. The excellent finish by Exeter. They take the lead early on. Yeah, so we, we went down to Brighton and then we played Hartbury College. Again, you're playing against a superb rugby academy, but we just lost by two points, but played really, really well. So that's a little bit disappointing to give away that try there. Um, we're looking forward to the way we want to play. We want to throw the ball around. So this pitch is perfect on a beautiful sunny day. So hopefully we can respond, get the ball in hand and play some rugby. Well, Exeter taking the lead. It's a decent strike on the conversion as well. Just drifted to the near side. So Exeter have gone down to Hartbury and Brighton College and Kirkham Grammar School as well. God, what a group. Oh, my goodness me. 
yeah, we, when we when we saw the draw, we were like, thanks for that. Um, but as you know, there's not there's, there's no easy groups on it today. No. Um, superb fixture list of everywhere. As it should be at the elite level. Just a privilege to be able to play and represent your school and your team and your mates and all of those who have come before you at the Rosslyn Park National School 7. Here come St. Benedict's. Relatively local when you think about how far other people have to travel to be here, but still a, a bit of a trek from Ealing Way. Yeah, as the crow flies, not far, but getting here through London traffic takes some time in the morning. You want to try driving through from Walthamstow. Goodness gracious me. But what a tournament and what a day for it as well. I mean, you've been to, to many of these in various capacities over the years and we have had snow and mud and very many clean pairs of heels. There is one of them. So Freddie Rosen, you there. Um, superb player involved with London Irish Academy. Um, super feet, really quick as we've just seen. Spite the gap, through he goes. It's great to see. Well, it does level things up. Conversion to come. Conversion is successful and St. Benedict's lead for the first time in the match. A good response from going a score down. Yeah, that's the thing. If we can keep the ball, we've got players, as you've just seen, that can create create space and also go through any gaps like that. So we'll see if we can get the ball back from this restart and um, hopefully get another try. The, the restart in the under-18s is one of the most brutal and physical things that happens here. It is such, such a contest. That's a low driving. Oh, my goodness me. Referee reaches for the pocket. Just a yellow. Yeah, it, it, you just can't do that now. We all know that. You just got to. But sometimes, again, we forget these are kids. They, they lose their head on the show pitch. And um, now extra are in a good position to attack. Certainly are. Ball in hand and a missed tackle. And Henry Selick for Exeter College <laughs> responds to the yellow card immediately. St. Benedict's down a man and down a score. 12 7. Yeah, really unlucky. So Elio there just missed the tackle. Probably the first tackle he's missed all season. He's yeah. an absolute warrior. He's the lower sixth. Like puts his body on the line at all times. So really unlike him. Um, Unfortunate, but fair play, extra have made it count, that extra man. It's a lower sixth, getting into the that first seven, as it were, or the 12 selected players. He'll be hoping to have two years at it. Finding. Now, this is a good restart. Exeter giving fair chase. Contest. Fair Backers contest and backwards into Exeter hands. Sometimes the laws of physics come into play, and when they're on your side, they really do do you a massive favour. Exeter College in these blue, black and white. Thin hoops, bringing it forward through Jacob Lewis, wearing number seven. That one fired out. Good low tackle. But still with Exeter. Can't afford to miss any more tackles, and that is a last gasp one. No, eight, no, eight off feet, leave it. St. Benedict's holding on. But Exeter looking sharp, looking really sharp. Can't quite reach for the line, though. No. And getting the ball down. James Howard's there. Third try, five and a half minutes gone. Decent contest. Yeah, fair play to Exeter. They've scored two tries while St. Benedict's have been down to six men and they've made that extra man, uh, extra man count. You can see we were sort of down to bare bones then. Um, so hopefully once we get back to seven from this kickoff, we can keep the ball um, and actually apply a bit of pressure when we've got the ball. The yellow card is back on. Goes to show how old I am, Dave. There, oh. I actually coached the Exeter College coach, John, <laughs> John Fabian. So when he was at Exeter University many years ago, I was his coach, and he's doing really well down at Exeter College now. Of course, you were down there, Exeter University, going great guns. Buck Super Rugby League champions, back-to-back -back cup Hi, champions. Mate. Looking for what the youngsters call a three-peat. Oh, what a snaffle! Ben Harris! <laughs> St. Benedict's just not able to get their hands on the ball. And Exeter College coming up with a great kickoff receipt. As you said, kickoffs at these under 18s are crucial. And the Exeter College kickoffs, every single one has been on the money. I think they've got every single one. 
Yeah, I have to admit, I don't like the tap back. Um, try and catch it or let them get it and then tackle them like we've batted it back and they've made full use of that, come through and score the try. We need to get our hands on the ball. It's the old argument like in football, isn't it? Some goalkeepers punch, some goalkeepers catch, and the goalkeepers who punch say you should punch, and the ones who catch say you should catch. But in this instance, it's like they're going for the bat back before the catch, and look how much more safe and secure that is. And with the last play of the half, it'll be St. Benedict's opting for the toe, and that's because there's space and pace. Next touch important, it's skewed off the side of the boot, and Exeter managed to win it. Now, will they kick this off and go for the sanctuary of a half-time breather, or will they try and play? Well, they're going to put it on the toe now. It is a hefty shoe. It's rolling end over end. Oh, is it going to sit up? Yes, it is. What a kick. What a kick and what a hitch kick. Well, this is sensational, but it is exhausting. Absolutely exhausting. We've gone end to end to end. They're over the ball. They win the penalty. Oh, you cannot get isolated. An extra college now still on the last play before the half. So important for St. Benedict's that they can hold on here until half time to give themselves a chance. Over a minute of time played at the end of the first half. Another good offload. Exeter College patient inside the 22. Good clear out as well. Two on two on the outside. It's going to the take something play. pretty special. Referee reminding us that it's still the last play. We've been out there for so long in this first half. Now the dart. No one able to compete at the breakdown for St. Benedict's. Well, that was a low pass taken well. And another good clear out. This incredibly disciplined from the boys in blue. Now they go to the edge, the stop, and the go, and the turn of pace, and the try. And patience and perseverance for Henry Selick and his team. Yields another five points, a nightmare end to the half of St. Benedict's. A nine-minute half, you don't get those very often, do you? Those last two minutes look brutal. Oh. Two kicks, both the length of the pitch, and fair play to um, Exeter College. They looked after the ball. They were, As you said, they were patient. Their work at the breakdown was really good. And then that one-on-one, -on -one, um, the wingers skinned him and he's gone in the corner. But as you were saying about the lower sixth, actually there's only there's only two upper sixth players in this squad um, for St. Benedict's. So um, the future's looking bright. They're look, getting loads of experience here. Um, so it's a bit of a learning curve against some of these these teams, but they're they're doing well. As we take another look at this final try before the half, Exeter College fully in the lead. Time for the second half. The sun getting lower in the sky, but still shining on pitch RE1. Perhaps as warm as it's been. That's fine, thank you. An extra college kicking off to St. Benedict's, who have been on the wrong side of a few moments. And as a result, seems like a lopsided score, but there have been some moments here of great contest. And now 
The man out wide. Oh, it's a good cover tackle in the end. And the offload not quite there. Exeter over the ball and over the ball brilliantly. Henry Selick making the turnover. That's outstanding work from Selick, isn't it? Like he's made the tackle, he's got up and he's jackaled. Like, I think that's where rugby's progressed at school so much. The breakdown work is like, it's just brutal. Like, it used to be keep the ball, but now if you get tackled, you get isolated. And that's all the girls I've seen at the start of the week, the under-14s, the work at the breakdown is just exceptional. That's exceptional work to pinch that ball as well. St. Benedict's picking the Exeter pocket. Oh, and then it's picked off. Selick again into the channel. Tackle, release! He is like a magnet for that X-shaped ball. Go, winger! Kick pass, Miles offside. You're always in front. Easy for the ref to spot as well. There's a whopping great halfway line in the way. Here's the mark, guys. To be fair, the ref he hasn't missed anything today, is it? Like, like as coaches, we often like to moan about the refs, but shout out to them over this week. Like, there's thousands of games that they've oh, got to do, they, and the majority of them do a really great job. They put in a tremendous effort. Here we go, kick into space. Oh, oh. The bounce just not on Benny's side. It's centimetres away from being brilliant. Good tackle. A little bit narrow here, but Exeter seem to have gone towards all the Benny's defenders. Now the defence can organise. But the clock continuing to tick and Exeter in no rush. Boss in the tackle. That's much better from St Benedict's. Patient in defence, waiting for the chance to actually hit, make a man and ball hit. And then we've got the turnover. So let's hopefully we can use this ball Put a little Shenass in, who's a bit of a pace man, put him into space, and hopefully we get a try. Brooks. Bind. Set. Foot in at the scrum then for St. Benedict. Still waiting for the first point of the second half, but now the pressure comes in from Exeter, swarming. Stay back. Penalty advantage, offside. And Exeter off side. Never, never by the back foot. Off he goes. Quick thinking. Hits the afterburners. And the chase is futile. The first try of the second half goes St. Benedict's way. Yeah, that's when sevens looks easy, isn't it? <laughs> Get a penalty, tap it and go quickly. Morgs has got the pace. Good to see. So hopefully we'll take this kick off quickly. Maybe get the ball back and get another try on the, on the scoreboard. Oh, they've gone short and have got the bounce. Smart play. Notice that Exeter were deep and wanting to run onto that ball. Don't give them the opportunity to do so. Oh, great last-ditch tackle. Bit more vim and vigour about this Benny's team, though. Oh, this footwork is exceptional. How good? Very good. That's what you want to see. Quick kickoffs, take it 10 metres, get the bounce of the ball. Shenas, the number nine, bit of footwork, gives it to Freddie Ross and you. More footwork, try under the sticks. That's what we want to see. Jue. Well, he had a four on two there, so it's a good job that he scored. Otherwise, there'd have been trouble. And Exeter needs to be a little bit more aware of what's going on at kickoff time here. Tell you what, if Benny's get another one quickly, this get might up. be. Oh, what a take. God, that is so good. And that just relieves so much pressure. Ben Harris with the long levers. It's lifted. Back was off blue. No, don't go in. And now Exeter, if they can get another score here, it might be done and dusted off. Oh, and that's knocked on. And then a, a naughty little kick away to buy some seconds from James Moore Group. Still just over two minutes to go, two-score game. Definitely, if we can score from this scrum now, as you said, we can um, get the ball from the kickoff. You always want to be more than two scores ahead, so there's enough time on the, on the, um, on the clock to get a score, but we've got to get this, this ball away from the scrum. The last time we got scragged at the back, so hopefully we can get it out, move it, get a try. Free kick. Has to go. Run, run. <laughs> that was a little bit volleyball and perhaps saved his rib cage. Opt-in for the toe, opt-in for the pace, oh, close. Still alive, still alive. They've got to throw caution to the wind, St. Benedict. 
That's one of those. It's got to come off, though, isn't it? If yeah. You're gonna, if you're going to kick, you've got to get it back. Like I'd have liked Shenas actually to have backed himself, but if it stayed in, um, number 10, Johnny Dobbin, who's only only come back to rugby this year, he's been at, he's done fencing for the last four years at school, what? and he started um, playing rugby again in um, September. So he's done really well to get into this squad. I do like stories like that. It's a lad called Ben Smith who went to Loughborough University as a hockey player. Decided he was going to give rugby a go. Look at this leg drive, by the way. Decided he was going to give rugby a go. Got straight in the first team. One buck super rugby. Now he's gone to play in the shoot shield and he's loving his rugby. So great to see people taking their opportunities no matter what age they are. Don't you like that? Like we had a guy, Ben Thompson, came to Exeter University on a cricket scholarship. Ended up winning what used to be Busa, played at Nottingham and Exeter Chiefs for years. Oh, These kids that can do everything. Well, you hate them. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, the cricket's a rugby pathway. It's uh, quite a popular one. Similar with the, similarly with Alex Dombrunt. He thought he was going to be a cricketer at uni. That's his fine. He's back in the England team now. It's uh, Give it. Yeah, good, good pass. Know, 30 seconds to go. St. Benedict's running out of time. But maybe there's a gap off. Tackle. Great cover tackle. Had to be. It's gone forward off a hand, but referee happy for play to continue. Now at the short side, two on one, slung over the top. A race to the corner. Here we go. Oh, Benedicts are in. Need to dot it down, need to convert it. Now we're going to get time for a restart. <laughs> Drop kick it. Now, That's let's go. Oh, referee said last play from the kickoff. Fencing's last rugby game. Great score by Mr. Dobbin there. Freddie's taking the conversion. I think there is enough time. Yeah, the referee so said we've we'll got restart. To get the, got to get the ball back. That's great. What a game. It what has been a, a great game. game. <laughs> Just that sort of simbin early in the game when we That's were down great, to six. Baby. Extra really good, really clinical, sort of those two scores has, has punished us. But if we can get the ball back here, who knows? It was 31-5 at half time. Referee said 31-24. We make it 31-26. All or nothing. It's all on this restart. Oh, it's not going to go 10. A brutal end. Sevens is brutal, isn't it? It's brutal. Horrible game, but a brilliant game, and we love it. And days like this, and games like this, and teams like this. And Exeter College hold on. The brilliant first half, the platform for their victory. And they've beaten Bennies by a score, 31 26. Into the women's under 18 ace we go, and not only do we go, we fly. Look at this for a start. City of Oxford College versus SGS. 
under the poles straight from the kickoff. A dream start. An SGS five. City of Oxford College nil is the score. Sam Howard, goodness me. That's got to be up there for one of the quickest tries of the tournament, isn't it? Surely. All week. Surely. Like, fair play, caught the ball straight through the middle. What a start. Well, this is why teams sometimes stand a little bit deeper for these starts and restarts. We saw in the previous game, Exeter College getting caught out because they were a bit too deep and it was dropped in short, but it does allow you, doesn't it, to just accelerate onto that ball. And sometimes, sometimes that happens. Let's go. What a great experience for that girl. First play oh. on the show call, on the telly. Bosch, try. City of Oxford College. Oh, my goodness, they're <laughs> going to come back and do exactly the same thing. This is bonkers. This is brilliant. This is the Howden Roslin Park National School Sevens. We have got two tries in under a minute. That's got to be a record, surely. Tackling is optional in this game. Yeah. But fair play to her. It was one of those where she's broke three, free, and then you've got someone you're chasing you the whole way, and you're like, please stop, yeah. please stop. But she chased her all the way down, but she's got the try. What a start to this game. Unbelievable. Conversion missed, 5-7. But what a contest. Now, City of Oxford College, a lot of Midlands Academy players. They, right, there was a tight head prop from City of Oxford College playing for Wales under-20s. And I know which Premiership side has signed him, but I'm not allowed to say it, and it's killing me. However, they've got some great rugby coming out of City of Oxford College. And I'm excited for the future of their tight head, oh. young Sam Scott. Oh, I okay. thought we were going okay. again then. Wow, I thought SGS. Oh, it's forward. But forward pass. they're locating Hello. space. Yeah, again, it's just incredible. I've been watching you like so much of this on the um, on the live stream over the week, and like I wanted to shout out. Back, to you please. and Burnsy Back. and Next Gen, Go. right? The job that you guys have done over right. this week is fantastic. I've loved it. Go. I'm sure everyone else has. So first off, thank you for providing what you've done. It's been brilliant, um, and and the and the skills on show from all the boys and girls this week have just been a joy to watch. I agree with every word you say there, Go apart back. from the uh, the thanks for us, because I'm not very good at taking compliments. However. I will agree that everyone is is putting in the hard work, the hard yards, but it's the enthusiasm that gets everybody through, but it's the enthusiasm that radiates from what happens on all of the pitches, because I think everybody who comes here just basks in the, the quality of the rugby and the effort that's being put in and, and how much all of these players, whether it's in this girls' ace competition, the boys under 18s, the prep schools, the Colts, the 14s, whatever it is, just how much they love playing and love being with their mates and, and making these memories. So, yeah, we're all putting the graft in. And this beautiful movement, oh, it's knocked forward. And that's going to be a yellow card that ends what yellow card. was potentially going to be a very exciting move and still might be an exciting move as SGS. Oh, no comment. Knocked on. Oh, what a shame. Like that from that scrum. Superb little run around move. They obviously worked on that and it had worked, and then it was the deliberate knock on. And then they unfortunately, the wingers just put it down there. But as you said, the enjoy the enthusiasm around this place. I didn't come last year, I had a sort of I had an injury, but I watched it all on telly and it was all muddy and rainy. But yes, this, it was. this is what it should be smiles on faces. No. Um, like from my own point of view, right. St. Benedict's would lost three games, but the kids are still right. enjoying themselves. They've got smiles on their faces. It's just fantastic to be here this week. We spoke to some students yesterday, some from Prince Henry, some from Abingdon, and we interviewed them for the live stream, and both teams had terrible days on the pitch, but they were beaming because they'd had such a good day off it. Release. Okay. Great clear out. City of Oxford College picking up and going. There's a big gap on the short side. And they are in for their second try. Yeah, and whilst down to six players as well, but that's great spatial recognition. Sometimes people just pick up and run to, into, um, into people, but she's seen space on the blind side, picked it up, run round under the sticks. Conversion and successful. 
I have just seen, after we were talking about the prop that has signed for the club, I have just seen the head of recruitment from that club here as well. But my lips are sealed. I will not say their name or their club. I'm looking around. But, isn't but they, it... there's, there's faces everywhere. It could be anyone. Yeah, I was <laughs> like going to say, don't the, you... The world and his wife are here today. It's Martin Johnson's on, walking please. around. Paul Sampson's Let's here. Go. There's yes, people everywhere. Yeah. Well, yesterday we had Jamie Redknapp on the live stream, uh, someone famous, of course, for the round ball, not the oval ball. We had Hugo Monia, we had Topsy Ojo. Oh. Of course, Amy Wilson-Hardy from Great Britain Sevens has joined us. Tom Mitchell's been up here as well. Olympic legend. Ah, it's been awesome. I actually taught Topsy Ojo. Did at you? At Dartford Grammar School. My first ever teaching job. He was in year seven. Wow. Um, I actually taught him sevens and he was electric, yes. even back then. Well, do you know what? He was talking about his time at Dartford Grammar with real a real fondness, as as so many do. Of course, one of those hardworking people who do so much for the school's game. Angus Savage, he's down there now. The amount of graft that he's gone through. He's hosting the preview and review shows and writing all the copy at the end of every day as well. He is non-stop. In terms of someone that loves rugby, oh. You don't get anyone more than Angus. And what he's done for schoolboy rugby is just exceptional over the last, probably since about 2010, I yes. think he probably, when I was at, started at Dulwich, he was starting to do it. And what he's done is just superb, absolutely superb. Look at the way City of Oxford College, oh, they're moving this ball and their hands just let them down, but they were playing on a penalty advantage for a little hair pull, can't do that. Back, back, well spotted back. by the referee. Plenty of hair to pull there, though. That is a sensational barnet. Better than some of these horrific mullets that we're seeing in the boys' game at the moment. The City of Oxford College trying to target that outside defender. Ball's knocked on. An SGS. Back, back, back. Okay. On the move. Good tackle. Now there are bodies there. Can they turn this over? Advantage. Back for another advantage. It's been an incredible game. Like the first minute, it was like yes. run through, tackling was optional. The last five minutes, they've been knocking Let's lumps at each other. No one's missed a tackle. They're smashing into each other. It's been great to see. Just three points in it. Grand Blue. Back to back Please. tries after SGS burns up the turf straight from the kickoff to start the match. Back yellow. So where, where is SGS? What's what is it? Uh, Bristol ish. Okay. No, Stroud, but Five. you know, some people's. Uh, Dead! Some people's. Yeah, South Gloucester College. Stroud. Fulton? 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 Okay. Right. Here we go. Oh. On the toe. Oh, please gather this. Please. Oh, and another touch. How good. Yes! What a try! What a moment! One touch, two touch, five points. Absolutely astonishing rugby to take the lead just before half time. Superb score. Again, such good game awareness. You realise there wasn't a sweeper. She kicked it through and then the football kicked through. That's unfortunate. But what a score. From two of the best kicks we've seen in this competition to one of the worst. But it doesn't matter. South Gloucestershire and Stroud College lead. City of Oxford College 10-12.
Let's go. And we go again. Is that forward? Referee says play yeah. on. Good contest it. for the ball. Good contest. Full yeah, stop. City yeah, of yeah. Oxford yeah, yes. chasing the game. The lead's changed hands three times. Thank you. Right. Yes. God, I'm still reeling from that try just before half time. What a score. It was superb, but you just don't get surprised by scores anymore. Like no. You just e expect the unexpected at Rosny Park because there's scores coming from all over the place. It's just fantastic to see the skills from all the girls and boys. Like left hand, right hand is seen. Yeah. Oh, unlucky. Can they take advantage? Stick with us to find out. First minute of the second I'm half. The Best GS. Release. No, 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 hand. Thanks. <laughs> Referee marshalling the breakdown. Okay. Love it. But again, it's great again that referees are coming from all over the world yeah, that yeah. we've got here. Um, and that's that's what we want. We want to grow the game, don't we? We want people playing, refereeing, coaching from everywhere. Nice offloading there. It's gone to ground. However, this is top notch from SGS. A couple more passes could do it. As could another missed tackle. Too quick, too sharp. Oh, here we go. And a little bit of World Tour arrogance. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. 17-10. Big kick coming up now because this will make it a two-score game. Excellent kick. And you know what? We saw the one she missed just for after. I think she was exhausted. She'd just run the length of the pitch, yeah. kicking the ball. You're like, I remember when I used to play, you want, you want someone coming else to kick that. Um, like she just kicked that, like nailed that. Yeah. And they're keeping City of Oxford guessing with this restart right. straight down the middle. Yeah, left hand, right hand, quality of the delivery, <laughs> really nice. And a feed the speed over on the right hand side. Touch. However, the touchline never loses a tackle. Best defender I've ever met. Yes. Hello, never misses a tackle Thanks. that touchline. Thanks. Back, blue, back, back. Back, yellow. Eight, back. Play on. Back, back, back. Back, stop, OK. Oh, Let's knock the head. Referee spotted a little fingertip stop on it blue. as well. Yellow. Yeah, he's done well there because that ball went backwards and forwards like a ping ball. So who have we spotted today? You said Martin Johnson, Will Cup winner, yeah. Will Greenwood, Please. Will Cup winner as well. We've got right. Dan Thanks. Bibby and Tom Mitchell down there, a couple of sevens, Olympians for Great Britain. Good. It's all yeah. going off, isn't yeah, it? I don't want to mention Bye. Mark Dernan Smith here as well. As oh, is it? Yeah, but I don't want to mention him in front of a commentator. <laughs> Absolute legend of the game. Yes, his son was here on RE1 earlier, actually. Ash, I believe. Oh, lovely. This is a lovely play, wraparound play. Now, back yourself, speed, get under the sticks and let's make a game of it. City of Oxford College creating the space and allowing us to feast our eyes on a fabulous try. Textbook try. Scrum, right hand side, little move to create the two on one. The skills actually pass early rather than actually trying to offload, pass before contact, and the wingers just got that ball, put her head down, score under the sticks. Superb try. So he's, as soon as she's got that ball, she's only got one thing in mind, isn't she? I'm going to go and score. Well done. 1917. Great game. 1918. Okay. 19. Sorry. Just shows how important conversions are. City of Oxford College need another try. Oh, my goodness. Release! Back, Big shot. Back, back, back. Referee in a good spot. He says not high. Back, up. back. No jackal to be had there, but City of Oxford slow the ball down. SGS. 
Good carry forward. The ball out to the edge too. City of Oxford like that defence. That's in front of their bench there. Big few moments coming up still. Two minutes of this one to go. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think that was nine no's before he finally put his whistle to his lips there, the referee. Okay. As a coach get killer, like fair play to the ref, he's telling her he's doing all he can, don't go there. She still went for that ball. Just up let until, it go. Up until then, the defence was superb, not one missed tackle, uh, and then just a little bit of ill discipline then. Doesn't mean the SGS. Don't go! Can eke some back, seconds back, back, back out. Another try. OK. Oh, what a turnover. Oh, put some width on it. The other way, any way that isn't that way. Here we go, this is massive now. Approaching the last minute, City of Oxford College on the ball, two on one, but a little dummy into it. This would be remarkable. The chase is on, the offload is there, and City of Oxford College will take the lead. It all comes from the turnover, and from then on in, clear heads and decision making. What a score. Superb, as you said, the breakdown over there on the right hand side, again, recognition. They smashed it, went through, got the ball, and then again, the recognition, number four, not sure who it was, she knew she didn't have the speed herself, she was looking for a winger, here she comes, she makes the break, this initial 20 yards of speed was great, but then she, where's my mate, where's my mate, she's coming, lovely, feed the speed. Well, that's something that we've spoken about a number of times today when not on commentary, you've been bemoaning both the, the boys and the girls for sometimes opting for the contact before they've made the pass. She waited and timed that pass to perfection, then took the tackler out and got back the ball release. away. OK, back, 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 Exactly. Down, back. I still think that if you can avoid contact in sevens, okay. you should. Oh move, the ball, move the ball, keep the ball moving. Don't risk the contact of the offload. <laughs> pass it before contact. And that's what she did beautifully then. This is big. This yes. is the last play. Hello. We're over 14 minutes. Can SGS steal this at the death they've got another penalty and they are off into the 22 it's been left behind but sgs are on it oh that's off the hands that should be enough the city of oxford college to secure a comeback victory full time what a contest what a contest both teams led it started with a flurry of tries and it finishes with just a three-point deficit. City of Oxford College getting a brilliant win over SGS 22-19.
And we continue. Brooksby Melton College in the turquoise against Glan Taff. So the East Midlands. Brooksby Melton Mowbray. East Midlands, is it Leicestershire or Nottinghamshire? It's Leicestershire, isn't it? Leicestershire. Melton Mowbray, yeah, that's yeah. right. Beautiful part of the world. Of course, some great rugby in the region too, not just the Leicester Tigers, but teams like Leicester Lions, Loughborough University, the schools like Oakham and Uppingham and all of those, Roundel not too far away. Glantaff flying the flag for South Wales. And this is a change of pace as well. Oh, my goodness. Smoked him, dusted him. He is away. Blink and you'll miss it. What a score. Wow, that was outstanding. You were bemoaning the lack of Welsh talent in the regions. Sign that kid up. Show and go. Gas, no one even touched him. Superb wheels. No one touched him, because I'm not sure they could. That was absolutely staggering. And that's what you want to see from that second man out. OK, someone with real gas there because the winger has to stay out wide and he's just left his defender for dead on the outside. That's superb rugby. Great to see, especially on this big pitch. Perfect for him. So here he goes. He's got good depth. He's got time. Dummy and see you later. Well played, young man. Superb start. Oh, I love that. I love that. They've gone for the switch kickoff and he's taking on the full. Oh, watch this again on the replay. I, this is where Sevens is great. Don't just do what everyone expects you. Kick it to the left and chase. He spotted that the winger wasn't in the right position in defence. He's then got the actual execution and the ability to kick it. And the chase has called it on the full two superb tries in literally 30 seconds. Well, this is where it becomes a really tough game, isn't it? Because they're, they're yet to touch the ball. Oh, Brooksby Melton and Glan Taff taking them to pieces. Here we go, the old switcheroo. You just love like that. Having the ability to want to do it and having the confidence, I'm going for this. Because if it doesn't come off, you can look really silly there if the opposition catch it and go the length. Um, and now he's gone conventional and put that... Oh, it's one oh, yard away from being perfect. Oh, well, Brooksby Melton have played it. It's gone forward to give you an update on the score. So Glantaff have beaten Gosforth Academy 39-0. They've beaten Oakham School. 42-17, and they are well on the way to beating Brooksby Melton College here. Three tries already. They've tasted defeat to Cranley. Certainly no shame in that, but they are cutting loose today. Again, it's that combination. Number 22, number 14, superb offload. And the beauty of that offload is he turned his head, he saw his mate, put it in his bread basket. It wasn't just, I'm going to fling it anywhere. Um, this has been a superb start from the Welsh team. So here you see a lovely little change of direction and the switch. Look at that. Sees his mate coming at 100 miles an hour. And that's what you want to do. When you take an offload, you want to come onto the ball, burst in with speed. Three tries up. Well, Brooksby Melton haven't gone badly themselves, but they're just having a nightmare with this kickoff. They hammered Gosforth Academy 41 19. Oh. And they beat Oakham well, too. And then came unstuck to Cranley, but a little bit of juge. And now the chance, here we go. Here's some gas. And here's five points. Look at this, four tries in four minutes. What a game. Well, yeah, as we said, they just haven't had the ball. As soon as that's the first time they've got it, and they've scored. Moved the ball, they got some pace and power. Then they moved it to the wing, and he scored. What a game. What a game. And as you say, so both of these teams have only lost to Cranley. And as you said, that is no, there's no shame in Cranley. They've been one of the best sevens teams over the last sort of 15 years. Well, we had them on RE1 earlier and they look the 
business this year. They are a very, very serious operation. So they always are. So I saw them at the Surrey Sevens, which obviously are, are any indication of what what teams are looking like. And I think they may have lost to Millfield, but again, there's no shame in that. And sort of the perennial contenders every year, Millfield, Brighton, they're all looking strong again this year. Well, that Surrey Sevens, as this is another contestable. Oh, what a take! That is outstanding. And the offload is good. And Brooksby Melton back into the 22. The offloading game brilliant. The scramble defence there too. And this has to go now. They have to score Brooksby Melton just to celebrate that restart take. Oh, my goodness me. Have we got a game on our hands or have we got a game on our hands? They need this conversion. But that two-handed grab. Wow. I've heard you say it this week, like the the, um, the restarts, they are like another set piece. And the, wow, two-handed catch, basketball offload, and they've gone under five tries in five minutes. This is sensational rugby. Well, so Crown Leaves results then, they beat Oakham early this morning. That's when we saw them. That's when they look really good, 33-14. Then they squeezed past Gosforth Academy. That's an interesting one. That was 10-5. Beat Glantaff, beat Brooksby Melton. So they're four from four. Which at this cup level is something else. Yep. See Angus down there flirting with the handsome boys. We're going to hear hit from him at half time, which is in about 30 seconds' time. And if Brooksby Melton can nick this ball back and get something before the whistle goes, then we are game on. But Glan Taff. Oh, yes! Yes! That is how to beat a man. Stand him up, sit him down. Absolutely brilliant stuff. That'll take us through to half time. 26 points to 12. And they're not taking anything for granted here, are they? They uh, want to make sure that they get this conversion. What a try. As you said, he had five metres of room. Didn't really look like he had those wheels. He stood the guy up and just gone round him, wasn't even touched. Six tries in a half. Superb. 28 points to 12. And we're about to play a game of who's who in terms of the top boys because Tom Mitchell is down there with Dan Bibby. So we are pitch side here at pitch one and I've managed to find one of my old muckers, uh, Dan Bibby. We were just standing here reminiscing about how we used to float around. It's been a while since we were on the World Series, mate, but you're down here doing a different job. What are you doing today? Uh, so I am assistant coach at Kirk and Grammar now, um, going into the big wide world um, and getting myself a proper job, I suppose. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. oh, that, that's, a, that's a long shot for you, mate, having known all the uh, deep, dark secrets that we won't reveal on camera now. But what kind of stuff, like you coming down here, it's obviously been a while since we've played. Um, you're fully retired now, are you? Yeah, so just got too old, everything hurt too much. Um, but no, I was at Caldy last season, which was amazing, really loved it. Uh, but yeah, I just took too much toll and like up and down the country every week. I've got three young kids. It was just a bit too much. I thought the next step for me is like moving on. And you know, uh, I was doing sort of part time at, at Kirkham, and then they offered me a bit more, a bit more. I was a bit more of a full time role, so I was like, sounds good to me. Is it enjoyable coaching the lads then? What kind of feels is that giving you connection to the game still? Yeah, I think that's probably why I took it because I get the same. You know, I get to sort of work with the boys, which I, I really love. That like, great set of lads, and I still get my fix of rugby every weekend so but I don't have to get bashed about so that's that's a massive bonus um, but no the, honestly the lads make it so enjoyable they're such a, a good group to coach um, and because they're 18 so if you can have a little bit a little bit of band with them and you know sometimes they get it sometimes just think I'm an old weirdo and stuff but uh, no, it's good fun they're a good group I hope they're throwing the band back at you 100%. Right, someone, someone needs to I can assure you that um, we were just taking the mick out of each other because we're now the old blokes hanging on to the game still wearing our old stash you were any old kit today you were just in Kirkham gear? Uh, I may have my England rucksack with me but um, if you got the shorts then I'd be terrible. I'd, you wear what you can. To be fair I'd, I'd actually wear them every day just because I can't, I'm too skinned to buy anything new so. <laughs> a good insight into the life of Dan Bibby there. Back up to Dave Rogers in the commentary box. Ah, two good men there. Thanks for your time Dan and thanks for your looks Tom. Big moment. Oh, it's just knocked on. I thought it was off a blue hand. It's off a, 
A green hand. They need the next score, really. We talk about this all the time, but conversion savage because we've had a great game, but it's effectively a three score game because of that one conversion that slid around the outside of the post. If it's anything like the first half, though, there'd be, there'd be three tries in this, no problem. Yes. Fine. So Brooksby Melton. It's a funny old place, Brooksby Melton College. Oh, we'll talk about that after because Glenn Taffer away again. These boys are bonkers. And this support line from the left, absolutely sensational. The big chase has come, the big tackle is made. But the second touch is here, and that is exemplary rugby sevens. How to support your mates and how to put it away. That support, as you just said, was superb. And the, the blonde fella here, he has run from almost this left touch line to the middle of the pitch to support. And as we saw, he's not got out and out wheels because he got caught. But then the third man was there and he scored the try. The work rate, like these guys, I, I think it's hard to explain to people that don't really know, what, only seven minutes? It can't be that hard. Like sevens is lung busting and that was superb. And that might be the game there. It's tough on Brooksby Melton and it's tough on the chaser as well. Jasper Bath, serious wingspan on the boy and he's worked so hard to get back. He's made two tackles there, but not enough to stop the try. Oh, here we go. Great take, really good take and he's away. Here we go, Brooksby Melton, great step. Individual effort, a couple of gooseys to fly over. And there's life in the old boys yet. That has got to be one of the best individual tries of the week. To take that kick off above his head basketball style, the pace to get away and then the power to run 70 metres, that's individual skill of the highest get out of his way. order. Get out of his way. Well, Glenn Tuff. Oh, there's a player down there, Glantaf player clutching his shin. So Glantaf, of course, flying the flag for Wales as we take another look at this outstanding try. Just, and he's the one that chased back literally 30 seconds. He's, he's chased back to almost make a try saving tackle. He's caught that ball on the full, power to get through two players and then the pace to run another 50 metres. Some of the skills and the fitness of these kids is incredible. Well, we hope that a lot of these young players are going to continue their rugby, whether it is professional, semi-professional, locally, or going into the university game and joining us for commentary for the next one. Rhys, who's scouting here from the tower. He's doing the Wales University Sevens team this season, and I've no doubt that in the future, some of these Glan Taff boys will be hoping to put on the red of Wales Sevens. And this is an absolute talent hotbed, all kinds of people around. We've talked about the professional clubs that we've seen that have got to remain anonymous before I grass up where Sam Scott is signing for next season. Um, but we've got the, the, the Welsh exiles caravan over there, the Peter Walton of Scotland and the Irish qualified people are here too. We've got all the universities and so many opportunities for these young players to continue their rugby journeys. Judging by the talent we're seeing and the commitment and desire as well, we hope that they continue for a long time. Brooksby Melton on the ball. Another good step, the work rate. From Henry Nanko Bruce. Recently converted from wing to back row, but you can tell he's that kind of strength and commitment that he's going to be a nightmare whatever numbers on his back and you, you say about the the recruitment but there are so many kids out there that aren't picked up by academies because maybe they're a bit too small and the sevens is actually perfect for them and and their late developments and so if i sort of heavily involved with the samurai bulldogs and there are so many kids out there that weren't picked up by academies but in the, on the sevens pitch were just an absolute joy to watch Oh, here we go, Glantaf making mistakes and not, perhaps not enough time for Brooksby Melton, but if they get a score here, then maybe a oh, brilliant defence, forcing Brooksby Melton back towards their own half, but skipping away. 
And he's through. Oh, this footwork. This footwork. Samson shoot. Gets the ball away. Tayo Vondel. Vondel. Dot it down. Get this converted. And let's get this game back underway. 22 35. Nine tries. It's almost any team that gets the ball scores a try. And it's not as if it's missed tackles. It's superb individual skill. Vondel. Same name, name but, as yeah. someone that scored a hell of a lot of sevens tries for England. In that part of the world as well. Love the conversion too. Beautiful strike. Ollie Stambridge. Look at the footwork here. Step, double step. Strength to get away and then a lovely offload out the back. Lovely skill. Here we go, passing it to himself, Brian O'Driscoll style. Stopping and going, and Brooksby Melton, yes, wrestling. The Welshman into touch. Gotta love the old throw it up to yourself. James Simpson, yeah. Simpson Daniel against the Barbarians. Uh, did it against Lomu and Cullen, I think, as an 18 year old. Such confidence. It's great to see these kids having a go. I saw on the, um, the stream the kid. The old heel over the head. Yes. Try yesterday. If you haven't seen it, please look at it. It's superb. How good. Overthrown. No, no, no. Leave it. They're called away. Into the last minute. Is there another try to take us up to double figures for the match? Probably. Yeah. Highly likely. There's the seed. Helped on. Oh, good take in the end. Oh, away we go. Cover tackle. Here's a good one. A Deridan turned over. Oh, here we go. Yellow card. Why not? Brooksby it's, Melton on the ball. There's been everything else in this game. Yeah, there has. Yeah. <laughs> Referee says flat. Brooksby Melton say yes, please. Getting away. Slam dunk in the offload over the top. No, leave it blue. You. Oh, rolling out of the tackle, and there we go. Picked off. And that should put a lid on it. Well, this has been an excellent game. Glantaff will beat worthy winners. They got off to such a good start. But Brooksby Melton have more than made a contest of this. And this will be the last action. Well, it's not all good news because there's a Glantaff player who's been helped off his boots off and Looks like it's going to be the end of the road for him. But full time, what a game, what an advert for these two teams in this great competition. Brooksby Melton, 24, Asko Glantaf, 42. And now Burnsy's down there finding out why we all do it for the love of the game. Story down here, D. Rog. We got Barbara and Dave from For the Love of the Game, all the way from Canada. Canada. Okay, so you're here in the women's competition, and I know that you were coming on tour here. You wanted to get in the tournament. You're a bit of like a late entry, but boy, if you announce yourselves, no need to be humble. How well have your girls gone today? Uh, well, they went 4-0, um, and they just, it was really great because we came here for 15s, and then we were really fortunate to get invited into the tournament, and so they, they're just, uh, we had some incredible guest coaches come out and, and help them and, um, you know, build the love for the love of the game onto sevens, and it's just great to be here in this environment so that Canadians can see how big rugby is, especially in the UK. For the love of the game. Now, not just the best stash in the game, but for the love of the game. Tell us a little bit more about the team. Tell us where they're from and how For the Love of the Game is developed. Sure. So it's a Canadian charitable fund uh, focused on rugby. Uh, goal is to inspire excellence through experience uh, for their athletes, coaches, and passionate supporters. So this is our first uh, team trip with players. We got 20 amazing young women from across Canada. Uh, we threw out the invite across Canada. Girls put up their hand, and uh, we have them here we've had two weeks of exceptional experience they've been to three internationals one more on the weekend two games the seven so it's just been amazing incredible so how are you drawing these players together how big is women's rugby in Canada 
Yeah, I mean, it's growing. We're, our women's team is uh, in the top four in the world on any given day, uh, competitive in the sevens, competitive in the 15s. Uh, Sophie did good. We got lots of players, probably 20 women over playing their premiership. And uh, for the other game, we actually just formalized a partnership with the Leicester Tigers for Canadian women for a pathway so we can get more women over here into the, uh, the premiership. And of course, the women of yesteryear inspiring the women of today, Barbara. Again, we're going to challenge your modesty. Three World Cups, three Rugby World Cups you played in for Canada. Yeah, I, I like when Dave invited me to be a part of this, just so cool. The amount of things that have come into my life just because I love playing rugby. And, you know, I almost think there's never been a better time to be a woman in this sport because we have the support of the men behind us. We have women supporting women and everyone just growing this great game. So, yeah, it's a really special time and I feel so fortunate to still be involved. And look, we're going to have to get back into back to the action very, very shortly. But I would just love to know, especially as it's your first time and you, it's the international aspect, what do you think is going to be the main takeaway for your time here at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens? Yeah, you know, for us, it's just the girls uh, to inspire them. They're going to see, you know, that next level and see the boys, the girls, everybody going. And, and we just don't have that at this extent at home. So it gets them out. I say it's going from a fishbowl to a fish tank, right? And they just see everything that's out there and, and how great it is. And rugby just connects the world. So that's our, uh, our goal. What a lovely note to end on. Thank you so much, guys. We are loving having you here at the Howden Rosson Park National Seventh, School 7th. Seventh. And if any other teams in Canada want to come and throw it down next year, you know where you're welcome let's go a fish bowl to a fish tank sounds like your trip to zanti in 2005 bernsey pin for a seven starport nil here on re1 talking of celebrity guests cardiff met's finest and i tell you what that is that is quite the accolade, Reese, as well, because there are some fine specimens in that educational establishment. Well, that's a big claim. Uh, and congratulations are in order. You're going to be coaching the Wales University Sevens team for the coming season. Yeah, I don't think anybody else applied for it, so I was lucky enough to get it. <laughs> but, uh, but talk to us about the, the Wales Uni Sevens programme then. Where are you going to be playing? What are you going to be doing? Where can we... Yeah, Would in the first, uh, first week of July, there's going to be a home nations where uh, Scotland, England and Wales will be uh, representing their universities uh, in multiple sports, rugby sevens being one of them, male and female. And uh, yeah, we're just going to trials process as well as training camps, hopefully leading up to the, to the home nations. Fimbra in again. They've had a pretty good day so far. And it's about to get better with a two-score lead. They beat Colleg Sirgar 14-12. Then they beat Rugby School 33-12. And then over on RE3, they lost a close one to Radley College 28-24, which will have been a big blow. However, a victory here perhaps will give them an opportunity. Rugby School were defeat, well, defeated Stileport, then Radley College did, and then Colleg Sirgar did. So they're looking to finish with a flourish here. I'll tell you what, the standard of these cup pulls, if you lose momentum early on, Reese, it's very difficult to get it back. I was going to ask you who's impressed you today. Everyone, mate, everyone. It has been such a good day, but... Uh, oh. God, who have I seen today? Anyone and every Cranley. Cranley were really good early on. I tell you what, neither of them are going to be in the in the player or the second day, I don't think. But the game we just saw there, um, just looking there for a clear out here. Brooksby Melton College, and nice to see some Welsh boys playing some code as well. Um, but yeah, Cranley have been excellent. Millfield are always excellent. Glantarf showing up well. Glantarf, mate. Very sharp. Do you have any relationship with any of the, the schools and colleges? I think there's always informal relationships between Welsh universities and Welsh schools. Mm. Uh, but the main thing is that the, the, the children get the education which they're looking for. And whether if that's over the bridge or say in a Cardiff, then we're always in the mix, yeah. hopefully. Are you saying that education is more important yeah. than rugby? <laughs> no comment, but <laughs> yes. Of course it is. Free kick at scrum time then. Stileport, a little bit too eager and Finbra. Straight on the front foot again. That one darted in behind. And sometimes that scrappy ball, if you can feed on it and take advantage of it, 
A lot of teams over the last few days have, have gone up from a seven defensively up front, where obviously traditionally it's a six and one. Oh, yeah. Where are you? Uh, actually, no, don't give away yeah, your tactics. Gonna say. Don't give away your tactics. That is a big bump. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Winning the collision and scoring the try. And that's exactly it. With a seven front defence, you have to bring that physicality then to beat that defence, whether it work great off the ball or physically in the contact area, which she obviously shown very well there. Oh, hello. We've got some young Quins. Got some guests. <laughs> well, they're going to they're gonna have to wait till you're done. The stash looks good, though. I do like the Quins cast all stuff. No, I do. It I can't get nice. any of it to fit me. It is important after I've said that, though, to thank Limitless, the official uh, sponsors of the player of the match, and, of course, uh, Hasbro, who are the official kit suppliers of not just the Housen, Roslyn Park National School Sevens, but also Roslyn Park FC going great guns in that one. Starport. Away they go, but they turn the ball over. Vimbra offloading at will. These boys can play some rugby. And they're in again. Coming up to half time. 24 0. Offloading skills so important in sevens. To, like we said earlier about the contact area and physicality, but then to get the skill and the finesse after the physicality to have that offloading is so important. And that's a great conversion as well. The two Fs, finesse and physicality. We'll take that. That's one of my tactics. <laughs> Coming him forward. Another great offload. <laughs> finesse and physicality. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> Bimbra. Looking good, oh, there's a big gap there. But it is filled by a big ball carrier from Starport. Safe catch, seven minutes gone, half time. Here we go, out of the back door. Thank you very much, Starport offloading again. Oh, they just cannot get the bounce to the ball here, Starport and Fimbra. Turning it over, accelerating away. <laughs> And disappearing out of sight. 31 points. Just a reminder, I hope he doesn't come to this, but games are killed at 50. And the rugby gods showing no mercy to Starport. Finbury lead 33 0 at half time. Second half, here we go. Starport, they've had a tough old half. But a fresh half comes with fresh possibilities. Play on, no hands raised, no hands, well done. Got a final coming up next in the, in the women's ace, and we've got some special guests who are involved. 
as well. They don't come much more special than Reese. <laughs> I keep saying that, and you keep looking at me like you don't believe it. Um, let's talk Uni Sevens then, because as well as the Wales stuff, the Roslyn Park University Sevens is happening for the first time on the 7th of June at Roslyn Park. Oh, that's a nice offload. Straight into the bread basket it goes. Better defence, but the offload exceptional. Oh, my goodness me. They are absolutely pouring forward, this Fimbra team. 38 nil. conversions are come. And the end is nigh for Starport. So, yes, Cardiff Met coming for the crown, 7th of June. Yeah, looking forward to it. I think what we're trying to create is a tournament like this one, hopefully in the future, for the university side of things. And not only a competitive tournament, but a social side as well from the Knights of Norwood, no doubt. And one of the things we're really keen as well is for a lot of the youngsters who've enjoyed playing here and perhaps aspire to playing Buck Super Rugby to, to come along and support. So if you're watching, if you're listening, spectators of all ages, 7th of June at Roslyn Park FC over the road, under the light, it's going to be absolutely incredible. The what's great about it as well? 10 o'clock in the night, I think, the final? Something like that. Oh, it's going, to be, it's going to be all day. It's going to be brilliant teams all day. But with that in mind, speaking of so many teams, they're all confident that they've got the best sevens team yeah, as well. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. There's going to be involvement from GB sevens too. Might be some flames. Depends if we can get them signed off by the insurance company. <laughs> there might not be flames, but there will be sparks flying. And a lovely way for a lot of the players. Oh, here we go. A lot, lot of way, uh, lovely way for a lot of the players to, to sign off playing for their their university that they've enjoyed so much that they love playing for so much for the final time. And also, oh, so we get a fend, and it will be a score for Starport. It looked a long way away, but Charlie Stevenson gets the meat pie for the boys in blue. Yeah, finding some continuity in play there from the Star Boys and, and, and paying dividends and finishing off a well worked try there. From touchline to touchline, hitting the space, drawing the defender. Great feet on the outside there. Absolutely. So Silverware is up for grabs next. We've got the girls' ace final. But it's going to be another score for Fimbra, and they are seriously knocking on this 50-point door now. Yeah, a bit disappointing there. They just had really good attacking try in the corner. They have to back it up now with a good defensive effort and just failing on the side there to really work hard and, and make those one-on-one -on -one tackles. Broke a bit too early and a bit easier there on the outside and converting the kick as well. Just uh, scrambling around for names and numbers for the final that's coming up next. The Worthing College girls. Oh, you're playing in that nice white and blue Quinn's kit as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, good stash. Good stash. Right, 47-5. One more try. And this is done and dusted. But it's going to be done and dusted via a free kick because that is... Uh, a little loose. The Worthing College versus Exeter College up next. Strange to see a girls' ace final without Hartbury involved. Don't look at me like that, Reese. Don't look at me like that. They're a heck of a rugby factory, and you know that as well as I do. They're welcome for all the Welsh players. <laughs> Especially in the women's side of things. This uh, lovely insight into the 22, but it's been knocked on. And, oh, he's managed to rescue it. Jacob Reynolds, penalty. Still two minutes to go. Is there something else in this for Starport? Head down. Other parts up. James Mars. High tackle. Nice bit of footwork required. There's a man out on his own on the right edge. Get him the ball. Instead, they've got up the jumper and they stopped just short. 
Still space on the right edge, and they've gone left style port, but they're strong enough to make it stick. Has the, the kick behind the back and court been mentioned at all today? It's good, that one, it? Wow. Just the, the confidence to go with that and to finish it as well. He's a, a living legend for the rest of his life. I hope so, and the fact that it was captured on camera as well. Joyous. Yep. Joyous, joyous, joyous. Right we, then. I would like, like to see a good defensive effort here. Now they have good tries, two tries in the game. I just want to back it up. Now it's a good work rate in the middle and make sure to turn the ball over to get the balls back in the hands. But instead, it is Fimbra. Oh, so casual. Held in one hand, unselfishly finds his mate and then gets the offload again. This will see an end to the game if they can get over, but we're coming to the end anyway. 14 minutes nearly upon us, great awareness, great offload. Eight tries, six out of ten for the roly-poly. He has kicked his boots off for the conversion. And it's full-time, massive win for Fimbra, 54 points to 12. Just want to say thanks. I was about to thank you. Been really, really, really good. Ah, oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. And uh, are you with us tomorrow, or are you? Yeah, we are tomorrow. Whether we've got a marquee here, uh, uh, anybody interested in wanting to know a bit more university, then please come over to Card Format. Free coffee, teas, Jaffa cakes. Oh, I, I know you'll be over. Well, there won't be any Jaffa cakes left if I'm there. <laughs> Cheers, free stop, no, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Here come the teams, it is the women's ace final. Two teams who've had a fantastic competition so far, but there can only be one champion. Exeter College in the blue, black and white hoops, Worthing College in the Harlequins kit. Two teams, two groups of players well on the pathway to the top level of rugby. And this is one of my favorite competitions because the girls ace is a true pathway into the professional game. And we can see that from the associations with these teams. Two of the top teams in women's rugby, of course, Harlequins and Exeter Chiefs, and two incredibly special guests to join us for this one from Worthing College. They're all decked out in their Quinn stash. We have Kira Solana. How are you, girls? Good, good thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Great, good day. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, you can be slightly Worthing College 
centric but if Exeter College do something great and they deserve it no one will be upset with you if you compliment them on it it is Exeter College to kick off 15 minutes from glory for these two teams and a knock-on advantage immediately and the opportunity to attack for Exeter College well as we set uh, the scrum then talk to us about the Worthing College program and how much you've been looking forward to uh, the Housing National School Sevens here at Roslyn Park yeah, um, we've had a pretty good season so far, like 15s and 7s wise. Um, we played Newbury 7s a couple of weeks ago, had an Inter 7s tournament last week, and now I think we've come so far over those two weeks. So, yeah. It's a pretty steep learning curve. Yeah. As Worthing are finding out here with Exeter going around the outside, an excellent cover tackle, but the offload good goes forward. Advantage to Worthing. And of course, they're in the harlequins kit and uh, you're involved with harlequins and the center of excellence talk to us about that yeah so i'm in first year so this summer i got into harlequins and it's been a very good season we're unbeaten from malvern all the way to playing at the stone x and the saracens so it's been amazing for us i tell you what in any kind of Quinn's jersey, getting a win at the Stone X is pretty good, isn't it? But it's Exeter who are having the better of the starts in this final. Tilly Pulser, Pulser backs herself, Pulser around the outside, and Pulser scores. Very good try from Exeter. Yeah, but... she's a good player. I've played with her before. Um, yeah, she's got some gas. She has got some gas, yeah. and we have seen it there. So talk to us about that then, because one of the things that that's us oldies continue to say is young players now particularly in the social media age you are so aware of the players that are playing for other teams as that conversion drops short so will you have your eye on, on sort of some of the talent and some of the players that are that are in the other colors the other side of the ball 100 yeah, percent. you keep an eye on your competition very closely <laughs> friends close and enemies closer yeah, exactly. of course <laughs> another look at that finish there Tilly Pulser in 14, flying through an extra college. Great start, but that is a good take over on the far side. Lily Smith there for Worthing College, but holding on. So Exeter College, bit of a loose pass there. And a good shot to try and stifle the attack. It is all blue, white and black right now, though. Suggestion of a forward pass. Referee happy enough to continue. No real contest at the breakdown. It's quite narrow. But Pulser can put some width on it. Oh, she's quick. She's very quick. And she's going to get her second try. She is making that right-hand side her own. It's 10-0, three minutes gone. And Worthing College struggling to deal with the gas. We're in 14. That's definitely our weakness right now. We need to make sure we're mirroring her because they're getting those tries that we don't want them to be getting, but fantastic from Exeter. Yeah, I think we're lacking a bit of strength in our legs throughout about a well, long day, clearly, but just try to get some strength back in. So you were... Oh, it's a good strike, but it's disappeared to the right-hand side. You were, you were with the team prior to kick-off. How is everyone feeling? How is everyone holding it together in terms of the physicality? Because it's a big ask, multiple games in a day like this. A lot of massages, making sure our legs are still working. But Yeah, hydration too, yeah. obviously oh, yeah. key. But I think they're excited to just be out here and playing, to be honest. Tilly Pulser, her legs are certainly still working, aren't they? She is. A bit um, too well from a Worthing perspective, but fantastic. Well, the referee, not only has he stopped the game because there are two balls on the pitch, but he's also turned his microphone off, so we can't hear him. Very frustrating. It's been the first time here on pitch RE1 in the Howden National School 7s at Rosslyn Park that we have been able to have the referee's mic and it does offer us great insight however the blast of the whistle sometimes hurts our ears with the headphones on Worthing College under real pressure at scrum time Exeter College absolutely suffocating them but now the first chance to attack nice little wrap around move this Rosie Blackburn on the ball there oh it's been turned over though and it is back with Exeter there back with Worthing College excellent turnover Daisy Evans Hands on the ball, referee doesn't like it though. 
Worth in college, just defending their own 22. Once, then twice, and then it's Tolly Toe poked into touch as we approach five minutes. So, season-wise, is this the end for the Sevens, or are we...? Uh, no, we've got um, the AOC National Sevens in Nottingham oh, at the end of nice. April. So. Been to Nottingham before? Yeah, I have. Lovely yeah. city. Yeah. Lovely city. Lots of rugby going on there, too. That's a nice clean line-out ball off the top, but a long way for Worthing to go. So they opt to drop it on the toe, and that is a massive hoof. And where's the chase going to come from? Two Exeter players back, and two Worthing players come to meet them. First up tackling, so important now, and in comes the Jackal, but that is a monstrous clear-out. There's some space here on the left-hand side this time. Scarlett, Morgatroyd. Offload out of the back door, it could open up here. Worthing with more tackles to make. A handful of jersey prevents the try. Brilliant cover defence. But it's still with Exeter. Queuing up on the right-hand side, but instead they check inside. Oh, pulses waiting. But Worthing have turned it over. What a grapple for this ball. Great strength from Amy Bush. And a cover tackle coming in from Exeter. Offloads inside their own dead ball zone. It is crazy and chaotic, but the score still 10-0, the last minute. And that's the first thing we've seen that looks like a box kick all tournament. Exeter coming forward again. The offload is good, the opportunity's there. The clear out is massive. And the gap opens up, it's a third score. Worthing spending so much time defending their own 22. Exeter were always going to score eventually. And they take complete control of this final now. Half time beckons. It's 15 0. Conversion to come. Unsuccessful. But Exeter College very much showing that they are finals experienced, they're battle-hardened, and they lead Worthing by 15 points to nil at half-time in this girls' ace final. Let's get back to you two then. So you're combining your rugby with your studies. Was it rugby that made you consider Worthing College, or was it just something that comes alongside what you're looking to achieve long-term? Yeah, for me, it was definitely the rugby. Like, they didn't have rugby at my other school, so I think... Like I always, I know I wanted to play rugby at a higher level, and Worthing definitely helped me so like achieve that. And I'd imagine it's the same for you. Now you've been involved with Harlequins as well. Yeah, it's definitely good for the Worthing lot to be able to have academics in both rugby, especially because a lot of schools don't actually offer the girls rugby. So it's amazing for these schools to be coming up. Well, we've been talking to, to all kinds of people today. We had Katie Trevathan up here earlier. She coaches. Uh, the Loughborough University women's team in the Women's National League, as well as playing Premiership Women's Rugby for Loughborough Lightning. And it, it just feels like the pathway is all laid out for you now, that there are so many opportunities to continue with your playing, whether you combine it with education or, you know, there are, there are professional opportunities too. That must be really exciting for you as young players, young ambitious players. Yeah, I think it's definitely grown for us. Like, the progression from, like, when I was, like, eight years old is crazy. Like, I never saw, like, women growing up, like, playing growing up. But now I'm, like, seeing that happen, and it's just, like, kind of inspired me to keep going. There's definitely been people who we now look out to are in Quinns who we aspire to be, like... Who? I want names. Shauna Brown, our coach. She's oh, one she's of them. she's coaching you, is she? She coaches us. She's amazing, and she's done so much for the sport, and she's amazing. I love her. That is quite... Uh, well, you're not the only one, to be fair. She is. Uh, she's a brilliant human being, and, of course, still playing back at Harlequins now after coaching over in the Cayman Islands. Moving into the back row as well, using a ball-carrying <laughs> prowess as a number eight, not just a tight head prop. She's been an ambassador for the, uh, for the early stuff with the British and Irish Lions as well, which is a very exciting time for the women's game. Now, this is a very exciting time for Worthing College. The second half has kicked off. They've got a scrum here, and... They've hardly had any Play. field position. And we do Play. have a referee's mic now as well. Play. Although he's got a very loud voice. Perhaps it'd be better if he didn't. In it comes. That blind side is oh, very inviting. 
at Worthing College. Unfortunate to have had that turned over. Another knock on though, and another chance, and some fancy dancing footsteps from Lily Smith. Offload doesn't go to hand, and we'll go back for the knock on advantage. Need a score here, don't they? 100%, but I think it's getting close. It's definitely starting towards to move towards the Worthing side, I think. You're the eternal optimist, and I respect that about you. <laughs> Just a reminder that the conclusion of play, there will be the presentation. Hey. Join Burnsy live for that, hey. and then we'll have hey. the post-game debrief as well that Angus Savage will be anchoring. We will be picking the bones out of this final that yet to really spark to life, but I think it will if Worthing College can get a try. But that is a clumsy penalty. Four offside, and Exeter on the move again. Now, am I correct in thinking, it, it, is this the first time Worthing College have made the girls' ace final? It is, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think it is. Because I think, was it Hartbury won last yeah, year? Hartbury. It's always exactly. Hartbury. It's always Hartbury. They just beat Exeter in the final for the 15, so... Yeah. Yeah, they're always there or thereabouts. They have been in college age for years. And, of course, Premiership Women's Rugby Champions, Gloucester Hartbury, and Women's National League Champions, too, in the universities where... Mo Hunt and now Fordy coaching that group and just players on players on players. It's an incredible talent pathway, but it is great to see a new team in the final. I think Worthing are one to watch for the future. Oh. It's developing a lot. Got a lot of girls coming in next season, which is going to definitely make the difference. And did you say you're both both first years? Yeah, both, oh, both first years. Watch out, <laughs> but also watch out for Exeter at college. A little base of the spine on the touchline and I think there's been a big bump over there as well so we'll have a a brief break in play oh it's just got a little bit chilly isn't it right, so is this your first national school service then first time you've both been here a hundred yeah, yeah first time. I've never been there I've watched my brothers play okay yeah and who did your brothers play for Epsom College right okay so, so you've had a little feel for the tournament before then you've seen yeah. what it's all about it's definitely had a lot more girls since the last time I came for to watch my brothers. It's grown year on year on year, and there's 20% more this year than last year as well, which is which is awesome to see, not just in terms of the representation, but also in terms of the quality of the rugby as well. I mean, some of the tries we've seen here on RE1 in the girls' ace competition this year, uh, this well, just today, have been, been absolutely incredible. And earlier in the other age groups, earlier this week, we've had some bonkers games and some of the some of the finals too so in terms of the experience now you're involved in a team in a team that that's reached a final has it lived up to your expectations have you enjoyed it yeah definitely i think it's been a great experience especially for everyone out there on the pitch um yeah i think they just want to go out and play really and show what they can do just notice you two are in crocs come on <laughs> They're stylish. Yeah, yeah, you should see everyone at college walk around in their crocs what? it's like a classic in 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 actual yeah. public yeah yeah all day, every day. <laughs> Times have changed. Except from the gym, we get kicked out. Oh, you can't, no, no, you can't lift yeah. in Crocs. Tra Tra trainers only. Yeah, I've turned up in Crocs and... What, what are you, you going to lift in Crocs? They're nice and flat. Comfy, they're Got comfy. No support. <laughs> Nice and flat, yeah. yeah <laughs> just just setting your deadlift PBs in your Crocs. <laughs> Can only begin to imagine. Well, you say turn turn up to the gym. Then what do the what do the programs look like? Are you on like proper strength and conditioning and nutrition and all that? Yes. Yeah. yeah so at college we get like given a program. We've got S and C coach. Um, so he does them all forwards and backs like split. And then I think it's the same with C of E. Yeah, Quins we have um, splitting forwards and backs and. Um, we have our coach who does it and they're bringing in next season some nutrition experts and some psychology people to make sure that not only are we eating well but we're thinking well before the games. Super cool. God, can I come? Sounds yeah, amazing. Join. <laughs> Sounds absolutely amazing. Yeah, get me on some kind of emergency A levels, and I'll uh, and I'll jump in. That's interesting, actually. Is it how how does it work? Is it A levels? Is it is it B techs? What are you what are you all doing? Because it's it's sixth form, right? Yeah, I'm sure my age. I, I do. I do a double sports science B Tech, and yes, I do um, Spanish A level. As oh, well, very so, good. Yeah. Very good. Spanish in the family? Yeah, mum's Spanish. Thought so. there might be. Yeah, I don't. I do three A levels and a half. 
I okay. do business, economics, politics, and then a half A level in maths. How can you do a half A level in maths? So I take this A level at this season. Okay. Like the, so you get equivalent to half an A level. Okay, okay. It's always changing all the time. But look, as long as you're enjoying and you get where you need to be. So is that with a view of perhaps perhaps going to university and continuing your rugby there? Yeah, 100% go to a uni that's big in rugby. That would be one of the main things I'm looking for. W where are you looking? There's... Cardiff area, Loughborough, yeah, yeah. Exeter, even staying at Surrey with the Quinns aspect. Yes, yeah. um, St Mary's is another one. St yes. Mary's, yeah. For the, yeah. Is, is that where you're thinking, St uh, Mary's? Yeah. Well, oh, okay. my brother goes there as well. Oh, does he? So, yeah. Do they still play on um, on that lovely pitch that's like yeah. in the middle of campus? Yeah. Yeah, really, yeah, really my nice. My brother played on that one as well. Okay. <laughs> it's very nice. I go there for oh. my SNC. I would highly, I mean, obviously, I've got to be very neutral here, and I've got to say that all of the universities have their virtues, and you've got to go and visit as many as you can, and the place where you go on the open day, it'll feel right, but uh, but I was lucky enough to go to Loughborough, and it was the making of me. It was a brilliant place. I love Loughborough. Love the kit. I was jealous of those girls we were playing against oh, earlier. Oh, in the pink and African violet. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's very nice. But yeah, go to as many open days as you can, get, get a real feel for, for the places, but... Yeah, there are so many now, particularly with the Women's National League and the expansion. You mentioned Cardiff there, Cardiff University and Cardiff Met are involved, Hartbury are involved, Durham are involved, Exeter. I mean, it, Edinburgh is a long way away, but just to play in that Women's National League, I mean, it's an international league, three countries, you know, England, Wales and Scotland. It's super cool. And hopefully in years to come, there will be uh, expansions of that as well and just more opportunities, not just for you guys to to play a great standard of rugby, but for us to watch and enjoy a great standard of, of young women's rugby as well. Um, just to update you all, this is uh, the girls' ace final, Exeter College, 15-0 up over Worthing College. It's been a fantastic performance so far from Tilly Pulser. She's been the difference on the right edge. There's a Worthing College player who's down receiving medical treatment. We're not going to name them just yet because I don't think it's fair to do that, but the stretcher is on and hopefully we get good news soon. Play can continue, but the most important thing at the moment is uh, that player's safety is paramount. It's been an amazing day here. Day four, it flies by, you know, We're on day four of five, the boys under 18's cup has got underway. We've had this girls' ace competition. The prep schools have been playing here and it's just umpteen pitches in perpetual motion and I've been joined by these two Worthing College and Quinn's legends thanks very much for taking the time to, to have a chat with us by the way it's all right it's nice to do something new for once yeah. yeah yeah of course what about the what about the commentary and the media side of things you'll be coming for my job soon yeah I've never tried it. it's my first time so is it really yeah oh. I did it earlier on today which was definitely interesting because I didn't know what to say because I wasn't with like a friend so I was a bit more nervous okay. but it was definitely were good. Were you up here or over there? We were over there. On uh, RE2, who were you with? Jack or Wilfred? I would uh, one, love to say I know. One's, got, one's, <laughs> one's got a moustache, the other one's one hasn't. Is oh, was, okay, was, that was, uh, that, well he's, he's playing university rugby at the moment, he's playing um, for Bristol. In, um, in National South, so the one below Buck Super Rugby, but he's playing in the front row and doing a great job there. So good to have him involved. He he reduces the average age of our commentary team by quite some <laughs> different distance. So uh, myself, Jack, and Joe are all of a similar age in the in the north in the twilight of our thirties, whereas uh, whereas Wilf is still fresh faced. Well, this is good news. We Sorry. have. Mimi Clifford, sorry, Lily Smith is on two feet and she's being escorted off. And it's going to be the end of her day, the end of her tournament, but we wish her all the very best with her recovery. And we're very pleased to see her compass mentis, able to move, able to sit, able to leave the field. So good luck, Lily. That is a, a part of the game that we hate. Hopefully, the road to recovery treats her well. And hopefully, the last four or so minutes of this final, the team can do her proud and get back into this game. Tell us about Lily then. Good egg? 
Yeah, yeah definitely. She got brought into the, the center CV, of Exxon's yeah. oh, mid-season, really? and she did a great job against Saracens. Very fast individual. Okay. Yeah. She, was, she got a boot on her as well. A she? Kick and kick, yeah. Do you know, obviously, you, you're doing very well in your rugby journeys, but, you know, you've got a lot of years to go. On, One of the things go. that... Uh, that has improved massively in the women's game, but also at this level is the standard of kicking has Backward. is on such an upward curve. Right, Hold we're back. back underway. And once again, Worthing College are in trouble in and around their own try line. That's an excellent catch and a pressure. West, West. A pressure relieving run. Exeter College, they're so good over the breakdown. But now it is time for Worthing to stretch the legs. Don't want to get isolated on the far side. The offload's good. And, oh, another little knock on. And it's relatively frustrating for me watching as a neutral. For you two watching not as neutrals must be quite frustrating. Yeah, but it is part of the game, especially a big day like this. Fatigue hits in, especially with the big breaks. Adrenaline drops. It's definitely difficult and... I think we definitely knew that Exeter was going to be a harsh game. Yeah, I think they're doing well, though, considering, obviously, it's been a long day, but it's I think they're all just proud to make it to the final. You speak with remarkable maturity for young players That's because uh, at your age, I'd have been swearing and angry that my team weren't winning, but we are in a final. It's been an exceptional day's rugby and Exeter College. Worthy leaders so far. Another offload and another opportunity for Tilly Pulser this time. Worthing College. Knock on. It's another knock on. And all the while the clock ticks. Every second is a second. Exeter College are closer to victory. Exeter are bringing on some fresh legs. So hopefully we can do the same. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's managing the squad throughout the day as a center of excellence quins did beat worth not worthing um exeter a big Go! score we yeah. beat them 17 9 so wow. at least we have that on them it's important <laughs> to get that in because it's not just live streamed it's recorded on the internet forever so uh we'll we've... let them know <laughs> yeah exactly here are exeter though today has belonged to them today has belonged to tilly pulser who gets a final hat trick what a performance on the biggest of stages. She is red hot and it's 20 nil and the trophy is heading back to the southwest. I think that she is definitely my player of the match, even from a Worthing's perspective. Oh. She has been amazing. There's been no stopping her and credits to her. Yeah, definitely. I think we've struggled a lot trying to manage. And so, mirroring her is yeah, not easy, I don't so. think. Hard to mirror something that seems to move quicker than the speed of light. <laughs> she is bonkers good. Certainly. Well, they always say one to watch for the future, but she's one to watch for the right now because she is playing brilliant rugby. And her three tries are going to help Exeter College to victory here. Now, can Worthing get something? Something to celebrate before this game is done. That's Freya Corbin. Now a bit of pace from Kat Holt. Crazy background. Well, who's written Kat Holt wearing number nine? Oh, I you've got two, two number nine. nines. Yeah. Kat release! Well, admittedly, that's not my fault. No. It? Come on. <laughs> Rosie Blackburn wearing number nine. Clara Stevens on the ball. Oh, right. dumped to the ground. Big, Big hit. tackle. Everyone stacked to the left here now Ooh, for Worthing there's a College. Bit of, uh -oh. Little dart, little go, and now a little bit of pace to this play. Freya Corbin's waiting, but she's not going to get it yet because there's a burst through the middle. One more offload could do it. Here's Corbin. It will be the try for Worthing College. They need to get on with this quickly. They've got just over a minute. And that is one thing that I would like to see improve in the women's game. And you can do this. When you're in a rush, take that drop kick. What are we waiting for? This should have gone now. Yeah, definitely. Wasting time, and it's our time. Well, the conversion is good. So it's a two-score game. This will be last. Do you believe? Oh, referees just said last play. Oh, of course, there was the interruption with the time, and ours hasn't reset. Right then, last play. So some final thoughts from you two on your experience on the match. 
Or where you go? I think that with Defo starting to bring it in, but I think that it was definitely hard for us. But what's your thoughts, Lana? Yeah, I think we gained momentum just a bit too late. But I think I think way. they'll all be proud. We have been working on our like offload game. I think we've seen that just through that try there. Well, that's so. not gone. And that will be full time. Fantastic Huge congratulations, Exeter College. They defeat Worthing. They are the champions here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Exeter College 20, Worthing College 7. Kira, Slana, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. It's been a pleasure to enjoy the game with you, but the pleasure is all Exeter's. They are the Roslyn Park champs. Trinity. In recent years, two teams who've achieved so much across the age groups. This is the next generation of Trinity, of course, the under 18s. Winners at Twickenham, runners up at Twickenham, but said for every season, every age group, perpetually brilliant. But what have they got up their sleeve for this final? The famous Browns. This is the famous Blues from just down the road in Croydon. We've not seen a lot of this under-16s tournament on RE1. What we have seen, what we have heard are the whispers of brilliance from Sedbert, from Trinity from the entire tournament. It has been a hard-earned journey to be here in the dying light on day four of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Day two has seen said, but beat KCS Wimbledon 29-7, beat Epsom College 38-5. They've beaten Campion, they've beaten Queggs Wakefield, they put 50 on Bristol Free School. Trinity, they've beaten Reakin College, Kumtawi, Finbra, The Lees, Stanwell, Oundle, Bedford, George Watsons, and then Bedford again. And now it is Trinity with the first attack of this game. <laughs> Trinity. Up over halfway. Oh, the ball's been turned over and it's in set for hands. Said, but attacking with purpose. Attacking, breaching the line. Oh, tap tackle saves the day. But for how long? The backdoor offload, a swinging arm around the back of the head. And said, but wanting to go to work. They've got a three on two on the outside. Need to execute. Instead, they've gone on their own. Big defence required, great strength, how's he gone through? Trinity defenders for company, but still finding the house. It's set for five, Trinity nil. Oh, 
the kick to match, outstanding. Set for seven, Trinity nil. Now, neither of these teams have been on either of the RE pitches today. So, unfortunately, not got a team sheet for either, but we've sent out as many people as we can to try and rustle something up because these players deserve the opportunity to be shouted out for moments of brilliance like that. Said for seven, That's Trinity cool. nil. Two minutes gone in this boys under 16 final. Trinity. Excellent tackle. Referee and his AR say the ball's flat. Round row. Of course, this is a final, so there are ARs as well. Flags and kits and all, and now half a gap. Said for defending so well when it looks like their line's been breached, but Trinity Even now. showing signs here. This is quick, sharp rugby from the Croydon boys. Now a little dart, now a little kick, now a little foot race. Brilliantly covered. That is absolutely outstanding. When you roll the dice like that, it's all or nothing. And on that occasion, it's nothing for Trinity. And a fantastic offload to take the defender out. The foot race is on. This is a huge moment. It's a huge moment. It's going Sepa's way. It's going Sepa's way. It's a stunning score. And breathe. Well, that is quite brilliant, not just to finish the try, but also to win the foot race and be able to go under the sticks and convert your own try. And Trinity have barely put a foot wrong, but find themselves two scores down. Oh, he looked second favorite here, but that little change of direction. And it's whoever can keep their top speed up for the longest. And it is the man in brown. Four minutes gone, 14-0. Trinity need a score. Oh, they might get one here. Sweeper called into action. Support runners coming through. Oh, wow. The ball just not going to hand, but Trinity can't switch off here. Or Sedba will punish them. Oh, Sedba will punish them. They cannot bring down this brown jersey spinning top. Lee Blue has across. Lee Blue. So great to see the support around the grounds as well. Players, fans, parents, they're all here. Said, but trying to get in behind. The offload's good. It's a third try. And they're saving their best performance of the competition for last. Three shots fired, three tries, all under the poles. Play, James. And as the sun sets on pitch RE1, the sun seemingly setting on Trinity's hopes of lifting this under-16 cup. Said, but absolutely flawless. that offload there if you commit to a double tackle then a you have to make it and b you have to wrap up the ball Trinity can't get a touch. Yeah. Here's the conversion. And the conversion is unsuccessful that this is absolutely outstanding from said but straight from the kickoff
Well, that's been taken, though, by Trinity. Desperately needs something before half-time. Does well to hold on to that ball. And now Trinity trying to feed the big man. Oh, he's quick as well. But so is the Sedba defence. This one really needs to bounce get him out, get him out. for the Croydon boys. Italian to touch. That should take us through to half-time. Sedba, sensational. Trinity with a mountain to climb. The half-time whistle goes in the under-16s final. Sedba 26, Trinity nil. Away we go then. It is now or never for Trinity because Sedba are simply scintillating. Four tries in the first half. It's not just how sharp they are in attack, it's how good they are in defence. They are totally stifling this Trinity team. And they're away again. James Moore wearing number eight. Just can't bring the man down there at two, three. Trinity defenders, and now some explosion up the right hand side. A last ditch tackle. Ben Dewsbury stifled, and he stayed down, clutching his leg. And that means Trinity can come away instead. But currently, a couple of players down. Big tackle coming in. Adam Jacks wins the penalty. And my goodness me, this Sedba team. They are bang up for it in this under-16s final. Another try would surely put the final nail in if it wasn't there already. And there it is, the race round the outside. Harry Hawkins. 31-0 in a final against a team of this calibre. And another trophy is heading to the north. <laughs> Lovely kick as well. <laughs> Slotted through the uprights. Adam Jacks on kicking duty. That was Will Bastin wearing nine, feeding Harry Hawkins. Now for Trinity, it's all about rescuing something, anything. 
Well, that's taken. Harry Epson. He's going to have a go himself, and this looks promising. Strength takes him up over the halfway. Oh, it's just one of those days for Trinity, isn't it? Earlier in the competition, on another day. No stick, but not today. It is said, but everything they touch turns to gold. That's Chris Kirby. We're in number seven. We're in number 14 is Nico Jones. And Nico Jones. Well, they can't stop scoring. The happiest man in all of Roslyn Park are there applauding this brilliant team in brown. And just a reminder that in the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens, if a team hit 50, the game is done. And if Sedba hit 50 in a final, well, that would be quite astonishing. And they're two tries away. They've got three and a half minutes to do it. This has been an absolute dismantling of Trinity Croydon. Chris Kirby, Nico Jones linking up. Look at this strength from Jones. He's in the 22. Gets rid of the one defender. And drags the other over the line with him. Clock ticks up to 11 minutes. High, hanging restart. Jones gives chase. Penalty, said, but a little bit too keen. Harry Webson again, we're in number 19. Max Anderson. With some good strength from Caden Watson. Oh, it's a good offload from Watson. And then just slung out wide. Ben Beadle can try and get it. Referee's not spotted anything there apart from that late little knock on. And this is a tough gig for Trinity now. They know the game's gone. They need to play till the end. They need to try and restore some pride in this performance. Said, but wow. Five, ten. Bastin puts it in, solid scrum Five, platform. <laughs> Trinity offside at the scrum. Oh, Bastin weaving through. Now the cavalry arrives. Oh, turnover. Good. Webson out there to Beadle. Beadle finds Young. Now Watson on the flank. Max Anderson loses that one. Oh, it's going to be trouble here. And a yellow card for Will Baston. Cynical. Said, but could well end this final with six, but they will end this final as champions. Oh, that is a big shot that's gone in, but the clear out matches it, and Max Anderson gets a try in the under 16s final. Less than a minute to go. But thankfully, it's not going to be a shutout. But it is set for 38, Trinity 7. Fumble once, then twice. Crouch. And the clock has gone Five. red. And we are seconds away from another trophy heading to set, but. Crouch. 
Can Trinity finish with a flourish? A little wag of the tail. They've got a penalty. Max Anderson gets the moving. Harry Webson continues moving it out to the big man on the edge who steps back in. Does Watson? It's a little quicker. Should score. Have to score, surely. There's Watson. Great tackle. Such desire from Seth, but told to leave it. And the last action will be a Trinity try. Ben Beadle over in the corner. Fifty points shared in this final. Great entertainment, but said, but such high class, so clinical in the first half. It was done and dusted before the half-time whistle went. Once again, Roslyn Park is brown. Said for the Howden National Schools, Roslyn Park Sevens and the 16s champions. A brilliant couple of days from this brilliant team. And they've defeated Trinity Croydon, 38-12. Tell you what, I'm quite excited about you guys. You know, the senior rugby, you, know, you guys just have that. You work hard, you've earned the right to enjoy today. Well done, every single one of you have that. Great season, love the season, put on the days. Yeah, well, that was gone. We set it early, yeah, it's lovely.
special one incoming. Another trophy up for grabs in the boys under 16s. It is Oakham School versus Stowe School. Oakham in the red and black. Stowe taking a knee, just out of shot in the hoops. Joining us for this one. Stowe School's head of junior rugby, Pete White. Must be a, a lovely little buzz about this. What an achievement for not just your young men, but the young men the other side of the halfway line as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, the boys have done a, an outstanding um, tournament. Um, it's just a such a tough tournament to win. You know, you, you end up going through the first day and then into the second day, and I think you end up playing around 10 games to win. Um, Crazy. So, uh, it's a tough gig, but the boys have done outstanding. They've had some close games through today, so fingers crossed we can get over the line today. Win or lose today, are they back in school tomorrow? Of course. Of course, it is there a tough gig playing this kind Go of elite rugby. They are up against it, against Oakham School. Same rules apply, two seven-minute halves between these teams and glory. Oakham going to kick us off. They have beaten Bloxham. They squeeze past Quags Wakefield 28-26. Lost to George Watsons. Beat us called Gavin Riederwein and Warwick. It's not been perfect, but all that will be forgotten if they win this final against Stowe, who received the kickoff. Coming off the back of a 1917 win against Northampton School for boys. And a 26-12 against RGS Guildford. They were nilled by KCS. Wimbledon that got them into this tournament. Backward. But it looks like it has been a brilliant fit. Now the fly hat forward has been gathered. It's going to be a try for Oakham. And Will Church goes in to give him the lead. Sometimes in a final, you need a little bit of luck. And when you get it, you need to take advantage of it. And Will Church gets the opening score for Oakham. Now I've got to explain the rules to you here because you are here as a representative of Stowe and nobody is going to be upset with you for extolling the virtues of your brilliant school and your brilliant programme. But if Oakham do something great, no one's going to be upset with you for saying it is great. Of course, great start by Oakham there. Just uh, Woody looking to go on the outside, which he's done so well throughout the day and loses the ball in contact and that's all it takes sometimes. It is a brutal game. You need ambition, you need luck and that from Will Church had both. That was Woody Hamilton Hurst there for Stowe. Plenty of opportunity for him to get back in the game. Oh, that is a proper contest at the restart. And that is one of the most physical aspects of this game of sevens now, those contestable restarts. It is a wild old bun fight, isn't it? Just another set piece. As soon as you score, you need to try and get the ball back again. Otherwise, you could be defending for the next two or three minutes. So great kick off there by Oakham and uh, Stowe have got a chance. Second attack of the game off a set piece, here we go. Off the top, and Oakham trying to get in that passing channel. They look to be a high hand there, but the referee... Oh, then God. awarding the penalty to Oakham. And they have gone quickly. They don't want to take the chance of the line-up. Ezra Smart wearing 10 for them, and then the big ball to the quick man. That's Rudy Bannister Emmins. He's knocked it on, knocked on one way, then the other. Will Catley, uh, one of the under-15s, you brought some young players in this Stowe group. Yeah, there's four of um, the under-15s playing in this group, um, Will Catley being one of those. Unfortunately, another one, Charlie King, is injured and he's unfortunately not involved. But um, yeah, another great experience for these boys. Obviously, they'll have another shot next year. Well, regardless of what happens, that other shot next year is going to be very Rouse! exciting because they'll either be coming Five. as champions with a target on their Six. back or wanting to go one better. I mean, I certainly heard the referee call the scrum in there. Oh, here we go. Big turn of pace and the strength to get out of it as well. Will Catley playing a year down. Up, 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 down, left, right. How is 15 up from 16? <laughs> Another breakdown penalty, though. <laughs> oh, and being March 10. And Bring a yellow card. yellow card. Well, somebody 
didn't put any ketchup on the referee's chips at lunchtime because he is not taking any messing here. And Stowe, five points down, one player down in this boys' final. There's an overlap here, and Oakham are going to be in for try number two. Rudy Bannister Emmons <laughs> dots it down, and immediately Stowe down a man and down another score. Trouble here for the Stowe boys, elation for the Oakham boys. James Flint with the conversion. Left peg, a little bit stabby, and it remains 10 0. Let's have another look at this try, then switch back the other way. There's always going to be space when the opposition are down to six. It's just a case of exploiting it. They were able to do so there. Sam McDermott onto that breakdown. Man down there, probably don't need to hit that one. So obviously, Stowe rugby now, but in terms of your rugby journey, were you ever here as a player at the National School Sevens? I was, yeah. Um, I was here with Seb back in, showing my age now, back in 2006 or seven. OK, still uh, a lot younger than me, but that's fine. So, well, do you know what? You were stood up here for... That said, the victory before this, they have been doing it like that for a long time. It's a remarkable place to experience rugby, isn't it? Yeah, it is, to be fair, and uh, they breed some good players. Well, um, like you say, they've had very, very good success in this tournament Dead. across all, all age groups as well, so it's always good to uh, keep an eye on their successes over the years. Not to advertise other tournaments whilst we're here at the biggest sevens tournament in the world, but following this, on Sunday and Monday, it's the said for tens as well, which uh, will also be live streamed. And I urge you, if you're enjoying this, to watch that too, because that is an absolutely brilliant tournament. And Oakham are putting on a brilliant performance here. They've gone quickly from the tap penalty. Will Church gets his second try in the same corner as his first. And Oakham take a 15 0 lead. Never an opportunity to switch off in sevens, unfortunately. That's what we just did there, and uh, a great try. Tough conversion on the left peg. Decent strike, but it misses. A minute to go until half-time. Did you ever play in the Super 10s? I did play in it one year, and one then year. I think the, the other year it got called off due to the weather, which is quite popular up there. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I did play in the 10s in the up it's there. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? It's a great it? day, yeah. It's a great, it's a great weekend. And, of course, for a lot of people, myself included, you get to experience said, but as a place for the first time, and it is a picturesque paradise, but I wouldn't fancy running up and down those hills that you guys like to frequent so much. Oh, still have let that bounce, and just about recovered it. They need to try and get something now before half-time. If they can get a score, they can have some hope, because at the moment it is all at Oakham. We're playing really good cup final rugby. Nearly butterfingered, but well gathered. Tackle release! <laughs> no left back kick high. Another under 15 there, said there. Under 15 captain this year, took the boys to the uh, national under 15 semi final. Um, unfortunately, missed out to NSB. Um, but he's an outstanding player and one to look out for as well. Inside ball's a good one. Good line run as well, but the last ditch tackle is there. <laughs> Going off their feet now, and Oakham giving away penalties. Stowe looking to inject some pace into this game. Oh, but picked off and then knocked on. And that should take us through to half time. A half that has belonged to Oakham. Three tries, they've not managed to convert any of them, which means that Oakham School leads Stowe by 15 points to nil.
Seven minutes, boys, that's it. Oakham 15, Stowe School nil. This under 16's final. Let's wheel out some rugby cliches. The next score is absolutely massive, and Oakham taking that well. No stick. Marcus no Southall from the restart and two passes, and Oakham away. The offload brilliant. Suggestion of a forward pass. Referee disagrees. That's a good chase back. Oh, and a great pilfer. Stowe on the ball. <laughs> Was that Noah sniffing around? Our referee doesn't like it. I think he's unlucky there. Another whipped pass off the right hand. This last stitch tackling for Stowe. Good. You were held to ground. You didn't release the ball. Oh, that one's gone forward. Eagle-eyed referee and his assistants spotting that one. Your team just not able to build any momentum at the moment, are they? No, it literally looks like we're getting to the point we're just forcing it a little bit. Um, getting a pass over the top, was it on to pull out and go back the other way? Um, big, big six minutes coming up here. Wow! Big six minutes indeed, it begins with this set scrum. Penalty advantage. Oh. No, come on it. That the penalty Over. won't last for long. And that is a kick into space. This is serious gas on the way back. But it's a tough ball to gather, and he gets it the second bite. Potential game changer. That Woody Hamilton Hurst rescuing Stowe. Oh, potential high tackle. That'll be called in by the AR. The referee deciding to play on instead. It's a little bit better from Stowe. Where's the speed going to come from? Oh, it's going to be intercepted. Oakham just getting themselves in the passing channel. And now they've got space to run into. That's been left behind by Archie Jelly. And now turned. They've got a two on one here. This needs to be a good pass. It is a good pass. It releases the speed, but the cover tackle comes across. Couple of 15s linking up for Stowe. Hands on the ball and a good turnover. Now Oakham. Oh, this is the potential game breaker. Does he back himself? Oh, stops and goes and gets away. James Flint gives him the eyes. Exceptional. What a moment. And great to see the smiles on the faces of the referees and the people who've been involved today just in the bar enjoying that brilliant try, that brilliant time's performance. Off. Oh, the time's off. There's a conversation to be had here. Great effort by Noah to track back there. Let's listen into this. Alex, have you got anything from me? That one there. Don't worry about it. Right, thank you. Five stands, right? Five stands. Five stands. Oh. Sure. Five stands. I thought we were going to have some drama. Harsh, but fair. Well, interestingly, it's still a, a three-score game. 20 points to nil. I think your rugby cliche of the next try yeah. could be 
the one. Let's try and see what the referee was, of the assistant referee, was picking up there. It's. Oh, okay. Nothing caught my eye. Oh, good chase. And the defensive line speed that time from Marcus Southwell. Stoke pinned inside their own 22. Oakham off their feet. Perhaps Stoke have gone the wrong way there, but it's not the wrong way if you can get away from the would-be tacklers. Oh, brilliant cover defence. We're in number six over there, McKinley Jones. And huge credit to Oakham. This has been an excellent cup final performance. And they've got the throw in at the line out. Come in close, come in. Final come in. few minutes of the final game on day four. That's not straight. Oh, the cool breeze just picking up the end of what has been an absolutely beautiful day for Sevens. And you were here last year, right? Oh, wow! Well, the mud bath. Bye. Luckily, we actually played the day before okay. in the Vars and then um, saw the weather the next day. Oh, my goodness. Well, the, the under-18 boys final at the end of Friday, by the end of it, you couldn't tell who was playing who. It was. Uh, I think mean, there's, there's an interesting photo on the website, actually, of Harrow before the game. You sure you it was Harrow? can't even tell. Yeah, luckily, <laughs> I had to look close at the badge. But I mean, they still managed to produce a brilliant final, and it was dramatic, and it was high quality. But yeah, it looked very, very different to this, put it that way. Very much so, and I think we might be good for the weather for the uh, next couple of days. So, Well, crossed. don't curse it, but well, I hope at least so. tomorrow. I do well, hope so, because it's been a brilliant tournament. Five. And now this one Six. is done and dusted. It's going to be an Oakham victory, but can Stowe get something? Five. <laughs> Another penalty. I'll tell you what, the... Uh, the ice cream van is making his way off site and he's going very slowly. That's probably he's made enough money. He's today. weighed down by all tomorrow. the cash <laughs> that he has taken in the sunshine today. Right then, Stowe, last chance to attack, last chance to get over the whitewash in what has been a final that hopefully in the future they'll remember the experience of. But it has been all about Oakham, deserved winners. Four tries to zero. Crossbar challenge? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe not. The full time whistle goes. The subs bench empties. And the black and red of Oakham have defeated Stowe 20 points to nil. An excellent victory for them. They will leave with a trophy. They will take that north. And a disappointing end for Stowe. A brilliant end for Oakham. The full time score Oakham 20, Stowe School nil.
Welcome to the presentation stage here at the Howden Rossin Park National Schools Sevens. Good evening to all of you here while the sun goes down, but I'm sure you'll agree the quality, the intensity and the passion in the rugby has done anything but. Good evening to the global audience who are tuning in through Next Gen and the live stream and it is our final presentation. Now across this biggest, this best National School Sevens competition on the planet. Nearly 15,000 players take to the blades of grass across the week. There's 27 fields in action. However, very, very few get the privilege of standing where I stand today. And when you get here, you have fully earned it. Be you a winner, be you a runner-up, be you to even make it to a final. The sheer volume of games you play and the victories that you accrue make you worthy. So I would love you to put it together for both of our finalists who put on a show for us just there. Yeah. 
as we know, you come to a final, you've got two great teams, but unfortunately, one must prevail. However, to this school here, this school with a rich rugby heritage that have been in many, many finals across the years, I'm sure having watched you out there today, it isn't going to be the last. And we congratulate you, we celebrate you. I'd love you to give it up for the runners up of the under 16 plate finals. Stowe School, please. One more time for your 16s plate, runners up, Stowe! And so to our victors and to a bit of silverware, and it's been a pretty good week for this famous rugby school. They've reached finals in years gone by. They've lifted trophies in the 15s category, and these boys have followed in the footsteps of their girls earlier in the week. Our title sponsor this year is Howden. We have Billy and Will on hand to hand out the gong and celebrate a team who've made it to a final. They've triumphed to a final, and they are gonna leave with silverware from one of the greatest seven tournaments in the world. This is a moment to be cherished. These are boys to to celebrate and congratulate, I give to your under 16 plate champions, Oakham! And now for Billy and Will of Howden, our title sponsor for the tournament to present the plate. And present to the boys, and I give to you your plate champions in the under 16 Colts, Oakham! All right, everybody, so that is the final trophies of day four of the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens awarded. There's one more day to go, and what a day it is with the under-18 Boys Cup final. Just one of the many things to look forward to in day five, but we are going to tee you up very nicely with that, with a review of today's action and a preview of the action to come with the review show. Day four. 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 Of the boys. Hey.
Sevens is so much fun. Gives people opportunities to run and you show your you know, showcase your skills. Brilliant day. Last year I remember it being so wet. We sort of fly the flag and increase the profile. It's great for the game. And look, sevens is it's easier to follow for somebody who's never seen rugby before. So it's a great way to introduce someone to the sport. And if you want to, if you're a player as well, like you play sevens, a bit less contact, played in the sun, it's probably a bit more enjoyable than the 15s game. Under 16 girls champions of the plate. It's Bryn Kellenock Comprehensive School. Well done, girls. Rosson Park National School Sevens Review Show. It's day four and what a day it's been, Dave. I'm giddy. Giddy with excitement, giddy with exhaustion. Um, just just heady at, at what has been an unbelievable day. We've been on RE1 on the, on the luxury scaffold tower. It has been something else today. All of the hype, all of the build up, all of the things that we hoped it would be, it was, and it was pretty much immediately as well. I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to talk about my game of the day because I've got theatre tickets, it. so I'm out of here soon. Um, Beach and Cliff against Norwich. Bernsey? Boom. <laughs> Boom. Who is it, Siri? No, um, Snary. Snary. Yes. Snary with the intercept, Snary with the intercept of the human at the end. Fox office stuff, right, yeah. down, right down to the wire. Um, rewind the live stream and watch that game shout out to james cherry as well former norwich schoolboy, an old teammate of freddie stewart when they had a bit of a golden generation there he was watching hopefully hundreds of thousands were to give you um, an idea of what happened norwich interception try snary under the poles they then take a 14 nil lead they lead at half time beach and cliff fire back they take the lead and then there's another scramble it becomes 28 24 then beach and cliff right up this flank where we're stood here they are in at the corner toby it was lock. lock wasn't it toby lock big giant winger on the edge then the chase back under the ball over the line they win the game when it's done and dusted 28 points to 24 and it was just a group game yes but just a group game. but that, that is, is the, the difference that's the difference it's because the difference. beach and cliff haven't made day two and norwich have and that was the moment it was decided before 11 o'clock this morning i remember walking down along this path you almost jumped off the scaffold <laughs> to come and tell me about how good it was it was absolutely brilliant listen it's been amazing for it from top to we've had five different competitions mm. happening today um i went for a little wonder early on to go and find out about the uh, prep schools competition that had okay. been going on because bernsey we spoke yesterday Today about how special that is so I went to go and catch up with a few of them and uh, they had some pretty good fun things to say up on the Asda pitches look it's great um, how many teams over a thousand teams coming down um, I think we obviously me and Tyler I'm playing Tyler's got England camp I'm a bit injured so but we, we wouldn't want to miss for a thing it's great we enjoy it last year was great fun um, it's nicer weather this year as well so I can't complain <laughs> um, it's been amazing um, this is my third year here at Royalston Park and every year it's great um, it's a great tournament you can wander around look at other teams playing um, yeah, we've been unfortunate in our group, the teams that we're playing, um, but even so, we're, we're still uh, learning from the experience and we're getting better as the games go on. I think the thing that's impressed us most as, as parents is the empathy that the boys have for one another, the way they support one another, and that's really the ethos of the team. And the coaches really stand back and let the boys make their own decisions and come to their own conclusions and I think it's just such a positive environment. 
think it's a bit of both pressure and pride. Like for both of us, we're both first years, so it's our first time being here, first time like getting to the top, which is really good. But it definitely comes with like walk around, we're holding holding the acorn, but then sometimes we got to live up to the acorns for representation. Yeah, about uh, I think 1968 or 67, I played in the Ascol Abermard side, which won the prep school sevens. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Have you got any memories of that? Yeah, I do have memories about it. Um, particularly the final. My brother got injured and I was out on the wing and he had to go from fly half out on the wing and poor boy, he couldn't run at all. But we had, I think it was Papawick or what was the name of that? No, oh, some bloody English school, anyhow. Yeah, it's really fun. It's a great atmosphere. Over, if you go over there to the shops, you have good fun doing all the challenges and stuff. Watching all the older boys play, it's, it's looks cool to be, hopefully, play like them one day. And who's your sort of idol in a rugby sense? Uh, or not in a rugby, or not in a rugby sense? Uh, Joe Marler. Yeah. Yeah. Follow me on her. Oh. Oh. Three, two, one, go, go Thomas! Thomas! Go, go, go. So some amazing stuff from oh, up Sorry there to interrupt you, mate. Where's, where's Wilf Kemsley and Jack Zorab? Slackers. Absolute slackers. They heard you had theatre tickets we, and they thought we'll get out early. We had to do I, extra I, games. I own a human as well, yeah, who yeah. I'm not looking after at home. And I own theatre tickets. I'm off to London's fabulous West End tonight. What's... Wilf, he's Gen Z, isn't he? Oh, he's oh, Gen Z. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a nice yeah. night off, Work Wilf. Ethic. Have All a best, nice mate. night off, Wilf. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor bloke, poor bloke, getting dragged over coals here. Hold uh, on, no, 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 because if he was here, he'd have the right to reply, but he loses that by all abandoning right, all the right. let, let's get, let's get <laughs> on to the ruggers, because we've got, yeah, yeah. we got a sweet clip lined up. Yeah, we? we have <laughs> got an amazing <laughs> clip, David. It's an amazing clip of you, because we've got you reacting to that spectacular try saver that we've just been talking about. Hey, I'm there as well. Clip. Yeah, Joe's there I'm as there well. as well. <laughs> Sorry, Bersie, you were very excited as well. Thank you. Can I let you in on a little secret? I think the reason that I reacted quite like that is because I'd already committed to it being a try. There was no way, particularly because Toby Locke had had a brilliant game. He's such a good player. He'd already scored. I thought there's no way he's not doing this and Beach and Cliff are going to pinch it. But this is why we love it. Are we playing it? Are we going to play it? <laughs> We're running it now and we've got Dave all over the screen. So <laughs> happy with rugby life. This is what the Rosson Park National School Sevens is all about, though, isn't it? It's these moments that make it for mm -hmm. absolutely everyone. And we've seen some spectacular moments here. And Dave, you know, you've got to shoot off in a second. So mm -hmm. let's have a look at these finals. Let's have a look at, first of all, that girls ace final. Yeah. The first time, I've got it here, the first time since 2018 that Hartbury College didn't win the girls ace. Yeah. First time ever. The first time since 2012 before it was even an ace competition that Harbury College haven't won it, which basically, as Burnsy says, makes it the first time ever that Harbury College have not won the ace competition. Incredible. Well, that is that is evolution. And we spoke about it yesterday, didn't we? How important it is, this ace competition. They're all linked in with the Premiership rugby teams. There's the Women's National League pathway, Premiership Women's Rugby pathway. We had um, the girls. We had Kira and Solana, who came to join me from Worthing College. One of them is in the... Kira is in the, the Harlequin Centre of Excellence. And, and I think it's only it's only a little touch but it's a nice touch so the Oaklands College played in the Saracens kit today and the uh, uh, the girls who made the final from Worthing they played in the Harlequins kit just to show that their their value is there Hartbury will always be a rugby powerhouse but to see a few more arriving in in terms of Worthing in terms of Exeter who've been there or thereabouts and they've missed out quite a few times to Hartbury as well so to see them lift that trophy and they they were absolutely outstanding in that final too and also a bit of revenge for Exeter College, who lost to Hartbury last yes. week at Twickenham. And, knowledge bomb, two girls from the Kingsbridge team that won the under 16s last year in the Exeter College team that was victorious today. Love to see it. This boy does run his at research. Me, run this at me with the knowledge. This boy does his research. <laughs> run at me with the knowledge. And a, a word also on Charlotte Rayford, who, uh, who won the Limitless Player of the Tournament. An absolutely fantastic performance. <laughs> absolutely bonkers. And what did we say yesterday? Of all the tournaments, maybe it's the, it's the women's side of the competition, the ace side of the competition, where we're going to see the future star, and maybe we've seen her. We certainly might have done. We've got some, uh, we've got some electric scooters on the field behind us. Uh, I think we're seeing a little bit of I'm celebration not, not, for the Oakham sure under 16. No. I'm, not, I'm not sure that's paying due deference. 
to the hallowed, hallowed turf, the yeah. hallowed blades of grass of RE1. Do you know what? They they won the under 16 plate. They don't care now. Should we get happy. someone in? Hold that. Uh, <laughs> So get, this get, is this get is Oakham. Get the scooter boy. Well, Dave goes to go chat to that, that, this is Oakham, who of course won the uh, the boys under 16 plate 20 nil against Stowe in the final. A fantastic performance. And of course, Oakham, a, a school with a storied history. And Dave Rogers, like a professional media man that he is, has managed to grab an interview. It's only Will Church the skipper. Will Church the skipper. Will, I tell you what, if you've got a spare hand, hold on to that. Will, talk to me about that final. A fantastic final performance. Um, yeah, to lose in the group day two versus George Watson to come back, play that, play almost as if we hadn't played all day in the final. Pretty good. Four tries on top. Not bad not at bad. all. Yeah, not, not bad, bad at all. You've added to the legacy. I mean, Oakham's got a huge legacy. Yeah. You boys have added to that. How does that make you feel? Really good to be the first team at Oakham to lift silverware at Watson. Feels good. Really good. It certainly does. And a word on these boys behind you, your teammates. They've, they've, they've done you proud. Yeah, I couldn't ask for much more, really. You yeah. certainly can. You certainly can. Well, listen, we've got names like Alex Goode. Who else have we had from Oakham? I've drawn a blank. <laughs> Lewis Jelly. Moody, Hamish Emma Watson. Watson. Yeah. My word, you've, you guys, you guys are the next on that list. Yeah. This, is, this is a big moment in Oakham history. Yeah, yeah, it feels really good. <laughs> Fantastic. We are so pleased to have you along. Yeah, listen, thank you for having us. Stay for a second, because I want to get you. I want to get your opinion. We're going to move on to the under 16 cup competition that was won by Sedba, okay. and I'm sure that you boys, sort of, you caught a bit of their performances yeah, through, through the, the day. Tell me, tell me about that under 16 cup as well. What, what was your opinion on that? Yeah, I thought really good standard, really high level. Would have been nice to be in it ourselves, but sometimes just not how it works, is it? Hey, silverware is silverware, yeah, mate. Take exactly. it, take it. I never won a thing in my time. Yeah. Right, go and enjoy yourselves. Cheers. We're going to get you. Dave back on. Cheers, lads. Thank you so much for that one. Congratulations. Oh, just a, a little bit of throwing you under the bus for live telly there, mate. I hope you don't mind, but great to hear from him. Um, Burnsy was talking about the makings of the mullet earlier in the day, and he's... Uh, He's getting there, isn't he, young Churchy? It's not bad. It's not a bad one. There's been some pretty decent mullets out there. Um, that is Oakham, who won the plate. Let's talk a little bit about Sedba, who won that under-16 boys competition, the under-16 boys cup. The Sedba machine rolls on. Um, yeah, yeah, it does. So we've had all the under-18s here today, and we've had some brilliant... Uh, we've had some brilliant games but not all... separate actually they put on the their under 18s were involved in the worst game of rugby I've ever commentated on <laughs> yeah, you had Rich from Exeter up with you on comms yeah, didn't they, you their group game against Blundells that should be deleted from rugby <laughs> records for all eternity <laughs> and I, th I think that's that's unanimous amongst the coaches as well having having shared that with them however and the 16s, yeah, they, 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 they delivered some joy. All the whispers around have been, we've been watching all the under 18s and everyone's been saying, oh, have you seen what's going on in the 16s and the outside pitch, the standard, the standard, the standard, it's amazing, the games, this, that and the other. And then Sedba come here on RE1 and just sweep everyone and everything. I don't know if it was because they were on the big pitch or in front of the crowds or whatever, but was it 38-12? And that was after Trinity got into it at the end. And you know, Trinity, the, in recent years, whether it's been 16s, 18s, they've had a brilliant group of players and to get to the finals, incredible achievement. How, oh, go on. I mean, yeah, so they beat Trinity, beat Trinity in the final. I actually missed the final because I was doing some other presentations, but the calibre team that they swept along the way they did a demolition job on Epsom, who I was talking about definitely, and everyone was talking about. I think they beat KCS on the way. They're a pretty handy outfit. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, they absolutely rinsed it, didn't yeah. they? And they won the under 14s as an age group. So, Angus, your turn to impart a bit of historical knowledge here. Has no, anyone ever won the under 14, under 16? And looking into the future, the under 18s and nobody has ever done all three nobody has ever done all three Joe I say a lot of things I really hope they're true because otherwise otherwise I'm looking very silly but I'm pretty confident on that um, listen we are go we've been speaking about you know the quality of rugby and the, the fact that some of the future legends of the sport are going to come through we spoke to Sam Warburton yesterday and we've uh, pulled it up today because Sam was talking about his time playing here at the Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens and the standard that he has seen and how impressed he is I played there 21 years ago and I came back then in my young 20s with various people. I couldn't believe how much it grown then. That was 10 years and now it's a phenomenal event. Um, it's like I've been come down here now for various people for the last three years. You're lucky if, you get, if we caught some good weather this year, but it's brilliant to see in so many schools playing against each other who would never normally play against each other because of obviously geographical reasons. So it's a brilliant tournament. So many 
of the, the top players that you're watching now in the Six Nations at the home age would have played in this tournament, you know? So, uh, yeah, superb tournament, brilliantly organised and uh, a nice event for everybody to connect and play rugby together. Well, Sam Warburton's thoughts there. You love a star, don't you? You love a star. This is the yeah. look at me, I'm Angus Savage of Next Gen 15 with? show. Who are you better mates with? Yeah. Sam Warburton or, or Jamie, Jamie Redknapp. Redknapp? Who's your better mate? Yeah. Oh, I can't pass up on my good mate Jamie. You know, he's, oh. coming, he's coming around for dinner. Sam will be devastated. Do you know, actually, Jamie Redknapp, my sister texted me last night and said that he sponsored her in the London Marathon. So we were all pals, I just didn't know it. It's, you know, he's, he's clearly it part of the It's a really furniture. strange and convoluted story there that I don't <laughs> think we should, get, we should get into. I'm looking forward to who you got lined up to Tomorrow, what are we looking at? Kanye? Bruce Willis? Kim yeah. I, sh I should imagine at least one of, one of them will be down. It's, yeah, it's, she's closing it. the comp. <laughs> They're all coming along tomorrow. They're all coming along tomorrow. What is coming along tomorrow is the conclusion of the Under 18s Cup in both the boys and the girls. And I've I've got sort of noted down here those teams that have got to, uh, to the knockout stage. I'm just going to run you through this boys under 18 list. Harrow, Dulwich College, Cranley, Ipswich, Bromsgrove, Radley College, Whitgift, Gordons, Sedbury. Wellington College, Millfield and Kirkham Grammar. That is a who's who of schools rugby royalty. Yes. What are we thinking? I'm thinking that if you asked me to say, I would throw a dart in a board and it would give me a better chance of predicting who is going to win that competition. Why have you got Gordon circled on your sheet? <laughs> I'll tell you Old what. Old eagle eye Joe Burns over there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Jack Zorab fancies Gordon's as his dark horse for the tournament. Jack's our event here, so here's yeah, where exactly. it's worthless, okay? If, if you ain't Jack's on the review right. show, you were uh, don't count on the review <laughs> show. Jack, so uh, you're saying all we have to do is circle a word on a piece of paper and we can chop out early, is that...? On the other hand, you do get stitched up because we hold you firm to yes, that word yeah, that's been yeah, circled. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tough gig. But listen, that the quality yeah, there, yeah. I think, is what is what we're thinking about of just, we are in for a spectacular day of rugby. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty much throw a dart at that that group of names and you probably might just get a winner um kirkham i haven't seen play today i haven't seen you, gordon's you picked them earlier on when you're on the watt bike um, five or six k at that point yeah. it was going well but the one thing i do know is that they dusted brighton college and brighton college looked super slick yeah. here earlier so if that's anything to go by then it's a pretty good pick from where i'm standing day two is different though isn't it Day two is different gravy. It's, it's as much about fit bodies as it is anything else. Looking at the girls' competition, Burns, I wanted to ask you about this because um, Canada's for the love of the game have progressed through to, to the knockouts. And I know that you had a word with them. They seem like an awesome bunch. Mate, they haven't progressed to the knockouts. They played for one four and they got a points difference of plus 162. <laughs> I mean, they've hopped across the pond and they've dominated. So, and they were a late entry. So they came here on tour. This is a team from Canada, which collates a lot of different Canadian women from uh, girls from different schools and teams I think that's I think that's the gist of it and they came over for a 15s tour they realized this was going on they spoke to uh, well an old an old colleague an old buddy of mine Mike Schmid big Schmidty and uh, they got as a late a entry into the competition and they're absolutely romping it they've yeah as I said undefeated and they are they're mainly here to spread the words in Canada. They want people tuning in from Canada. They want their girls to see how big rugby can be in a country. It's pretty big in Canada, but it's not as big as it is here. And I just absolutely love it. They've got all the stash, they've got all the vibes. And yeah, I don't know. Are we going to have a second international yeah, winner in one question. week? But this time from North America. Well, we've got some Canadian, Canadian, Canadian rock stars uh, playing in Premiership Women's Rugby, haven't we? As Joe alluded to, massive sport over there. They have been at the top of the world game for, for many, many years. A little dip now, but we're only a few players away from the next generation coming through. And a win here would be absolutely massive. Question, how are you going to get the trophy back after a year if they take it all the way over to Canada, they're going to have to return. Sounds like we're all going to have to go on tour to yes, Canada. Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm in. Cor correct. correct answer. <laughs> they not having any of this, we've got to invite them. We've got to go there. Yes. Let's bring the let's bring Alden Ross and Park National School Sevens on tour. Actually, it's going to be on tour. It's going to be on tour back to the home of the Ross and Park National School Sevens, the Rock for the Uni Sevens. Tell us a bit about that, Bernie. Nice link, Angus. Love where you are with that. Yes, the Ross and Park Uni Sevens is going to be landing for the first time ever on the 7th of June at the Rock. 
the home of Rosslyn Park Rugby Club. It's going to be 10 of the 12 best universities in England throwing down in a day-night competition the day before the Premiership Cup final. We might even be able to score spectators discounted tickets, not you know, just sort of working that one out for the final. But as part of that proposition, we have a slot in the schedule, an exhibition match between the Vars boys winners and the Cup boys winners. A unification bout if the teams accept. So we haven't run that past the schools, but I think it's something that people want to see. Challenge laid down, a eh? Challenge laid down. Well, listen, before then, we've got a big, big day tomorrow. Four competitions. Boys under 18's Cup concludes. Girls under 18's Cup concludes. We've got the under 13 juniors and the under 11's as well for cracking tournaments. And I just want to give a shout out before we go to Adam Jack, who won the uh, Limitless Player of the Tournament in the under 16's boys competition ahead of his twin brother, Tom. They're not cold. Be... You are cold, Angus. <laughs> well, poor, poor old, poor old Tom. Hey Tom, you're my favourite jacks, man. <laughs> <laughs> the best jacks. Hey, one of the one of them's come away with something. The other one may well be coming away with more in the years to come because Sedba are on an absolute roll from age group to age group. How are they going to do tomorrow in the under 18s? We will find out. It's a huge day. Stay with us, Dave, Joe. Thank you very much. Can't wait to hear more from you tomorrow. And we can't wait for all of you to tune in live tomorrow morning, 9.45 for the preview show.